the gauntlets and the battlements have already been conquered. Welcome, the final eight, to the Royal Hall! Hamster! Forever a silver medalist? The Shambler! Will his crown continue to elude him? Hopsea! Innovating for ultimate glory. Nevlive! A two-time champion in the making. Newt! Ready to do damage in his first playoffs. Art of Turtle! But can he translate all that experience? General Anakin! Does he have another trick in him? Taco King! Just happy to be here, or is there more? Silence the doubts in your mind! The throne room awaits! Ladies and gentlemen, it is throne room time! Neblime, how the hell are you, my man? I'm pretty great, man. I'm excited to both be in Throne Room and be watching it. Yes, it's pretty right. awesome. That is right, my man. So, we obviously have some exciting matches here for you on the screen. The quarterfinals. The first stage, maybe the most important stage for some people, to get into none other than this playoffs bracket. It is double elimination. All the matches best of five until the very end. The grand final. Which, of course, I, I know I'll see you there, Neblime, either casting or playing. Most likely playing, according to, you know, a lot of the talk that's been happening around town. Well, I thought that was a vote of confidence when you said, I know I'll see you there. I'm like, that's damn right. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, wait, casting? Well, you are right. If I do somehow get eliminated, I am going to be casting. That's true. Maybe even it's a silver lining. I'm like, okay, I get to cast grand finals as I'm wiping my tears. Getting... Right smacked out but that's not gonna happen man i mean who's gonna who's gonna eliminate me name name the challenger man i'll take him on all right hey listen uh we'll talk about your challenger who is newt right this moment it should be noted of course that uh, we are going to be casting these from replays you will not be casting your own game uh that means that we all sort of like individually know like the, if you're a player in this series you know the outcome already if you happen to watch along please do not spoil that outcome because we are going to find out and of course neblime uh, is uh, aware of his own match's outcome, having played in it. He hasn't men and blocked himself like that, but uh, we will be able to see that a little bit later on. That means we're going to be kicking things off with Hamster against Taco Cake, and I want to talk a little bit about none other than Hamster, the man on your screen, strange, deranged, Joaquin Phoenix. I don't know what the hell that's about, but he likes the Joker, I guess. And here he is. <laughs> a little bit of info on this guy, this enigmatic character that showed up towards the very tail end of year one of Cosmonarchy's competitive scene. Walked into Ascension number six at the first time debutante, and he smashes his way into the fa the grand finals, actually. I don't even think he went down to the lower bracket in that one. Obviously did do that at when Hepsea was able to take him in a five game set in Ascension number seven, but came all the way back, stomped on through, and was able to make it to the grand finals before he was deposed by you, Neblime. So what do you make now that he switched over to Protoss? Well, I guess you brought the right guy on in the interview since I did play him in finals. Um, he's very strong, of course, definitely like a contender, but we did talk about this before. I feel like this is going to sound bad, but he enjoys the game too much to win. <laughs> he wants to just, like, try out stuff and, like, you know, do what's cool. He would not, for example, just, like, six-pool if he thought it was going to win. Like, say he knew he could six-pool in a best of seven and win the whole thing. He would not do it. He would... Uh, just play like what he thinks is more interesting. So I think that does actually hamper him in taking the championship. Now, not to say he can't kick people out along the way. Okay. But I feel like he has a lot of skill, lacks the killer instinct sometimes. Yeah, I, I, I can actually agree with this a little bit insofar as, on the one hand, there's like two separate points that you bring up that I think are, uh, you know, interesting and worth pointing out and, you know, sort of maximizing or capitalizing upon here. The first point is he likes the game so much and wants the, the good fight that he will deliberately sometimes not abuse very, very strong situations. And that is like in Ascension number seven, he discovers this ridiculously powerful one base Nathra core like rush, and he can even transition behind it if it somehow doesn't work. He uses that to completely tilt Hapsea in their opening match on a four spawn map, and then is able to walk all the way through him in a, in a complete sweep, right? It was a 3-0 in that particular lower bracket final. That's how Hapsea gets eliminated. And 
if we think back to that, it's like, well, he didn't reuse that again. He didn't use it against Isarcasm, who he was able to defeat another, you know, Protoss matchup. He didn't use it against the Shambler or against you, Neblime. And okay, those are different matchups. That's versus Zergen versus Terran. But he, he decides that he's like, he, he, he comes up with all these really nifty strategies and he'll only end up using it maybe once in a series because he's after that variety, that, that goodness of the game, that he wants that instead of just doing the same thing over and over again until the victory you know, served up on a silver platter. But the other thing is that you mentioned his X Factor. And I do think that sometimes, particularly as Protoss, which he has less reps for compared to his Zerg, it has felt like maybe he hasn't been able to make the right reads without, you know, perfect vision. And even sometimes when he does have really good vision through witnesses, he might not always capitalize upon a weakness. Maybe he doesn't perceive it that way, or maybe he's just not noticing. What do you reckon? Yeah, well, for sure you won't be in a game and you won't be looking at it and saying, Man, you know, Hapsaya is not macroing, he's not microing. He'll be doing those things pretty hard. But yeah, I think um, he has not honed the art of sort of uh, creating and exploiting vulnerabilities. And part of that actually ties into what you were saying, right? Mm -hmm. If you know you can tilt your opponent, you should do that. Oh, okay. Uh, within sure. reason, obviously, you know, to get the series win, I think that's a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, but also just within the game, for example, if you know you can overwhelm them doing this or that, I feel like he doesn't really do those kind of plays. You know, one example might be, uh, you know, attacking in the same place multiple times. Even if you know your opponent has some defenses there, just to be frustrating or to tie them up or stuff like that. I feel like he does not utilize that kind of thing, definitely. Um, and like I said, he he's uh, very good at the game. And you said he does come up with cool strategies, but he does not want to use them for violence, man. Maybe he's a peaceful man at heart. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, it, Hamster's just a, a strange guy, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. He's just, he's a cool dude. He's very nice, you know. Uh, I still, go, I think back to watching back Hapsaya's POV in that series that we were re referencing with the Nathricor build, and like, Hapsaya was like, dude, what do I do? I don't even know. And he just goes, I am sorry that Protoss is not very good right now. He's just, he's so <laughs> nice. Like, you can't hate him, dude. He's just like, he just, he wants a good game out of it. And he barely ever complains about balance. I would say never, but he was, uh, and I don't even know if you can count this as complaining, but he was like expressing the fact that he had no idea how to handle the Hydralisk, you know, some weeks ago. And eventually, I mean, it's funny because Hapsaya was also kind of in the same boat recently, but he's figured out something of an idea for it with the Gladius. And I know that Hamster is familiar with that unit as well, having had it used against him by Veek 7 back in Ascension number oh, 7. Oh yeah, so, he's a big Gladius fan in our oh, practice yeah. games. Okay, and that's I, something we should note, by the way, I played him like a hundred times so in the run-up to Acropolis, we've been practicing pretty hard. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Well, he should definitely be suited to take on his opponent. Let's switch gears and talk about who is on the other side, the lower seed. Coming from Group C, it's Taco Cake, the Swedish Zerg. He is here with his favorite unit being the Nathricor. No surprises there. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, okay, he was the second seed out. He was able to defeat Top Ramen in pretty, I would say, like, the opposite of the the whole, um, oh, maybe he doesn't have the X Factor, the Killer Instinct. No, Taco Cake seized upon the potential as soon as he saw only one muzzle flash Dude. coming out of that anchor. He just went straight for it in that highlight reel that we showed earlier. He so, is a murderer, right? Yeah. He is going to fold, grind you up, put you in a taco. Like, you see the picture he's got? That's like his opponent's flesh in that in that ground. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, if hamsters like the, you know, the private school kid who has like a good sense of like sportsmanship and, you know, a lot of, a lot of skill and training. Taco Cake is growing up in the streets, man, you know, shanking the next orphan over. He's, he's here to fight. He's definitely a down and dirty player. He is not going to hesitate to take the win if he can. Yes. Yeah. I would have to say that is indeed the case. Uh, another thing that I think is uh, worth pointing out here for Taco Cake is that he is just... I, like, he's a very aggressive guy in the early stages, but coming with that, I feel like most of his games may have ended before any sort of tier two hit. And I also don't know how, like, I feel like Hamster and other Protoss players have become pretty resilient to that kind of play. Versus Protoss is also probably Taco Cake's, like, least played matchup. Now, that's going to be a little bit bad for him in this bracket because we have so many Protoss players. We've got, you know, Hamster, the, uh, the Shambler, who switched to Protoss. Uh, obviously, we have... Uh, Hapsaya, as we referenced earlier, and we also have General Anakin coming in from that second seed. So that's four Protosses, three Zergs and one Terran making up our bracket here. You know, versus Protoss is going to be a predominant matchup for him that he's going to have to deal with. And so, you know, that's a, a concern. Um, the fact that he's mostly played versus Terran and versus Zerg uh, is something that isn't necessarily going to help him out here. 
And so he comes in as an underdog from the practice point of view, uh, but also from, I think, familiarity. He's newer to the project. He does end up scraping out against uh, Top Ramen, who, you know, the seeding predicted that, but I personally would have thought the other. So he has shown, like, a good re ability to intuit when he can maybe get some damage dealt. But I feel like maybe that kind of thing happens because of the practice versus Terran and versus Zerg, and he's not going to be able to rely on that versus Protoss. I do agree that uh, eliminating Top Ramen is a huge upset and shows how strong Tucker Kit really is here, but it's also true what you say. We haven't seen many late tier games from him, and I feel like he does lack a refined, like deeper macro play. Mm. I think he is inevitably going to fall behind if he does not get his way in the early game. So we'll have to see what kind of strats he has bought. That's right. I would have to say. Uh, one of the main things looking at the way that this is going to break out is I would predict that the games could actually end very quickly, which is a bit of a surprise. Um, that's based based on the fact that I think Taco Cake can get drawn in to that brawly sort of opener, right? So as we get ready to load up those replays, the only other thing that I have to ask you, sir, is uh, are you ready for the pick ban? Because I guess I have not actually oh, I'm ready. sent that to you. So, yeah. Uh, no, you haven't. So, yes, I'm more than ready. All right. I know that we, we both love to talk about pick bans. It's no surprise, no secret. Uh, but I do think that for whatever reason, you are the kind of guy that, uh, you know, likes it, maybe not more than me, but equivalent to me. And I'm somebody who really likes the pick ban. So I'm, I'm surprised. Well, I love that. to analyze the sort of metagame of things and the mentality and like how players go to a match like that. I think it's a, a very big deal. Well, there you go. Uh, you know, in the in the I future, think... listen, I'm going to be able to create like fancy ass graphics that like show off and like, oh, animated pick ban or whatever, but I don't have that. So we're just going to have to read it off, but it is in your DMs. All right then. So uh, first ban was Hamster banning Titan Forge. Uh, then next we had Taco Cake banning Fade Morgana. Uh, Hamster bans Sideshow and Taco Cake bans Germination. No, I'm a intrigued. For Germination. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Pink's yeah, but... Germination. My bad. Yeah, I just saw maps on the list. Okay. Interesting that he would ban Fade Morgana because if Taco Cake's going for aggression, you'd think you'd want that small map. Sure, Titan yeah. Forge, of course. It's just it's just a sadistic map made by Shambler, so I don't blame anyone who wants to ban that. That's that's I think that's fine. <laughs> Sideshow, of course, you know my feelings on Sideshow. Definitely a pick for Zerg. So Hamster going pretty pretty like uh, as you'd expect from Hamster. Pedestrian bans here, like the things you'd ban if you're like, yeah, I just want to play a match, you know, and not have ridiculous things happen on Titan Forge, and I won't pick the map that's OP for Zerg. Um, but yeah, Taco Cake, not wanting the rush on Fata Morgana. But what's he going to do on Germination? It's a big drop slash air map. Could mm. be the Nathracores. Yeah, he does like his air and he does like his Nathracores. You know, his drop play definitely got him some edges versus other players. He obviously was able to defeat the Beaver 99 in the upper part of the uh, second gauntlet there. And that's how he got into the battlements to begin with. And obviously he was able to figure out how to respond to the aggression from uh, Top Ramen. So if, if Hamster gets sucked into that and doesn't play a standard game, there could be room for Taco Cake to squeeze an upset. But... I do think that our final score definitely is going to reflect Hamster moving on. He is the easy heavy favorite here. And so with that, with that particular thing done, I guess we can just ask one final question. Neblime, are you ready to get into this first quarterfinal? Let's do it. I'm ready. Let's do it indeed. And would you look at it, ladies and gentlemen, we are on to germination in the first quarter final. It's Taco Cake in the top left, Hamster in the bottom right. All right. So, like I was saying, I think Taco Cake got to make something happen in the early game. I and mean, we don't know what he might have prepared. Maybe he's uh, bringing more advanced stuff than we've seen in the past. But it kind of makes it easy for Hamster. If you look at your opponent, you say like, okay, in a long game, I think I've got them. Then you know they have to try something. I mean, he's not going for any super fast pool. I have to say Hamster is extremely resilient against things like six pool. I don't think he will ever die to that because um, he, he's very good at putting down the warden in the right place and microing his early units and stuff like that. That said, one thing that's interesting is getting these gateways on the ramp is a bit worse against early pools, but what's really strong, what Hamster loves to do, get that cannon on the high ground and then the Dracodons, even though it doesn't actually cover the natural, the Dracodons can kite back and forth and the warden gives them so much cover, it's really impossible to break with those early cause units. Look at that patch on low ground. 
Wow, Taco Cake is playing with fire here. We'll see what he ends up coming away with for it. Mm. What can be really tough here is a proxy, yeah, with cannons and also rallying the Legionnaire. That's what's really problematic about Logan, but he doesn't see it immediately. He's not going to go for it right away. He's going to check what's in the base. Hamster might not even try it. You don't have to cheese it. You don't have to, but it is on. it is pretty strong because, you know, he, it, you can place it out of vision over here, right? And then creep forward or yeah. even all the way back here. I mean, that's more of obvious if you're paying attention to it. Yeah, if you really commit uh, and you put down like three wardens, I know it sounds silly. It sounds like a new play just builds so many. Oh, chat for that draw life. Um, it can cause Zerg a lot of problems. And I feel like it's kind of impossible to actually stop it without losing a bunch of draw lefts or at least losing a ridiculous amounts of mining time if you pull a lot of draw lefts immediately. But Hemp's not going for it, so forget all that. He's just going for a second gate, just playing it steady here. Indeed, indeed. Well, leaving the scout a little bit idle for now. Uh, I do have a confession to make, Neblime. I have been a bit of a goofball. I think I am on a more recent version of release than what these were played on. So if uh -oh. we see any strangeness, we'll just restart and I'll restart in between okay. the games. But uh, so far, everything seems to be going correctly. So. Oh, yeah. Well, we won't know when the desyncs happen, right? Uh, I already have questions because I keep building up a lot of minerals. Is he getting on a Hatcheros? Now I'm on notice for this, right? Everything oh, yeah, of course. Before. Of course. Yeah. Well, I mean, so far he hasn't done it. The only things that are different are like tile related okay, things. Nice. So I really don't think that there's, okay. I don't think there should be any issues, but. Just purely graphical, right? Not yeah. halving based. Yeah. Okay, well he did just make a bunch of quads, so that makes sense. He was saving up the lava. Now, yeah. I'm not a fan of this actually, because you're never gonna get anywhere against the Dracodons. Yeah. Like you're not gonna break Protoss. And he's getting the Circuf, or at least I assume that Kegra's gonna be a Circuf. So he's defending and defending, while his opponent's just making work as even with the embassy becoming up. Yep. Yeah, listen, Hamster's really fond of the double embassy plays. I think he'll make one embassy before expansion, and then off of, yeah. off of the second Nexus, he'll get a, a fourth production structure for workers, right, with a second embassy, which sounds really greedy, and it can be, but does Taco Cake know what to do to punish that? You know, you are sort of committing yourself that you're going to go for a long game here, though, and there's potential weakness there for Hamster. Um, oh, look at that, these costs coming up. Not so much in that you get punished. I feel like it's just up to Zerg to figure that out and just go, okay, I'm just going to like double expand since you're building masons, not masons, scribes. Uh, I wish I was Terran again. <laughs> if, if you're building scribes with those embassies, you can't come attack me. Look at this, these Quasilisk, I'd be very surprised if they got a dragon in here. They shouldn't buy rights. Ooh, it's real close. Look at that, he pops one. Yeah, but he this gets is... stuck on his own units a bit there. It looks yeah. like Hamster wasn't expecting such an aggressive pursuit by by uh, Taco there. And, and, you know, that's what you got to watch out for for this guy, man. I, he doesn't play like he's an underdog exactly. He just plays like yeah. he's him. He's he's an aggressive guy. That's what he does. He's just like, yeah, this yep. is me. This is my style. Yeah, you know, Hamster actually cut Scribes a bit to get more Dracodons out, and he's not using the second Q just yet. So yeah. uh, Taco Cake actually taking the worker lead, and it's quite early for Zerg to take the worker lead. Typically what we see, uh, if Protoss plays expansion, which he's not so far, by the way, uh, is uh, Protoss will shoot ahead at first, and then once Zerg has sort of paid enough for their defenses, then they'll have a lot of Hatchross or whatever and suddenly catch up. But the fact that Zerg's ahead already looks pretty good for Taco Cake. Now, can he stop the counterattack? He's got a uh, second Zerg on the way. One will not do it, but he's got a bunch of quads to support, so I think it'd be okay here. I feel like losing that Dracodon when he's already so low on workers is actually a really yeah. big deal here for Hamster. I mean, he must have cut more than just one or two in order to get the d double gate and the embassy fast. So he wants to catch up using that. And right now, using the witness to spot, he kind of knows that he can pick on the extremities and use flash shielding. It does have five and soon six Dracodons sort of containing the Zerg player right now. We have an Avaleth and a Hydrothen coming, so... Honestly, the map state looking real good for uh, Taco Cake right now, especially if he starts to try to collapse onto these Dracodons. But now he's going to start hemorrhaging some of these units. That'll be a little bit worse for wear. He's actually under a lot more danger than you might think, because these Circus will not stop these Dracodons. They can yep. easily just use shielding. And once one goes down, it's really easy to kill the rest. He can't use Burrow because that weakness is here. That's really yep. why it's here. It's extremely important for that. And Look I think he's just going to smash through. Yeah. I don't think Taco Cake has anything. Yeah, this is... Has he, uh, you know, been a little bit too complacent? I feel so. He went for double Avaleth. I'm not sure what for. I guess he was going to drop. He's got nothing left to drop, though. Only some Quasis now coming. He borrows the workers in advance. Remember that That's witness is over there. You, so that can just yep. move on over. And a third Kagrin doesn't even make it into a circuit. Man, I don't want to be mean to we call this the Keen special, you know? If you go down like this... Oh, I don't know. Does end up I don't think he can stop it, man. No, I, he's I, making cores, and cores will not do anything. I mean, Zephs might even be better here. I think this game's over already. Uh, you've got to respect the Draconids and how well they can destroy isolated circuits, because uh, he just did not have enough there. Yeah, he's got he's eight of them in his base one. at this point. The worker drill yeah. may have helped out a little bit here, but this is pretty much over. Man, what a surprising move from Hamster. I was just thinking, you know, this guy doesn't necessarily just all in or whatever, but that's GG, man. You can't make it through that. Yeah. 
absolutely smashes him. And honestly, this is a new thing that Hamster's been working on when we played some practice games because, uh, you know, I've been trying to defend with minimal amounts like that too. And what I was really relying on is borrowing the quads in front of the circuit. So if your Protoss knows they're there, it mm. stops the Draculans from really abusing the range against the quads. And if the quads and circuit can fight together, you do okay. But he had the witness there and Tucker Kick wasn't even trying it actually. So he's ready to smash that. Yeah, indeed. Well, while we take a look at Hamster's lovely mug, we will also take a look at that next replay, getting ready for it. Uh, I definitely think that the, the release version is actually just fine because it is just tile set changes, so we should be A-OK -okay on that front. I don't believe there was any plug-in changes, so yeah, we're, we're good to go on in, although that game did end pretty quick, so was it a thorough <laughs> test? We're not quite sure. Uh, we are going to jump into game number two, and it was Taco Cake selecting the Purgatory for this next map. Yeah, I like it. I think it's a pretty good choice for Zerg. Uh, I hope I kind of demonstrated why that is in the group stage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think of, thinking about it, the fact that you can take control of the uh, big ramps that are right over here and obviously on Taco's side right over here uh, with the, the Kagras, you can drop the Kagrans down and, and spread that Kagra around and just have a good old time. So it does feel like it's quite possible. Hamster, though, he brought the pain. Uh, these guys both play, uh, played this match in the morning. So Taco Cake maybe was... He said, uh, I remember him saying stuff like, uh, you know, oh, uh, sorry, I'm a little sleepy right now. Let me get some coffee and, and before they started <laughs> off the match and such. So, wow. you know, they're still waking up. You, you get more than one. There's some buffer here since it's a best of five. But Definitely. I think Taco Cake wants a, a stronger showing than that because there's nothing worse than, like, kind of understanding the match and the matchup and figuring, like, okay, this is the flow. I make my expansion. I make my defense. And, you know, admittedly, he double defended, like you said, when he didn't necessarily need to. But then he did need to. He mm. needed to, like, triple defend or something. So he's, like, kind of well, doing the right thing, but not at the right moment. And Hamster finding the right timing just makes you look foolish. You don't want to be made to look foolish, especially not on stream in front of 10,000 people. I am worried about this slow ground again because yeah. Hamster's really perfected it to break this you know Tucker gate might have played that game come away and thought oh okay i need to do x yes. and i will do x in this game but if he hasn't really considered it if he thought it was just like whoops i you know, was out of position or something i feel like Hamster's is going to smash him again with the same thing and you know Hamster's is the kind of guy that i would not be surprised if he goes for the same build here and that's you know you were talking about that build where you burrow the quasis in front and as you also mentioned how the witness completely nullifies that advantage yes the, the dracodins can just sort of destroy them from afar absolutely the case but there will be a proxy pile on here unlikely to go yeah. the same way i think hamster is going to commit to the dracodin warden push to just deny this natural and the pool is really only 25 percent done would serve better here because you need to save money for the wardens and you want to get there faster i mean the dracodin is just a much deadlier unit once it gets there of course well i guess if tiger Kick doesn't even stop it anyway he doesn't know will be pretty yeah he can't pretty see okay this is about yeah. where it uh the vision ends there so yeah, even, uh, oh, he's sending a scout. Okay, I was going to say, you do want to send a scout versus this, but it's a bit late for that first cannon. He's going to need to pull a lot of draw off to stop that, if he even can. Yeah, he probably could if he sent, like, six down immediately. Will he go for the pull, or will he sort of concede this? You can try and get the circle up, but I'm not sure if I recommend it. Okay, he's pulling the draw off down. He did not bring enough, though. He needs way more than that, because that warden is already almost finished. Oh, there's no way to stop it now. That yeah. is not the way to go, either. Uh -oh. Absolutely not. Hey, the worker yeah, almost dies, but that's not going to be nearly enough. Warping in a redundancy pylon as well. Taco Cake in trouble. And because he was pulling workers as well, he d he doesn't actually have the larva to necessarily. Going for Quaz instead of Zeth oh, here no. might be a mistake as well, you know? Morphing at the natural is a huge mistake. I think, you know, he put them both on one hotkey, and so he didn't really think about where he's morphing them, but that's just dead money unless he cancels those, unfortunately. He's not canceling them. Yeah. At this point, you just remove that hatch rock from the hockey. You start playing for the oh. main. Just think, okay, how the hell am I going to get out of this? Because this natural is so dead. All right, he canceled two yeah, out of four canceled. of those, but that's still a lot of dead money. And now you've got a third warden coming. The draken and establishing hamster is speed running through this right now. Yeah, sure, the scribe is good. The draken and pretty low as well, but these wardens are formidable, man. Oh, yeah, he's not going to get that draken in no way. Ah, uh, frustration, frustration for Taco Cake. Hamster not even Man. letting him figure out what to do, what Protoss can do, because he's just doing all the early stuff. Yeah, and I think Hamster did prepare pretty extensively to stop these low ground expansions. Um, I think that's just what he came expecting, and he was right. I wouldn't have guessed it. I would have thought Taco would go for something more aggressive, but so far he's been punished. Only four quads left. If he didn't waste all those quads chasing that Dracodin, he might have something to defend here. Okay, a couple more come out. Hamster doesn't really want to try it. But it was a long time before that second hatch roll started. What can Taco Cake do from here? He's going to need Hydralis to bust his defensive position, probably. Ooh, don't lose that. 
Yeah, I, I gotta say, he's, he's gonna try to defend the ramp, and maybe he'll go for an Avaleth to move this Kagrin further, or maybe he's just gonna slow spread the Kagrin. Well, that would really help him, though, because he can't use that to bust the Wardens. Yeah, I, yeah, I, it, it, I mean, it's gonna take a lot to bust this anyway, so... <laughs> I mean, you get, like, eight Hydralis, you could do it pretty easily, I think. Um, you know, plus a few more for the Dracodons, I guess. Uh, but that's the thing. Quaz unit's definitely gonna have a hard time. Yeah. Yeah, he's not he really harvesting much Vespain at this point either. He's actually completely abandoned the Vespain. Oh no, he's put one guy on there, so that's it. You know, this is a mistake I really hate to see, is people making static defense way back in their base, because you can still just go around that if you go around the top. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so so Tykik a bit lost here, I think, uh, after losing that naturally. He doesn't really know where to go from here. And like I said, you really need to just go Hydrath uh, when you're in this situation, but I don't think he started it yet. I don't think he's even mining gas right now. Yeah, just oh, no, with one is. worker, one worker. That's oh, it. okay. Yeah, yeah. I, again, because you're only on one base, you got to really pump up that gas because you only have access to a pump, couple of uh, nodes there. Yeah, well, he's only got access to eleven workers, period, <laughs> right now. So it's definitely on the, you know, oh. under the pump, and it's not looking too hot right now for Taco. This is not the attack, man. No. This is going to be a disaster. He's going to get shoot up. Oh. Yeah. Causeless are terrible against. Uh, both Draconins and to some extent Wardens. So he's going to absolutely know they're not even going to get a single <laughs> Warden. Oh Everything dies for free. Is Hans just going to march on in and take the dub? Looks like he's still a bit timid here. I mean, there is a Surkov, but still. Well, he can almost afford a Hydrath. So I guess yeah, he'll get that. Yeah, I think he's going for it. <laughs> but... Does go for it at last. But at this point, so many units have been lost for free. In fact, the only thing he's killed all game is that Scribe. Phew. He uh, did some emotional damage to this Draconin, at least. But... Yeah. That's about it. Has to go back to the workshop, get his leg fixed or something. Yeah, pull out all the Quaz brains. <laughs> they get stuck in the gears, that's yeah. right. Uh, well, he's got okay, a couple expansion. of defenses, but... I don't know. Mm. It's just like, you, you see what's coming Starcraft, out here. <laughs> the witness you is fine. You don't win Starcraft <laughs> by staying in your base and defending. You gotta, you gotta get yes. out there. Yeah. No, I was I was hoping for the Gates of Hell, but not happening. <laughs> well, he called me out because I was playing on Titan Forge, yeah. and I put them on the high ground on either side. Which Taco, if you're listening to this, it makes sense, all right. If it's on high ground, I don't <laughs> mind it, but if it's if it's on the low ground, I am not a fan. Yeah. Oh, did he actually like, call you Gates of Hell or something? <laughs> well, he was witnessing the game, and oh. he just said in chat Gates of Hell when I put my circus out like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, the all zealots right. are gonna well, bust up, muscling in, you know. Ooh, the idols too. Really going to crush any cause units once they get in range. Well, finishing the job there. There's another Kagrin. It, it's desperate times here for Taco Cake. But he doesn't want to concede the game just yet. You can get up to a really nice amount of income. A surprising amount of income, I will say, on off of one base. And Hamster hasn't really saturated anything over here. Going for more gateways behind it. He's sort of dancing some units back at home, expecting a drop maybe. Not going to happen, though. Really wants to pick off these Kagrins, man. He just hates Kagrins. Oh, Dragon, no! I'll see you later. There you go. Hey, Taco Cake's on the board, man. He's got a couple of kills. He lost an idol, too, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. If Hamster sort of keeps overextending, Taco Cake could come down and reclaim his natural here. I don't know. He's got a decent force. It's just a few more hydro. Listen, I think he could actually do it. Yeah, he, he could, especially since, I mean, it would be so much easier if he had killed this Warden by committing all those quasis. I mean, if you were going to lose them all anyway, you might as well kill yeah. him. But he kind of hesitated and stutter-stepped. I really don't know what's going on over here, man. <laughs> Hamster's just... On patrol with a couple of his units. He must be, like, expecting a drop. That's that's the only thing I can think at this point. Well, I, I guess he's thinking to himself, like, what's the possible ways I can still lose? Because yeah. he knows he's in a pretty good advantage. And, like, watching drops, look at that. I was just about to say, the other thing you think about is hidden bases. So I think he's actually looking for those. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that other scribe is going to come and build an engram. That would just be salt in the wound. Oh, man. I know, yeah. He's just checking all the other spots first, it looks okay. like, but it would be great if he put one of those down. Well, I mean, I'm the kind of guy, I build the Nexus here, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind it, but I would build the Engram first, is all I'm oh, saying. Oh, okay, yeah. And actually, Zerg can get a Circa if they can hit that mineral line on the high ground, so I don't know if you really want to do that. Yeah, up here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, you have to put it right to the edge, by the way, as I found out. Um, but yes. <laughs> Why have you found this so under what oh, circumstances uh, were you? don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, well, he's going to bust out now. Is. Yep. Uh, Amps has enough of an army at home, I think, to survive. In fact, he pulls back a couple years there. And he's trying to chase him. He does get another dragon for his trouble, but he has oh. to kill those wardens at some point. 11 kills on that warden. Is he going to get a 12? Oh, it does. 1,500 damage on that one. That's oh, my right. God, almost as much on that one. Really unfortunate micro from Taco there. Could have killed those wardens a lot faster and lost a lot less. And now Hamps is thinking, like, oh, okay, can I actually take this after all? I still don't think he really can with that many Hydralis. I think he does have to be careful. Yeah. 
Well, listen. Ooh, he's very scared of zealots. Yeah, I mean, the Hydras definitely deal pretty well with them, so you don't have to worry too much. And the Idols struggle versus them as well, since this, they don't yeah. overlap as much as Quasis or Zeths. But it is Hydra Zeth over here, which is a kind of a throwback Brood War composition here. Although I say that, well. Zerg don't really do too much uh, Hydra Ling at the end of the day, but you know what I mean. That's true, they kind of don't, actually. Yeah, but Hydra Zeth, I think, is a pretty good combination, but they will give the Idols actual use here. The thing about Idols, and actually, I think this is true about Lattice in general, is that uh, it's good against uh, Quas units, but it really struggles against the Hydralisk. Yep. Yeah, I think so. The only thing that you can maybe put an asterisk there is the Golem, but even then it can still be... I mean, it's worth hurt. dumping your minerals and something, right? Yeah. But Hydralisk, I think, still do pretty good against them. Yeah. With the armor pen changes, you are talking about uh, Hydras dealing one less damage to them than they used to, but you can see over here, plenty more yeah. units on the cliff. So Taco yeah. Cake's uh, reign of terror will end, the witness continuing to spy. I think maybe this is an example of Hamster definitely lacking that uh, X factor we were talking about. He was so far ahead, I thought for sure it was a speed run. Taco Cake trying to stay somewhat stabilized here. Well, the first three Dracodons probably could have run in and ended the game, but yeah. he's coming again with another push, and he gets to see these Golems versus Hopeless, man, see how long he lasts. Look, I don't know who's going to win this fight, but I can say for sure the Golem will not come out alive. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Only one of them is uh, not the power move. You need probably at least three, because that's three. I mean, whatever. It's going to join the Zealots, pretend it's a real boy. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Pinocchio over here. Oh, here comes the Engage, Taco Cake. A little slow on the draw, but he has a couple more units rallying out there. Just on move, though, not on attack move. A couple Zets coming in from oh, the left man. side as a bit of a flank. That's not too bad. But it's a I don't good think move, it's but the good. idols absolutely smashing it, unfortunately, the angle it was at. Um, but he does have more. It was enough to push Hamster back for now. Yeah. Taco Cake staying alive, keeping the dream alive. Well, hang on. Does he have enough Hydralis? He's picking off those idols. Well, this is the cliff advantage here kicking in. He should be able to pick up one or two Ooh. more units, but he doesn't decide to. Hamster clue, uh, clued into his own witness there and just attack left clicked it, so that was cool. Blew up <laughs> his own scout, unfortunate. He does have it an envoy within a cantor, though, Ooh. so we are about yeah, to witness if, Zerg death. Even if he pulls immediately, just the amount of disruption this caused, and there's no easy answer for Taco. Oh, he's not even pulling. Oh, yeah, okay, well, he up. has finished this at least, so I guess he can go back to mining pretty soon, but he's already lost three workers, and the Acantor is still at large. He has a ski back, right? So he could start making some skiff records, at least to ward off the envoy. God. What What are you shooting at, Akanto? What, what are you aiming at? <laughs> that was at the pool, I think. I'm not sure. Dude, Zephyrcore are not the hard counter mm. to Akanto. This may shock you, Penongo, but yeah. uh, I think you designed the game wrong. The Zephyrcores can't do that. Mm. Yeah. Okay, he pulls back. Uh, but hey, he got a bit of damage. Keep that alive. Doesn't even take any damage on it. I think he should try and go in on both sides repeatedly just to keep the pressure on. But he has his third base. Uh, it's not like Hamster isn't getting himself more ahead here, but as you say, he has not made a clean kill here, you yes. know? Well, I mean, 65 workers to 19. He definitely has the advantage. Taco Cake hanging on for dear life, but he can't really move outside the uh, rest of the map. Uh, and I'm not even really sure why the Akantor fell away anyway. I mean, I guess the yeah. army was in the natural, right? But that was it. Could have killed all those Zephyrcores pretty easily. Yeah, that's right. You just, just leave it there, honestly. You just fly really. out with the envoy to make it obvious. Yeah, this Akantor is fine, dude. You can't kill it. A couple of rogue galleries. <laughs> rogue gallery come around. Yeah. yeah, Hamster, a big fan of charlatans. Not charlatans, I keep doing that. Vagrants in this matchup. Oh, okay. This is a good mineral dump sort of fodder unit that just shoots away and does a lot of damage. Man, building three more static defense structures when you're already so low on workers definitely stings. Taco is going to be able to get up onto the area with the third, and he will scout it with three wardens protecting it. Uh, yeah, plus the army over here is really going to be quite hard to bust that, and I don't think he really will be able to. He's got four Zeths and a Hydra in this. And there aren't any defenses coming, although there is an Ancestral. Oh, man. Oh, he's going to try it, but there's so many Zealots and an Akantor. There's yeah. no way. No he's going to be thankfully made those Circus in a moment, I think. Oh, uh, could be. Drop comes in at the same time. He's going to see if he ooh. can uh, tickle Hamster at the very end there. But I just feel like there's way too much here. <laughs> Look at them. They're like, yeah, we'll just fight this out. That's fine. <laughs> get, get some kills, though. Uh, if only it was Quaz, it would have got way more damage, yeah. I think. Oh, wait, there's a Hydralisk. <laughs> okay. There sure is. Oh, sure. oh is he going to get the Warden? Oh, he got the Warden! <laughs> but here's the Akantor. Okay, that's not bad. Did that drop before? I don't see any more corpses. I think it just started down. The Hydras will actually ward it off. Mm. So once again, Taco Cake staying in it, but uh, he's lost his army now trying to have that fight. He's yeah, still yeah. got those Bactalists, though. Man, if he builds up enough Bactalists, he has a good defensive advantage here. I don't know. That's I, a lot of Zealots. I think it's just going to be an A move at some point. But Hamster, reticent to do it. He doesn't want to throw away all this Protoss life. That's what these vagrants are for. They're already criminals. <laughs> Get them out. Right. Lore accurate right. Thought, over here, I guess, is Hamster. You thought Terran were the only ones who uh, threw away convicts. I guess it's uh, Protoss as well. Yeah, yeah, listen. 
Uh... Yeah, well, when every zealot dies, is that like some protoss who lived for 600 years, right? And he's uh, an expert in some skewer subject. Well, that's where the Dracodins uh, come in, right? They're the twice bombed, as they call them. All right, listen, the zealots and ecclesiasts are going to be A-OK -okay over here. There was even a an envoy with the Acantor, but it wasn't required. It doesn't even unload. He's in reserve. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, hang uh, on, the back is going to do damage here. If the Akantor does not assist, he is going to hold, I think. Oh, well, actually, maybe there's enough front line. Oh, he's going for the draw left, though. Yeah, he sure oh. is. And the Hydras are slowly getting torn apart, thanks to the Idle Splash and also the uh, rest of the army. And look at that. Oh, man. Down to 16 workers. Down to 16 workers. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Hamster confirms in chat he was scared of eight Hydralisks. There it is. There it GG's is. Cool. GG, though, and Hamster will take a 2-0 start to the best of five. Looking pretty solid. Uh, again, that last match a little wavering compared to, you know, I thought, man, we're going to have record time, and, and Neblime and I were talking before this, like, yo, uh, are we going to be able to finish this in five hours? And I was like, well, I hope so. And then this comes in, and I thought it was going to be like 10-minute best of five or something. No, well, not I quite. Mean, not quite. We're still on track for a fairly fast one, though. 14 minutes, still not really that long as uh, Cosmonaki games go. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, definitely a little bit on the shorter side, and I would say a fairly one-sided affair, although Taco did scare Hamster, which is some some points there. But he's, he really wants to get on the board. He wants to have some confidence going forward into the future, uh, and uh, when we have that kind of situation, I think it's only right that we switch back over to Hamster's lovely face, a.k.a. Joaquin Phoenix, and we find <laughs> out uh, what that third map is going to be. Only a couple you know, of... Uh, this is what I was talking about in the, the pregame, though, that uh, it, it is a, a fact that Taco Cake is going to get down dirty and do his best to win. He knew he was behind, I'm sure, after losing that natural, but he did not want to give up. And he tried the counter drop, he tried attacking, he tried all this kind of stuff. So you mm -hmm. can't count him out too easily. No, you cannot. We go to Impetus, which is a map that I think is actually pretty good for both races here. Hamster will be in the bottom left and Taco Cake will be in the top right. And it's just, I think it's nice for uh, Protoss and for Zerg both, because they both like those open areas. Zerg for flanking and Protoss for moving their giant armies all over the place. So, plus it's a fairly open map for drops and such, right? With the mains, the way that those are designed. Feels like... Yeah, although out. I feel like that generally benefits Zerg a lot more, because oh, yeah. Zerg will come in early with the quads drop, right? If Protoss wants to go for a drop, it's more of like a tech choice almost. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas Zerg, I feel like you always want the overlap at least to scout, so drop's always on the table. Indeed. You know, that is something we see Taco Cake not do a lot of the time, actually, is not go for that scouting over left, and I think that is a potential weakness here, because as far as I'm concerned, it's kind of almost like making work, as you really just should be doing it. He's going low ground hatch again, man. He knows no fear. Oh, no, wait, it's a scout. Oh, okay. Well, let's find out. Let's see if he wants to pivot away from it, or if he... No, I think you're right. He knows no fear, oh, indeed. Oh, my God. All right. Well, he'll see the counter the scout. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is he going to expect the cannon rush again? Because if he just keeps an eye on it, you can deny it with the draw left. And like I was saying, Draconin is not really the unit to back it up because it'll take a bit longer to get there. I think if he was on the ball and he pulled right away, pulled enough, he would have actually been fine. Let's see. Only one cannon says to me, Hamster might be thinking about doing it again. Is it one cannon? What am I saying? One gate. I was going to say, wait, where do you see the cannon? You don't even know, man. You, you may be observing the game, but you don't see everything that I see. That's right. That's right. Pool getting zapped a little bit. Love tapped by the scribe. Okay, Tucker Kate going very safe here. Not only is it 10 hatch, 9 pool, he also sent the draw left scout before the hatch. So he's just making sure that uh, Hamster isn't doing anything crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I still want to see it, man. I just love cannon rushes, but no. Second gate, is it? Yeah. Yep, that's right. I, what I want to see is proxy hatch, and you saw Hamster was thinking about it. Hey, where did that worker go? Turns out. <laughs> it's not a threat until it is, you know? Listen, yeah, I actually did work. I, I pulled a proxy hatch off against Sir Nicholas, XD man, uh, ZVT. Poor XD which, man. Uh, Dude, he gets to play like one game a month and you did that to him, damn. <laughs> he won the other game. <laughs> I tried it twice, so it was 50% win rate. I think ah, it's pretty good. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I won it first. One of those strats, man, it. where it looks so crazy, but if you just don't expect it, it's like, oh. I yeah, like it was on Axiom and I did it inside the NAT. It was pretty cool. But uh, we Ooh, won't be able to that see that here. Yeah, alas. All right, we got Kegman coming up. Is he going to respect the Drakens this time? Looks like Hamster going for pretty similar strats to what we saw on Jer the Nation. Is he going to get a whole bunch of Drakens out, bust the front? I think that's what he's going to try. Yeah, starting to spend a little bit on Zealots as well. Wants to bank that gas for the eventual embassy. Ooh. In fact, he canceled the Drakens to get that second Zealot out. So he really wants that embassy. But unfortunately for him, it was a little bit delayed on the mineral count. There we go. Getting it in there. 
I guess he's going to come in earlier than the other game with the Zealots. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. Two Circuf plus those Quas, I think it's enough for two Zealots to Draconis. You've got to watch out for a run by. It could be dangerous. I kind of like the couple of Quasis Ooh. out here for spotting, but also for a little yeah. bit of, uh, you know. It's not bad, but they will get roasted by Draconis if they get found out. Yeah. That much is absolutely the case. Maybe Hamster was expecting an attack, because uh, he's just sitting at home with his Zealots. Maybe yeah. he's just going to wait for the witness and go out. Yeah, that's what he did the last game on Germination as well, although he was posturing a little bit aggressively, a little bit more aggressively, I should say. Quaz is going to make it its way across the map, report back to the hive. What's going on here exactly? And an Ovalath, so a little bit. Uh, I'm expecting that's for a drop and not for a scout, but it, you can scout by dropping. Mm, well, I mean, he has a couple of circuits up. I wouldn't mind a drop. Of course, it will only really work if Hamster has moved out, but Hamster will move out soonish. Did that, that purifier I saw? Oh, oh yes, oh, there oh. it is. Yep, he's out. He's ready to purify the Zerg. Oh, he's getting that witness. Oh, oh, he's scouting with it. Okay. Yeah. But he's just about to get a witness. <laughs> well, Did this legionnaire have to die? Yes, because you called him the wrong name. But also because right. I feel shame, like he will. yeah. The other yeah. reason is if you scout on like obviously with your legionnaire and then unobviously with your witness. He's also going to catch the Avalath here, which is pretty good. Ooh. And you know, honestly, oh, he gives away that it's full. Kind of a nice block in a way, though. <laughs> that's yeah. kind of sick. But I think he would have known, actually, just by how that was moving that it was yeah. full. I know that's just kind of silly, but I think it was sort of a giveaway. Yeah, you wouldn't be arcing up here, you know, mm. to avoid mm, it. Exactly. I actually think it's funnier and when they just go for the full balls, like right click into your base thing, because it's like, oh, it's just a scout, and then it unloads. But it's so, yeah. it's so rare we see the mind games for that. You. I think at lower levels of Cosmonarchy, you will see that mind game work. And most of the time, if they, they actually do make a read on that and they're just like, oh, you're flying straight. Oh, you must not actually have anything in there. And uh, Hamster seems content to stay home, by the way. It looks like yeah. he will not try and bust the natural this game. And he's getting his expansion and all that stuff. I wonder what the tech structure is. Is it going to be the Ardent Authority again? He's no Benno, man. He's allowed to make other things. Okay. But uh, he does like uh, starting with that as well. We got some nice spread of the hatches here. When they finish up, uh, we are going to have four hatch for Taco Cake, and he'll have really great vision of his old base for anti drop as well. I mean, the Hydra Den coming up, he's going to be able to contest Protoss on the map soon ish. <laughs> Needs a bit more of a work account to really spam those out, though. I read the chat. I don't know if you did. Yeah. The second embassy coming out here for good old hamster and that w i don't know if he actually scouted that i feel like the avalath has good sight range but not that good there we go and honestly you maybe panic unload or not panic but like you deliberately unload and then try to fly no, no. for a scout but unfortunately for him he's just going to get away bruised he should know for sure now that there's the embassies so he'll yeah. at least be aware but honestly it's a decent move just to have dropped those off to avoid the damage on the overlay it was a good try but not really worth it in the end unfortunately a lot of minerals lost but hey like you say saw that second embassy Hopefully he can adapt, get a few hydras out to ward off the dragon and take a third base and he'll be a sold move here. But the Stargate goes down as soon as the scout is over. You gotta be careful about that Gladius count building up. Oh yeah, big time. And you, you don't really want to put that Ovalith back in circulation when it's sub half health, you know? So, you can get easily That's sniped. true. Well, you say that, but he's trying it. He's going on the side. He knows he needs more info. Yeah. I think a uh, very astute Tiger Cake here realizes, like, okay, I only saw two gateways. Yes, I saw two embassies, but he's got to build something else soon. Second Stargate on the way. Uh, I think it is going to be pretty hard into Gladius here. Uh, Gladius? Gladius? I don't know. Yeah, I think you can go... You can probably go, like, Gladius Zealot or Gladius Dracodin if you have enough gas. I know Hapsaya Zealots was crunching numbers, effective. too, as well. He was saying that I think it was something like if you have three gas miners on the geyser, then you can perfectly make one Gladius every production cycle. So if you've, oh, nice. if you've got two geysers, then you have access to two Gladius production, and you have the ridge guy, gas miners for uh, Dracodins or anything else that you need, so... Well, you know, it does not line up pretty nicely for Protoss. One uh, worker on a geyser is enough for perfect dracon in production as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty pretty cute the way that that ended up working out. That means double saturation on a ridge is enough, by the way, for people wondering, because it's half the yeah. saturation of a... or half the return of a, of a geyser, so... Now, we got a lot of Hydralis coming out, but Taco Cake is a bit low on Troll for two bases here, and he's getting a third as well. Back to list on the way, they will serve quite well against the Gladiuses. I don't want to say they're like a counter to the Gladius, but you're glad you have them when the fight happens. Yep. But it is a bit subjective to the engagement as well. But he has the number of forces he needs for sure, just as long as he keeps uh, the tactics going the way he needs them to. It looks like another drop going to come up. I like coming in for another angle. Let's see if we can get any stripes here, but Hamsi is just at home. Yeah, he's been very passive this game by comparison, using his witness, scouting around. I'm not sure that he spouted the 12 o'clock, but he is taking a look at three to make sure there's nothing there. 
Here's the uh, redrop, as you mentioned. It's not actually coming in right now. There is an opening where he could unload and get a couple of workers. Man, double witness production. My god. And there's the double uh, Gladius as well. I was thinking about that. It's nice having two embassies because you can just get two witnesses if you need them. And honestly, when I play Protoss, because I put the embassy on the same hotkey as the Nexus, I'm mm. like, oh, I'm spamming out scribes. Wait a minute. Oh, no, I need a witness. What do I do? Like, yeah. do I have to re-hotkey this? If you can just get both of them done in one go, I think that's quite nice, actually. We seize this formidable army, though. That third is under a lot of threat. And I feel like Hamster committing to the double embassy mm. here, if he can't take a third quickly, he's in a sort of awkward position. That is a scary army, my Zerg. Yeah, I think it's a Zerg army supply. Yeah, if the Zerg comes in at this point, you can absolutely run roughshod over the Protoss arsenal, and then we're talking about the Zavaleth being able to just sort of cart its way into the, the natural at the same time. But right now, Taco Cake isn't paying attention to it. Instead, going to charge on forward. This Gladius could end up getting picked. It doesn't end up doing that. They're not in prime position to uh, get the bounce chains going, but uh, as they kite backwards especially, that's going to start expiring more really heavily. cannot hold this. Yeah, there's no He's got to give up the third. Absolutely. There's only a Warden back here. Can he even survive? He's actually, is he going to come straight into the main? That overlap is probably not going to get much done. Well, hang on, it's unloading its uh, claws just to get bounced Ooh. on, but hey. Gladius Ooh, picked on the rally. You really want to manage yeah. this growth. He's charging on forward. He doesn't want to let Hamster build that count up, but there are multiple Wardens back here, and he just b he spent all of his DPS, unfortunately, on a Warden that was a, or on a pylon that wasn't the only one powering over here. Mm. Not quite enough backfillers here, and the bounce is going down. We're actually going to clear this. Yeah. Can't get a bit too ambitious there. I think he could have taken the third easily and been in a great position, but now he's lost his army. The third next is untouched. In fact, it's still mining, and yes, he reduced the Gladius count a bit, but it cost him so much. Yeah, that's right. He didn't even, I don't even know if he's aware of the third. His Avaleth came mm. in, maybe the Avaleth spotted some scribes, but not the Nexus, because it came in from this angle, so not exactly uh, in the right spot to reveal that. I do think if he had an inkling that the third was up at this point, he absolutely could have uh, sharked into that and just uh, removed that from the map, right? Well, that, maybe that's the real failing here is the map awareness, not so much mm. the tactics, right? Um like, if he knew it was there, maybe he would have gone for it, like you say. But his draw left count is still really low. Uh, for three bases, let alone four, 42 is extremely low. Imagine what your base looks like if you have, like, 10.5 workers out there. It's pretty low, man. Yeah. That's, like, the first two minutes of the game. Really needs to draw up here, but he might not have a chance now. Hamster coming across. But that said, there are a couple of backlists still. Plenty of high glitz. He will walk this Ooh. off pretty easily, I think. Yeah, he needs to dive onto the Gladiuses, but he's spending most of his initial DPS onto the Zealots, and the Zeths are going to get chewed up by everything oh, else not called the Gladius. <laughs> and look at that. Yeah, the bounce attacks really starting to stack up. A lot of these Hydras very, very low. Zealot reinforcements coming across the bridge. This might be a bridge too far. Taco Cake, he's losing a lot of forces here. Yeah, I mean, he killed the ground army, but Hamster really doesn't care about these Zealots and Dracodons. He just cares about his Gladius. Uh, there's a bit of a cast system going here that uh, Zealots don't get to survive. It starts to draw up a little more, but I think he's really just fundamentally not aware of how many he needs to make, because he's just sort of half doing it. Uh, making a lot more Zephyr Hydra here. I mean, he can continue warding off with the Zephyr Hydra, but the Gladius will get to a number, but there's nothing in tier one that's going to help unless <laughs> you have like an insane number of skiffs. Yeah, that's right. Got this witness on patrol looking for any drops. So are starting to slowly saturate some of these bases, but they are definitely painfully undersaturated overall, as you are astute to point out. At this point, Hamster has a better economy on, you know, one less base, right? With the yeah. exception of the gas potential mining here for Taco oh. Cake. But he doesn't seem to want that too much. He's tanking with the Avaleths. We've seen this tactic before. One of them gets picked up. The rest is it of them... actually good, Ooh. though? Is He's... it just enabling bounces? Yeah, right now it is. I mean, look at this Gladius count up to six. And there's not very many Bactylists, right? Only three of them. You need maybe six. You need equivalent... I think back close count to the Gladius. He's going to try to dive forward, but yeah. again, he's not right-clicking the Gladiuses, which are channeling so much of that damage over time. Well, Bactylists not with the DPS they need, although turning into Hydralis gets the job done, I guess. Uh, does get one. Okay, only three here is actually not that bad. And Tucker is continuing to trade out. If he could just uh, get these bases in gear, he'd be ahead economically. And I don't think Hamster has got any other tech here. Just relying on barreling down with this production that he has. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he's going for the Envoy Triple Stargate. Oh my god. He's making three Gladiuses at a time right now. This is why you need tier two, man. You could get those um, Vifralisks and back them up with something like, uh, what do you call them, Calculus, something like that. Oh, yeah. You could really crush this, uh, especially with no Patriarchs yet, right? Oh, he's diving in way too close here. You can't commit like that when the Zelts are still alive. You can absolutely shred it. Where yeah. is Tuckick's army oh. right now? Does he have nothing left? Oh, well, a lot of them were over here. If that was organized at the same time, I think he probably does end up breaking that. It's the Zealots to initially be out of position here, caught. And this is going to lead Hamster to a base that I don't think he even knew existed in the top left. Uh, 
the bounces. Yeah, trying to fight over it. You can see these Hydras on the oh, wrong move. Oh, oh, I don't know oh. what was going on with that. Yeah, they're trying to target the Gladius, but you have to respect the Zealots. And what would really benefit to here actually is some kind of mineral frontline spam like Zorius or Izzy. It sounds crazy, but against Gladius. Well, hang on. Hemp's getting a bit lazy. You can't fight naked with these Gladius. They need something to cover them. The Hydras can actually sort of handle them on their own. And look at that. It gets another two. Yeah, you'll trade those down as often as you want. About a couple of workers did go down over here, and he's still down. He's not. He's only, only at fifty-seven. I mean, that's a that's a, a happy count. That if you're playing StarCraft One, this ain't StarCraft One. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Four bases. You got fifty-seven joins StarCraft One. You're like, oh, you probably made a little bit too many. Oh, here we go. He's going to take them out though. Don't worry, the numbers going down. That's uh, right. That's and I right. don't think. Taco Cake can't effectively respond to this. His army's out here on the map, and if he does go up in the corner, uh, the Gladius is going to come up again. Look at that here. They're coming for a fight anyway. There's nine of them, man. There's almost no chance for the Hydras to make it through, especially with these Zealots here. At this point, you could effectively just solo this comp with the Gladiuses yeah. alone. And, of course, over here, we've got a bit of a Zealot bomb. Zethercores were in position to stop this, though, only killing one worker. Well, I say that. They've carved through that. Mm, Zephyrcore is not really the unit to handle those zealots right now. Not in small uh, quantities, anyway. I mean, if you got three zealots, yeah. you probably need something like at least six Zeths and good micro. And you can't really micro at this stage of the game when you're busy trying to macro up and control all your bases. But top left has been claimed by the zealot run by. No defenses were erected over there. And it wasn't particularly saturated now. You know, this is more like it. I mean, you're a little bit extra, but if you can make yeah, all your right. bases look like this, they're great. Hamster has finally solved the saturation problem for him, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Ancestral yeah. Archives coming behind this. He's got a Crucible mm. for faster production as well. I mean, man, his base is looking wonder, real formidable. This base probably could have been laid out such that he could put that Crucible for all three Stargates and the Ancestrals, but unfortunately it's That's what he's got. Away, I think. Yep. Has it got the bottom right one? Yep. There's a little bit oh, of a okay. white glow to indicate. Oh, I see, I see. Well, never mind. It's perfectly placed. I'll never question Hamster's base layout again. Dude, he's, even, he's even got the embassies, man. And yes, that's an ancestral and uh, just more gateways right now being added. Oh, on. okay. Yeah, yeah but that's in the Patriarch will really shut down any possibilities here uh, because yeah. what's good against the Gladius is actually like things like Skifrakor or Calculus because you can splash them. But if they stack up, the Patriarchs will absolutely annihilate them as well. All these uh, anti-surface defenses are predictably falling to the Gladius horde. And I'm really scared for this kind of composition if it goes up against all the mass Gladius situation. But now with all the Kagrants regressed, we are indeed going to see a mass Zealot drop oh in the top God. right. That's going to make the army go back home. There's really nothing left here. GG. Taco Cake has to call it. And that's Hamster taking it 3-0. Oh. Yeah, crushing him, honestly. Uh, you know, that triple en envoy, didn't we see that in groups? Is Hamster doing that for us? That's someone else. Yeah, Hamster likes his drops, man. He likes to he likes to go that way. Omar and chat, no, there aren't uh, Scourge, but there are very good anti-air options that we did not see this game. Taco Cake got stuck in very low tier composition. They definitely are options, don't worry. Yeah, that is indeed correct. And that means that we look to Hamster as the champ himself. And man, you know, I am very surprised that uh, Taco Cake got slapped by Hamster in the early game those first two matches, mostly because it's kind of uncharacteristic for Hamster. Do you agree with that, Nevlon? Like, I feel like he doesn't normally yeah. do that kind of thing. Yeah, I do agree, actually. He did seem more aggressive this time, kind of uh, counteracted everything I was saying about him. In I a think way. he's here to win it this time, man. Oh. He does not want another silver medal. Yeah, that's right. I don't know if you caught the, who, who was around at the very start when we had that uh, Throne Rim hype intro, but I had these little questions that were for every single player coming in, and indeed, the mm. hamster was, you know, forever the silver medalist kind of thing. Mm. Like, well, is he really never gonna get gonna come away with a trophy? Well, he he's looking pretty formidable. He did obviously exit with the highest seed out of his group, and that means that he was matched against the lowest second seed. But still, you know, PVZ having good uh, fundamentals in that, that's going to help, not just because you, Neblim, are Zerg, but Art of Turtle seems to be scaling up and doing some more practice. We haven't seen his match just yet, so we don't know how that goes, but he's paired against Hepsea. That'll be quarterfinal number three. So we got three more series for you today, and I do think that, you know, having being able to play against Zerg is really good. But like I mentioned at the start, man, being able to get play against Protoss is also really good. So, yeah, there's a world where, I mean, depending on who T Taco Cake's going to fight, the loser of the match that you play, right? Neblin versus Newt. Uh, obviously, there's like a favorite in that particular situation, but Newt is a scary Terran. Now, it, it's coming to that point where, at this point, Taco Cake has to play against somebody that isn't Protoss. But even still, having that versus Protoss comp, having that little bit of experience... That third game was much better from Taco Cake, and I feel like if, if all of the games looked like that, this could have been a much closer series. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, and there were there were definitely uh, ways it could have gone that didn't go. Like, even that last game was the closest. Mm -hmm. uh, but Tiger Cake, unfortunately, not with the sort of awareness of what's going on in the game. And I think that shows in all three games, actually. Yep. Um, you know, he's got ideas, obviously, about what to do. But he just was not uh, fully fully strategically, uh, what's the word? Stute, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's a fair thing to bring up that uh, obviously Taco Cake was uh, not aware of how the matchup would go necessarily, needs to play a little bit more of that particular one. His brother, Vicious Box, is in the server and has apparently been cheating towards Protoss lately. So he'll have some versus Protoss practice in the family at the very least. Always a fan of little narratives like that, right? But uh, that does indeed finalize this first match. We do know now that it was uh, Hamster to take it 3 and 0. Oh. Uh, and that will conclude the coverage of quarterfinal number one. And Hamster, like you mentioned, is looking pretty considerable, I would say. Uh, somebody to watch out for, for sure. Uh, any any sort of closing thoughts, I guess, Nebline? Because we are going on to, to your game against Newt. And, you know, we don't want to talk too much about it because obviously you know the outcome yeah. already. But, uh, you know, that's a, that's an exciting one. And on the other side, Hapsaya versus Art of Turtle, the Shameless versus General Anakin. These are all... Good ones that I think will be very, I'm especially interested in what happens in quarterfinal number three. Uh, but uh, yours is another big one. And do you reckon that the challenge is going to start pretty soon for Hamster? Do you, you think he's going to just be able to clean sweep it? Because if you win versus Newt and then face Hamster, th we're talking about a situation where you're talking about him saying, oh, he's going to be the guy to win it all potentially. That means he's going to have to go up against you next if you're winning your match. So how do you feel about that? Well, there's two possible scenarios, right? If it's me, Hamster and I have played, like I said, like a hundred games versus each other. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who that's better for, right? Because we both learn how to defeat each other. So uh -huh. in theory, it should be as close as possible, right? right. Uh, but if it's up against Newt, I mean, Newt is really strong and he's looking very threatening to even take his first Acropolis. Would be a royal road for him if he gets past me and Hamster as well. Uh, and, you know, finals, obviously. Um, but he does say he's very weak against Protoss. Mm -hmm. So Hamster should probably be rooting for Newt in this series coming up. Okay. But at that, I think I better I better leave you. I'm going to deaf until it's back for the next one. Enjoy watching me play. There it is. There it is. A man of many words here because he's my co-caster. But few words when it comes to his own match, predictably. We are going to go in to quarter final number two. So let's uh, get ready for that. I can start by, of course, looking at our players uh, the first of which is the guy that you just heard from, the 29-year-old Aussie, the man from Down Under. He's playing Zerg. It's Neblime. His favorite unit is the Harakin. That's not even in his race. But hey, uh, something that I forgot to mention from the, the previous intro, I did ask everybody uh, for uh, what they would end up doing if they, you know, won the prize or like what would they do with prize winnings, basically. Uh, Hamster said he would just send it to me for Cosmonarchy development. Very nice lad. Appreciate you, dude. Rooting for you. <laughs> And Taco Cake said he would use it for uh, gas money. So, of course, there's a classic move, right? You know, that, that that's always going up. But Neblime over here, he's just going to pump it back into the prize pool. What a what a nice fella trying to come in here and continue to bankroll. He's, I think he might actually have outspent Biddy B for this event, which is pretty surprising considering Biddy B literally sponsored it with his uh, with his company. So just saying, just saying. He's, uh, he's, he's coming in here from the top rope with a lot of cash, money bags over here. And that's just so that he can win most of it back. So uh, that's his thinking anyway. Uh, he is in all reality, a pretty solid player for this particular event. Uh, we did end up giving him the lowest seed out of the top players because he was the only one to be bruised and lose a single match, as you can see in the player stats. That's the kind of thing that happens sometimes when you're in Group C and you're up against Top Ramen, who's another guy who's played against you a lot. Uh, and he actually played against Taco Cake in that group and was able to take him to ZVZ school a little bit. But going into this match, ZVT, because his opponent is none other than the Amphibian himself, it's Newt, the only Terran player to make it to the throne room, this double elimination bracket. His favorite unit, the Wraith. I don't know if we'll see that in this matchup, but it absolutely could be the case. Even Neblime has remarked about Newt's incredible, impeccable, lovely Wraith micro. And I do think that it's something that if we do end up seeing, it will be sublime. Not Neblime, but sublime. Maybe we'll also see Neblime 
uh, and, and you know it, it is a series where he's playing in, so you'd have to expect that. Uh, one of the I, I think actually this makes uh, Newt tied for the oldest of our current competitors, except for I guess tied for second. We'll reveal who the first place in terms of age, the highest age, oldest man, boomer man, boomerist man. Uh, coming up, at least of the the figures that were sent to me, because uh, Shambler did not share his age, but everybody else did. So hats off to you guys for coming clear in that. All y'all boomers, uh, nude out here, rocking the 31. I'll be catching up to you soon, buddy. And yeah, he uh, was second place in his group. He wasn't able to get past Hamster, but he was able to get past Three Crow. So his versus Protoss woes were not entirely complete, shall we say? Um, now he goes up against Zerg, Neblime, his nemesis, perhaps. I mean, somebody that he was not happy to see. He wanted to hope that, uh, you know, Top Robin could take him out in groups or something. I feel like that's a little far-fetched, but, you know, doesn't end up avoiding the draw. Uh, and with Newt looking the strongest of our second seeds, there is a real chance that he can take Neblime down. This is a match that I'm very excited to be able to bring you guys. So as I get ready for jumping straight on in to that very match, just remember that this is one that could really decide what happens here. And Neblime said that Newt is indeed the guy on the Royal Road. And by that, we mean he is the guy who has first ever qualified to playoffs. This is his first time. He was uh, ousted in group stage of his first event back in the later stages of 2023. That was Ascension number seven. He was uh, revenged upon by Veek7, who got it, got his revenge for the, uh, the gauntlet match. Uh, so that was very hype. Uh, but our guy here looking to play it up a little bit. And he absolutely wants to be able to uh, make it past Neblime. He's certainly going to need to one way or another if he wants to make it all the way to the finals or just deep into the tournament in general. So without further ado, I think it is high time. Fellas, let's see what happens in this second quarterfinal. And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. It is Newt in the bottom left, Neblime in the top right. It's impetus for the first map selected by Newt as he was the lower seed. I am excited to see this one through. I'll get you guys the rest of the map pick, of course. Handy dandy Discord threads allowing me to uh, keep all of this stuff together here. Oh, these guys didn't actually do it the way that I normally do. Okay, so let's see. It was Neblime to ban Derelict. After that, it was... Let's see. <laughs> Nude had some funny commentary of his bans. <laughs> so, uh, Neblime, let's see. Uh, Newt banned Titan Forge. Neblime banned Fada Morgana. And Impetus was left over as the starter. That obviously gives us four additional maps after the fact, including Sideshow, which is a map that many people think is favored for Zerg in all matchups, but particularly versus Terran. Basically, people think Sideshow is the weakest Terran map or one of the weakest maps for Terran, and that uh, Sideshow is also the best map for Zerg, or at least Zerg is best on that map. So if you can think about that, it's not like a matchup specific thing, but it's like if you had to rank which race likes the map most, it would be you know Zerg, then Protoss, then Terran at the last there. So it will be a high ground ramp patch here for Neblime, going for the pool after, very standard stuff. It will be a fulcrum opener, no surprises there. Newt is not a fan of the bio in general in this current state of the game. We'll see if that ends up changing as more Terran players start to come up with their own strategies. Mason coming up here just to see the scout. We'll end up moving on past. See, it's pretty basic, pretty standard. Vulture coming out here for Newt. And we'll see if he wants to go for the... Let's see, what is he doing? Okay, he's going to go for the double star pad, it looks like, judging by his gas flood. I was going to say, is he going for a quarry or what? Uh, waiting for the uh, minerals required, and there we go. That's a one vulture start, and he has not picked the worker scout. So I think he's going to return home because he hasn't been able to find it exactly. Returning home with his own as well. See how fast he is on the reaction there. Doesn't end up consuming the mine, which is probably pretty good for... Uh, Newt, he'll be a little bit happy about that. 
Let's see what the response is, because Neblime was talking about Newt's Wraith Micro. So it's absolutely a scary situation. Just looking around for that Worker Scout, didn't end up seeing where it went. Pretty bog standard. We have a Cyclops in the back. Okay, so this could also transition into a drop at some point. I don't think it will. But uh, with a couple Cyclops here to hold the, the Quasi push, as well as with the Mines as well, like you really cannot threaten that. Although I guess they could be spaced a little bit better. Like this one could be like a little bit more towards the center of the ramp. Well, this one's, you know, right where it is. Either way though, Cyclops are going to be pretty good. They do cut into your gas a little bit, but they're actually cheaper on... Uh, oh no, I guess they're the same as minerals, I believe. I think they're 100 minerals as well. So anyway, uh, Cyclops are absolutely a, a great unit. Neblime is, uh, thinks that they are S tier, of course. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily rate them that high, but you know, to each their own. Um, pretty good though, pretty good. Moving across the map right now with an Ovaleth that has nothing in it. Ooh, will it see the Wraiths? I think it will not. Yeah, Neblime would definitely click on the map if there was that, but that means that the uh, star pad will get scouted here. And the Quasis are already on their way back. Although not really, I mean, there's a bunch of them laying around in the main. And there's a hatch that's only now starting for the expansion. So yeah, as soon as he sees that, he's gonna say, all right, I have my Quasis already here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave them burrowed. Got a Kagrant coming. The Wraiths get decloaked by the Hatcherosk, so he even knows what angle they're coming in from. And a Hydrothen as well starting. What is Newt's reaction? Gonna go ahead and sort of hug the top edge of the map. He'll pick one Quasi. And this is an awkward spot because all the Quasis have to unburrow. They couldn't, you know, maybe there was a, the banking was that, oh yeah, I'll just sit out over here. We do have multiple rates. Double star pad, it sounds a lot uh, in terms of, like it sounds like it's very committal. But the biggest thing is if you keep using them, then you never really get your quarry up. He's getting a stockade behind it for a vestry instead of a quarry. So it does feel like, oh, look at that. He's even going to be able to pick the Obelith. That's very nice. He could have maybe gotten away without losing the uh, one of the wraiths there, but that's all right. And a treasury coming behind that. There's the vestry. That'll be for a shaman. Just going to continue wraith production. So, you know, forcing another Obelith purchase at some point from Neblime. It's not bad. The Hydras are going to come out, though, and I feel like... You know, with the sprites here as well, the Quasi's guarding over here. Uh, I think Newt should get out of here pretty soon, man. He's, uh, he maybe just didn't see that, maybe panned over a little bit too late. So that Burrow Trap is probably going to mean the end of the Wraith solo push. But we do have the Cyclops coming out, and they will deal with the, the Quasilisk, right? So this could be a nice little combined arms push before the circuits can get up. I don't know if Neblime is aware of this. He's actually going to skip Hydras entirely right now, going straight for the Ski Bact. Wants to be able to field his own air units. And look at this, the Kagrin's gonna come in and you know, one of them is gonna get popped down before it can really do anything. There's another one, yeah, that, that one's also dead. So all of a sudden, Neblime has to second guess himself here. If that, uh, okay, that's gonna get canceled. I was gonna say, this could actually have turned into a Spraith and been annoying for the Wraiths. Uh, Newt's gotta watch out here. He's gonna end up losing two units for free. That's a, uh, oh yeah, okay, never mind. I think he right clicked instead of a, uh, or attack moved or something. Not sure what happened there. Losing the, the Vulture and that Cyclops, especially the Cyclops actually hurts a lot here since you're trying to get up to a uh, critical mass. This does force Hydras out though. You can't really go skiff into a bunch of Cyclops. Uh, unfortunate rally points here for the Wraiths mean that he's also going to continue hemorrhaging units. He should try to commit to killing this hatch, but it looks like he's not going to just yet. Some Quasis popped in here and uh, looks like, I don't know if that was caught or what, but uh, Newt is going to fall away. It does feel like he should have fi finished this hatch off. That uh, seemed like a pretty big mistake for our Terran boy. His Vulture has, um, I'm not sure what his Vulture is doing. It looks like it's right-clicked onto something. Oh, there you go. He's uh, freeing it from its uh, from its binds, its chains. Yeah, I would say th this opening game, it looked like it was pretty Newt favored, but it's started to become a little bit on the sloppy side. He's hemorrhaged a bunch of units to rallies. He's uh, also obviously given up the time, the tempo that he had. He won't be able to finish the hatch. We do have a single skith anyway. And now it looks like the Shaman is going to park itself in the top left, use it for uh, healing, but also, oh, there we go. Random Mason Scout confirming continuously what's happening over here. I wonder why the Shaman is so far away. What is Newt thinking here? He never decided to restart the anchor, so that's a little awkward. And try to mass up with the Wraiths. Does he have this in the selection group? It doesn't look like it right now. Moving across with the Cyclops. I think maybe we have a broken replay. I'm not going to lie. Neblime, did you check these replays? 
Are you being a goober? You're being a goober, aren't you? Are you goobering me right now? You just killed a Cyclops with your Droleth, dude. What kind of sorcery is this? Yeah, this is for sure busted. That's all right. We'll backdate. Yeah, no kidding. Well, give us one moment here while we uh, look at the culprit for this uh, travesty. Hold on, i got to switch back to Neb 1. All right, and this is the man you can blame, Bolo. Be on the lookout for the man himself. Switching back to a previous version of the game here. Might be the wrong one. Was this the laggy one? Because you had two different impetuses, but you uh, only sent me one. Yeah, let me so. let me just jump in here. Do you want me to explain and reveal the truth? Is this the lag? Did you send the laggy one in? Is that what happened? It seems that I have, and that's also why it's the wrong version because we played that, then we updated. So oh, okay. shall I shall I tell people what happened? Well, that game didn't count, so you guys got You got to yeah. send me the real one. Yes, and okay. I'll tell people on stream, we had a game, it was our first game, but it was insanely laggy, and then it desynced, which was actually kind of a good thing, because then we could definitely not count the laggy game. So that was actually just the warm-up, I'm going to send the real match one. I just remember, what date was it played? Do you still have the thread, Pernogo? Uh, yeah, I can uh, ping you in it, so you can see. Oh, that's not you. Oh, good. Yeah. Thread's still open. So I pinged you in, well, it's, okay. it's open for me. I'll just see when I upload it. Okay, 17th. Okay, so it should be... Look at this man. Theoretically... Oh, hang on, I can't open it because I have my stupid Discord. Oh, no, I don't have permission to send in that channel, just DM it to you. Yeah, that's fine. Should be that one? Just check that that's not the same one you already have? Uh, let's find out. It's a little unfortunate for our man here who went for his uh, strategy immediately. <laughs> that was the laggy game. Uh, yeah, this uh, this is a different file size, so I would definitely... Say okay, all right, well, I'll leave you to it. That should be the right one. I'll, uh, I'll DM you if you start it and it's not. Or I'll probably should jump in voice chat and be like, stop, we're not going to do it. All right. Yeah, all right, sounds good. Okay. All right, boys, we are uh, going to go ahead and redo. Pretend uh, that this didn't even happen to begin with. You just navigate there. This is the wrong one. Okay. Uh, all right, we should be good now. Let's go on back and uh, yeah, as predicted, uh, we are just now starting quarterfinal number two between Neblime and Newt. Who will take the trophy? Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are in for the real first game between Newt in the top right and Neblime in the bottom left of Impetus. The map picks again. Remember, it was Neblime who was the higher seed. His first ban was Derelict. Can you believe it? Banning a map by Biddy B? I don't, I don't understand this. After that, Newt banned Titan Forge, which left Sideshow in the pool. And then Neblime decided to ban Fata Morgana. Newt selected Impetus as the starter. And they played Impetus once, but it was really laggy, so then they replayed it after uh, it broke. Because of lag, probably, and not because of the game wink. And then, here we are. So, uh, Newt had opened Double Star Pad in the initial match. We'll see if he ends up doing that again. It was after a Fulcrum opener with a single Vulture. So, if he ends up doing the same thing, even though Neblime is aware that that is a thing that could happen. So far, Neblime going for that hatch opener here as well. Makes a lot of sense, right? Now, if I had to speculate as far as how this whole uh, ordeal has gone, my speculation would be that what we are going to see from Neblime, if he ends up dropping a map in this series, what he would be the one to flex into Sideshow. Sideshow, a map that many people believe 
Uh, I think the, the community consensus right now is that uh, Terran is weakest on Sideshow, Protoss is in the middle, and Zerg is best, strongest on Sideshow. We will have a pool after hatch, and then we will have the scout. So our players are scouting at around the same time. Newt banking a lot of gas, but not. Uh, he's queued up a worker, so he, we know he's not going for the quarry, which means he's going to go for that double star pad timing. And he's deliberately choosing to make two of them at, at the same time, uh, probably to avoid uh, revealing it to a scout or something to, for, to that effect, or maybe just likes that timing a little bit better. He wants to bank up to uh, 250 gas before he really gets it started. And so I would, yeah, I would definitely expect Nabon to pick Sideshow if it comes to that. Vulture obviously catching the worker. No chance at evading that. You can stand on borrowed units and cause Monarchy to reveal them, so that's why Newt does that move. And it looks like it's pretty much the same thing. We'll see what ends up happening. No, it's actually... Okay, I was going to say it's only one star pad, but no, it is a second star pad. If you go for an unconventional strategy and it doesn't win you the game or the game gets redone for whatever technical reason due to some uh, issue or another... There is a mind game in there, which is, am I going to do it again? And your opponent has to consider that as well. But this time around, there is a little of a wrinkle. He's now charging forward with double vulture. He had only come across with one vulture and then went straight back home after. But he also didn't get the scout pick in the early stages either. So showing at least one across the map is a little bit more aggressive. Neblon not aware of the second vulture. Because in the, in the uh, dummy game that didn't end up getting played, it was a uh, vulture into straight Cyclops production. But in this case, we've got two vultures out already. So we're going to see how that one plays out. He hasn't laid any mines yet. Cyclops now holding the ramp. We'll see if that ends up changing. All right, let's see what ends up happening here. Laying the mines, inviting Neblime in. He's going to go ahead and sacrifice one worker there, or one uh, Quasilisk there. And this is actually a much scarier push than what happened before. He sees the Cyclops. He will charge in and get uh, some nice uh, early damage dealt. There is another Cyclops coming. There is no, there's one more mine that can be placed here, but he's obviously going to kite backwards into the wraiths. And as another Cyclops pops in, we are going to start to see some worker damage. Newt does not have as many workers as he would normally have because he d did not end up going for that quarry, remember? So he loses a gas worker. We'll see if he remembers to fully saturate that. That'll be very important for the double star pad, which is now revealed to Neblime, and he goes for the Spraith on both his hatches, as well as, of course, the low ground expansion coming. The Avaleth was halfway across the map for a scout. It will not be necessary because the attack force stabbed in instead. So this position isn't really unplayable for either player. Like, it, it, there's definitely play on both sides. But I have to say that the longer Newt goes without the quarry, the more likely it will be that he needs to actually make something happen in the early stages of the game. And he's only got the two wraiths, and he's just going to end up forcing maybe one worker kill. Okay, he gets one worker kill and gets out, narrowly gets out, with both wraiths. So that's actually the most like, winningest thing I could possibly see in that situation. But he needs to trade like that for a little bit. Because even though right now he's got the worker advantage, that's not going to last for very long. We see another Kagrin going down in the mineral line here for Neblime. He's got his Avaleth in the area that he can use for detection to stop them from attacking the Quasis or whatever the case may be. And even though we've got a Vestry coming, which will in inevitably and invariably end up providing you the Shaman for healing, I still suspect that Newt will end up being um, a little bit behind, right? He's sort of trading spaces with his wraiths. We're going to get this extra base. At any point, the Zerg can just switch on and go straight for worker production. So that seems to be what Nebline is going to be going for. He has a circuit here to guard against a uh, push from the ground units. And his uh, quasis are going to go ahead, unburrow, ward off those units. The Vestry is finished, so we should, we should see a Shaman pretty soon. Treasury being made on the location. Repairs for the wraiths. Also cutting into the... Uh, production here, the the resource harvesting. And the Fulcrum is idle right now. She's just going to stay on the five Cyclops and one Vulture for the time being, as far as his ground force is considered. Hydrath nearly complete, so we will be seeing whether or not Nebulon wants to go for the ski backed again. That is the evolved Hydrath. Gives you access to three additional units. Or, sorry, two additional units. By default, Zerg units, uh, Zerg structures, you get three units from the pool, three units from the den, right? And then you can evolve them for two additional units, one of which is an air unit that comes from the larva, and the other of which is an evolved version of the primary unit. So the evolved pool gives you a, a evolution for the Zethracor, aka Zergling. The evolved den gives you an evolution from the Hydralisk. So that's how you can see that in action. We do have a Palladium coming here. Avaleth, going to get picked in the middle of the map. We'll see that the Wraith count is continuing to climb. Doesn't see the Shaman. Doesn't know where he can go ahead and find that. He's going to get suspicious about it a little bit later on because the Wraith Count 
uh, part of the wraiths here, something that actually Nebulime himself innovated early on in Cosmonarchy back in the year one, which is really only half a year, but we can we can call it year one, 2023. Uh, he ended up putting a Shaman down, deploying it uh, when it got the ability to deploy, because it didn't always, and then uh, using it to heal his wraiths up in between fights. But also, a crucial point is it magic boxes your units automatically, because in this deployment, it cannot move. It'd be the same thing as selecting a burrowed unit in StarCraft 1 or a trapped uh, worker or something. Now we've got double anchor. We are gonna see the, the Cyclops get put into those. We do have a Palladium, so that will need to be used for Phalanxes to resp respect the ground push that Nebulime is capable of making. And both of our players on two bases, Nuke catching up in workers right now and has the opportunity to charge on in using that magic boxing and just picking one worker, two worker, Ooh, a third worker before the burrow. That's very nice. And he can return home to heal up that wounded uh, Wraith if he wants to. Oh, before he even tasks him back on, pick, coming in for two more. Okay, we're, we're starting to see a little bit from Newt. Remember, during this time, Nebula, I'm just making workers anyway. He's going to go ahead for grab a Larvos, get his natural. Very unlikely you stab in here uh, to the front because uh, that's, that's where the army rally point could be anyway. Going up to 14 rates, you need probably around, I would say, 16, 18 to reliably pick Spraiths, and even then it's gonna be a bit awkward. Ooh, nice snipe onto that, though. That's effectively a worker dead. Gonna now stab in. Nice pick onto the Larvosk. This is looking really strong here. Picking some gas workers as well. We like this. Even goes after the Kagrin after all that. And look at that, he could pick another Larvosk. That's where that's where I would be thinking anyway. Neblime is in a lot of trouble all of a sudden. Does need to watch out for that. Now the Spraiths are doing some nice coverage, but the rates are finding a little bit of an opportunity here. Still only 13 of them, but that can definitely be good enough. Now, we have some clerics here, and we have the phalanx on the high ground, but the anchor only now getting repaired by a single mason. And now the ant seal is coming in. This will unlock a whole new level here. Skither core is in production, but there's only three of them. Ant seal is protecting versus the spraiths. They are absolutely going to chew through this. And there we go. Now stabbing on in. Remember, the ant seal also detects in addition to its shield. You cannot burrow versus it. You can see Neblime realizing that. He's going to start falling away. Only one spray, and it's about half HP, but it looks like ant seals are almost out of energy, so we will see Newt withdraw. Now, the Skithercore does give, give uh, it deals a little bit of splash, gives you a little bit of AoE, so that can really cut through the ant seal shield and eventually uh, slice on through the wraiths as well. I think with that knowledge, Newt is aware that he needs to think about uh, returning home to the Shaman outpost where he will be able to heal his wraiths very slowly, but they will indeed heal. And he is gonna go ahead and move out with double phalanx. Got a couple of clerics for healing. Their nano gun, giving them the opportunity to heal mech units, as you can see. No longer only a tool for bio. Scouting that army, Neblime still thinks that it's a good idea to move off to the side. He wants to borrow and set up for a flank. The problem is he doesn't really have that much over here. He's got eight Skitha cores. He's making two more as well as four Hydras. But look, the Ant Seals come with the rest of the army, and suddenly his uh, units over here are off to the side, isolated. And this might actually be enough for the Killing Blow, man. Like, he hasn't been able to do any damage to the Ant Seals, nor to the Wraiths. He's got to deal with, what, 17 Wraiths here. There's more units streaming across. He's trying to set up the circuits, but the Cyclops are here to help deal with the stacked air as well. So this is going to be a very volatile fight, and Newt has to respect that. But look at that, idling in the space. That can be a lot of damage the Cyclops can deal. Now I'm going to go ahead and siege with the Phalanxes and Leapfrog forward, calling on the Skither cores to charge forward to try to deal with that. Not so sure that they have the ability to. You can see the air units sharking back and forth, trying to outrun that damage. Ant Seal's protecting for now, but that shield won't hold for very long versus all the splash. We've got nine Skither cores now. Stabbing on in. Not that many Bactalisks, though. This is really where it's all at, and it's looking like Newt is going to be able to take it. What's the reaction over here? Yeah, it's just going to be called GG. Newt takes the first match. And we are looking at a solid, solid series on our hands. At least initially. The underdog bruising him in the opener. I would say pretty solid stuff. And you know what that means, guys. We get to switch back over to none other than Newt. To look at his mug. To look at his face. Say, hey, dude, you just won that match. We got... Of course, this is all best of five, so we do have more to cast between these two. Would you call them contenders? I mean, Neblime definitely, he's the reigning champion after all, but uh, we are gonna need to see what his reaction to that is. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen. My God, Sideshow selected by Neblime. He is in the bottom right. 
Newt in the top left. What more could you ask for? Well, I'm sure if you're Newt, you could ask for Sideshow to not be in the map pool. See, there's some conversation from Neblime in the chat saying that actually the innovation about the shamans was uh, from Mystery Meat. Long live Mystery Meat. May he return later this month or in the next. Equipped with weekends to play Cosmonarchy with. Now that he's starting his new job. Hats off to him. It, there's this power vacuum left because Mystery Meat is not in the tournaments anymore. He's not playing very actively anymore. We need more quality Terran players for sure. Maybe Herbmon will be enough for us. But enough about the rising stars. Let's talk about what we have right in front of us. Neblime. He is going to be spreading the Kagra by his ramp. Meanwhile, Newt does have uh, multiple gas harvesters. Nice and early behind this Fulcrum. Has his builds cut out. Is he going to go for a quarry? Is he just going to go for Wraiths again, right? Like, maybe that's his idea. He's just going to stick to the Wraiths. Worker coming on over here, scooting across, seeing what it can see. And we do indeed have the pool starting. All right, Vulture are gonna go ahead and leave the building. We've got enough room in here from Newt to go for a variety of different things, but it looks like he might be thinking about the double star pad opener again. And I say that because he's banking a lot of gas and he's not he's definitely not gonna go for like a single Fulcrum uh, add-on. Is it a proxy? Proxy Stockade? Okay. Now that's curious. He's going Vultures behind it. He is banking a lot of gas. He's, he's pulled the workers off of gas now, though. Okay, he's going to leave himself at 200 Vespine. That's enough for pretty much one of anything. And Vulture does make, manage to get in. So far, not able to get too much done. He will stun a lot of the workers. He's a big fan of stunning the workers. Well, I say a lot. He only stunned three. Oh, okay. He stunned six after that. Maybe that was worth Probably not, but does uh, does uh, get a lot of the mining time taken care of. Look, a Zerg Shambler. Oh, wait. Hold on. I think Newt figured that out. Oh, no. No, he did not. He pulls back. You know how in uh, StarCraft 1, the early units that you put together, um, they try to, like, abuse the, the Avaleth vision, right? The Overlord vision. And, uh, you know, you move out with, like, the Marines or whatever in Terran. I feel like Newt has inadvertently done that same thing over this Burrowed Worker. But he's going to come out here and see... Wait, you you don't actually have anything. And that's because a Cyprian is being made behind enemy lines. Neblime has no idea. There's, there could be an anchor behind that too, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. A lot of money in the bank here. Going to go ahead and add a Fulcrum and a Treasury for it. How many Cyprians does he mass up is the question. And how long until Neblime starts to scout his own base for the floated stockade play? Not so sure. We got many vultures. Hey, this Cyclops could start tickling the Avalet. Looks like <laughs> Neblime will allow him, will provoke him to do that, I, I suppose. Only one Cyprian, second one nearly complete. Hydra then here. Quasi's very much out of position. I mean, this could end really poorly, but I also feel like it's if it's only Cyprians, they can get overwhelmed very quickly as well. However, there's only three Quasis here. So like, what is the what exactly is it going to be? He's gonna make a third Cyprian. Yeah, if you have even Cyprian to Quasi count, I mean, you can kill a lot of workers, man. But we'll see what happens. There's no star pad here for detection, so they can choose to just burrow or whatever. And Cyprian is pretty immobile. I would actually kind of like this a little bit better if it wasn't so gas intensive, right? Man, he's going to make another one? Okay, now he's moving ahead with three Cyprians. It's a pretty long production time as well. He could have like five, six Mavericks. There we go. First couple shots fired. Nice. Nice early damage, though. Trying to hit the stop key so that he doesn't clump up too much, but he's already lost four. We're probably going to see more. No, he, he's barely doing any damage to that one. There we go. Well, he did kill a lot of workers. This is not at all... I don't think ne Neblime expected this ever. He could end up losing his... Uh, he could lose his Kagrin as well, man. He's making that into a Larvoskin. He isn't canceling it either. 
Well, not not gonna be focused down right now. And yeah, here's where you're gonna get into a bullet hell situation. Just <laughs> ducking behind the Hydra then for cover. And here's a circuit as well. So there goes that. I think Mavericks probably would have served him a little bit better, but hey, you can't argue with the results. Look at this. Look how good a Cyprian is, dude. It almost won v one to Hydra. I feel like that's pretty good. Well, a stockade has been found. You should cancel that for sure. But that's a lot of gas, and now Nude has a lot of minerals as well. I feel like, I don't know what he's been doing throughout all of this. I don't know if he was fr frantically microing all of his units or what, but he's got a thousand minerals in the bank right now. Going to go for the quarry and the natural vultures sortying through the middle of the map. Nude says, first time using Cyprians. My goodness. Well, the vultures are going to charge in, get some, a little bit of worker damage. There you go, two to, to close it out. Yeah, I feel like um, it still definitely put Neblime into an awkward position. He's not really nicely saturated in his main, and it won't be for some time. But because Newt had so much money in the bank, too, it's actually quite hard for him to spend it all. Avaloth going to pop on in here and see Triple Fulcrum behind it. The stockade, did it die, or did it flow? No, it flew halfway across the map. Okay. I was just trying to figure out where that was. Could go for multiple Palladiums here. He might not want to do that right in front of the Avaloth. I'm not sure. Adding a star pad. Okay. Now that the Avaloth is gone. We'll see if we get double add-on or, or a single add-on at the very least. He has the money for it. Now he's double uh, quarry. Getting his money up much more respectable in terms of its uh, levels there. And just producing Mass Vulture. You know, Mass Vulture can beat Circuth. I mean, they have three armor, so they're pretty pretty tanky. But And if you think about it, like you're, you're firing two shots with no armor pen. So you're actually dealing... 14 damage instead of 20. But having this many of them, you can just bowl on through here and then like sit right up here after killing the circuit and just harass forever. So it's definitely something that Newt could do, but is he going to? Here's a watchdog. Often called the It Depends maneuver. I do like that we already have a bunch of uh, maneuvers here for a bunch of our players. Now, did we see... Okay, that was an anchor. I was wondering what was going on there. Watchdog obviously being spotted here. Now here comes the vultures posturing more aggressively. He gets a pretty complete scout of what's going on here. And now the vultures are going to try to come on in. They're getting caught up on each other a little bit here. Now focusing back, moving backwards and firing. They're actually going to park themselves above the geyser. Not a bad play at all. They have left a bunch of mines out there. If uh, Neblem's not careful, he will end up hemorrhaging a lot of his hydras. Yeah, honestly, I like Newt's position. I mean, he took a lot more damage than he needed to coming on in. Um, he could have kept a lot more of these vultures in. It certainly feels that way anyway. And this might even provoke uh, Nebulon to expand. Yeah, indeed, he's going to go ahead and do that. A lot of vultures coming out. One phalanx. Just the mines up there. Mason obviously getting bopped here. Sh uh, shown away. And we have a Zorkas coming. So Zoryus the Leths are in the menu. I'm looking around for where it is. Okay, here it is. And three Larvosks is really big here. Just reminder, you guys, before the tournament started, nobody made any Larvosks. And then I think it was Jack who tried making, like, one... And maybe AOT also started making them a little bit. And now everybody makes them. Now they're really good. I didn't change anything, by the way. Atlas coming here for Newt. Also an ant seal behind this. His position is a little bit more trepidatious than I would have thought, honestly. Treasury over here. I believe the Atlas will have been spotted there by the Avaleth. Eventually, we're going to have our own custom, like, uh, construction graphics here, like what you see here. You'll just see, like, pieces of the Atlas instead. It'll be unique for that structure and for the data as well. I'll probably kit bash that uh, maybe later tonight. We'll see. But definitely something I want to do eventually. Hi a lot of Hydras coming out here for Neblime. Vultures are obviously not going to be able to accomplish too much versus that. Second anchor, we got some phalanxes. Yeah, okay, we're, I, I mean, I don't think he's in danger, but he won't be able to secure his third for a while. That's very much not the case for Neblime, who's going to go ahead and put a forward hatch by that ramp. Something that was actually talked about in chat is how, like, these ramps are all buildable over here and how that's eventually going to change. Uh, the same will probably be true over here. Maybe only, like, maybe this south ramp will be buildable, I'm not sure. 
So maybe an Avaleth Elevator? It's going to be pretty hard to do that. He's scooping them up and going somewhere, though. Phalanx raining some mortars down from the sky. We're going to see multiple... Is this one going all the way? Okay, we're going to see uh, Neblime go for the 3 o'clock location right now. Here's the drop, but the Goliaths are already in position. So that doesn't end up getting very far. Captaincy, obviously the Atlas was scouted. <laughs> the Protoss player asking what tech is. What, what do you mean? You can't just build everything? <laughs> Captain Season Starport's now available for Newt, as well as the Mantle. I don't think we'll see that here. We will probably see the Sentinel, though, at some point. Moving out with his mech. He's got a respectable Phalanx count, but the problem is, just like with everything that Terran makes, eventually you're in an awkward position where you can't actually... Um, you can't really make too many of them at a time. Controlling your production rate is a big deal. That's how the other races deal with Terrans having really strong units. The Iral Iris now done. That's going to be tier two for Neblime. He can go ahead and mutate his den and pool into their bona fide tier two variants. Capping the geysers here, as you can see. Oh, okay. It's going to be Spire. Normally, we see Neblime go for the nest. Random Shambler spotted over here. Quasi-blocking the 12 o'clock position as defenses are erected by this third commandment. Okay, so it's probably going to be like Seraph mixed with Madcaps. And the, the Tier 1 mech as well. The heavy mech. Wouldn't he... I, I, yeah, I guess... You know, people don't really go for the Tinker's Tower. It's a, a very niche add-on. Uh, but I do think that there's an argument versus so much of this, like, low HP chaff. There's an argument to be made for the Siren. Oh, and Ancel ends up getting bopped uh, slightly off screen. But it has scouted where the uh, ramps are being fortified. And, yeah, with 3 o'clock also up with uh, Worker Lead here for Neblime. He's looking pretty hot. He's going to go ahead and drop this hatch here. If he isolates this position, he can take top right. And still have tempo for this uh, 6 o'clock and eventually this bottom left as well. So Neblime really going to break out the macro machine. It's a scary situation. He's got way more uh, military for sure than Newt, but Newt has a pretty powerful set of units. I still don't think that, that there's enough of a deficit there. The Hydras, Hydras have, uh, there's two of them in that Avalith, but I feel like... Probably not going to factor too much in when you see how many there are across the whole map. I'm really, really nervous about moving across these ramps. And yeah, you can, or the bridges rather, the Anseal is just getting totally shredded. And one of them, two of them going down. That is really rough. Definitely prefer not to have them go down like that. So this uh, little counter attack can certainly come up here, but there's a Seraph in position for the defense. One thing we love to see as Sentinels are coming up here is Seraph's basically just casting Radiate on the ramps and such to uh, funnel the Zerg units into some really scary situations. But Newt is setting up to attack into the third base location, and Neblime can respond with a sixth around if he wants to. There are the Phalanx shots. There's only one of them, or no, two of them sieged. That's enough for the initial push. He's got Sickalisks out for crowd control. That will definitely breach the Ant Seals. Remember, the shields do not work very well versus those. And look at this, though. The reaction coming in here with the flank. Zorius, Sikralis, Hydras. There's an attempted uh, nuke move or something of the sort over there by 3 o'clock. Not going to end up happening. But totally, totally sandwiched this force and completely annihilated it. 106 workers to 89. So the difference isn't too massive, but the Ministry only now coming in. He's trying for it, but he can't really get too far. It doesn't even have an anvil. It doesn't look like it right now. Yeah, he's got quarries on everything, so... Can't nuke. Can't really irradiate. May have spotted this in the meanwhile. Big force coming up here. Not that much to defend. Both players keeping their money very low, but Newt has less money ov overall. Nice uh, irradiate on the incoming units. That's going to slow them down. Is it going to be enough? Bunch of Calculisks. We didn't really talk about this, but Kafralosks are available here 
for Neblime. These morph those mutated strains like Calculisks immediately. And look at this, there's no anti-air over here. So the Calculisk, sort of a, this is a, a nice little dress rehearsal for the incoming air attack that's absolutely going to start pushing Newt back away from having his third. Sentinel's trying to uh, pr erect themselves over here maybe for nine o'clock, but the Calculisk's bypassing the third entirely. Look at how many Masons are stacked up here. That's not even Neblime's goal though. Instead, he's moving forward. That Seraph is gonna get caught by some of these units. There you can see it go. And now the Calculus is trying to descend upon them. The Anseals, the Seraphs, slowly being worked through. There's an Irradiate Cloud at the very least, but it's not going to be enough. Irradiate doesn't kill units nearly as uh, steadily as it does in StarCraft 1. You need a couple uh, hits of it. It's not just a one-click wonder. So, you know, honestly, I didn't expect Neblime to lose his Calcs for that little of a gain at the end of the day. You can see the money floating for both players, but remember, Zerg can definitely spend it down a lot easier, albeit on worse units. Now this attack, though, this is where all of the Masons are really going to start being very, very, very affected by this. You can see the worker count plummeting down to sub-80, sub-70. That's a nice number normally, but not when your opponent has 106. Pushing on through with all of these units and containing down to only two bases. He was trying to set up 9 o'clock, but he wasn't able to even get workers down there. So many of them have fallen over here. Zerg are definitely wounded and bruised, but they're going to take that any day of the week. Calculisks now, once again, 15 of them. Going to go ahead and fly over to shut down 9 o'clock before it can even begin. Newt is not in a winning position. That much is for certain. We've got multiple captaincies trying to do that. He has to get his quarry back online. 9 o'clock going to be taken out here. Well, maybe the Ministry will be able to live. I mean, it has a lot of armor. Setting up for this base, this force being set up, you can see, top right, 6 o'clock. Neblime's territory, man. It's basically the whole map. His next base will either be bottom left or it'll be the uh, this base right here in the inner, basically inner 6. He does, uh, okay, Newt saves the Ministry. He's got a lot of minerals, but he doesn't really have a crazy amount of Vespian incoming. I mean, he does have the gas caps at the very least, but he's not harvesting from his main. So if he's waiting for a lot of Vespian for one thing or another, like Mass Starporter or maybe Autocrats or something like that, he's going to be hurting on that until he resaturates his main, which is not happening right now. Just a, a horde of Zerg coming across the map now. A lot of Madcaps. I mean, if Neblime takes a couple of bad engagements, Newt can still come back into this. But it feels like this one is not going to go his way. I do like the cheeky strat there. Oh, he catches a couple of the calcs. I mean, it doesn't really result in anything. He'll, he'll bleed one of them off here. So that's good. All right. Zorius adding a lot of uh, chase potential here and the madcaps are gonna pop back. They are going to go ahead and try to deal with all of these calcs. I mean, I think they have enough. There's a lot of seraphs for the irradiates. They try to come over here to help that attack, but there's not really anything over there. All the madcaps localized to this location. So even though he's winning this fight on this side, Newt is starting to lose some danger. Yeah, the quarry's now starting to break down. Mm, I think, okay, he's stabilizing a little bit here, but he lost a lot of his defensive force. The next attack that comes in could very well break him. What does Neblime have behind this? He's got a lot of workers, 50 worker advantage, but you can see it's still a little bit hard for him to, con you know, secure the kill, so to speak. This ministry not in action, right? Actually, a worker over there to take 9 o'clock himself. A little cheeky, but certainly will de delay it. Still not sat resaturating the reservoir. Are you sure Newt's name isn't Snow? Different race, but you know. If he had invested into those Tinkerer's Towers, I don't really know if the Calculisks are giving him that much of a headache at the end of the day, but it's just one more thing that his Madcaps have to take damage from. Oh, uh, the Seraph could get caught here, but the, it looks like uh, Nebulon wasn't on the ball exactly. I don't know if it's going to be able to do too much here. Okay, some Sentinels being put, to, put up. That'll help a little bit. Doesn't even get an Irradiate. That's rough. And look at this. We've got Tier 3 starting. I mean, Nebulon has so much of the map. Newt. Hoping against hope that he can make it on through. He hasn't been able to set up any Sentinels over here. That's where I thought his initial Sentinels were coming when they were floating over towards that 9 o'clock position. Madcap's coming in. 
A lot of ant seals, it has to be said, and not that much crowd control. We don't have any Cicralisks. The Calculisks not in a position to stop this, it looks like. They're elsewhere. Uh, and there's only 11 of them anyway, so that wouldn't be the end of the world. Now, he casts a Radiate, but this does force Neblime uh, back, and it also makes Newt have to wait that out before he pushes forward if his intention is to push across the bridge. And look at this! He's trying to take that 9 o'clock position, but there's a Hatcherosk up there, so now he's got to decide, do I go ahead and fight back with a couple of my units? Do I pinch some of them off to kill that and force a cancel, or do I charge forward and take this, uh, this little bit of momentum that I still have? There's a lot of units coming. The Calculisks are now regrouping as well with the rest of the force. They're not going to go after the minimally defended third base. The five Sentinels obviously not going to uh, do too much versus the Calcs. Instead, there's going to be a committal to attempt to killing this off. Nice pick onto the Seraph. Those are very important units at this stage. Only a couple of Hydras over here for initial defense, but it's going to be so hard to go to cross this. He can set up Phalanxes and siege this. We don't really see that ever happen. I know I've seen Protoss do that with Architects, but uh, he doesn't actually have any Phalanxes with this army anyway. He has the Azazel. He's going to go ahead and use D-Matrix and try to bust up the ramp. It's working so far. Where is the counterattack? Instead of Neblime trying to surround like he did before, he's going to try to hold while his other forces intercept the... Uh, cut off any reinforcements that would be able to come on through. But he wanders on through a big irradiate there. Another one afterwards picks the Seraph, but he's standing in it. Those Calculisks are almost certainly dead. We've got Vilgorakors out now, though, and Tier 3 just finished elsewhere. The Ultrav Cavern starting. Here comes the flank coming in here. The Azazel trying to dematrix, but it's certainly not going to be enough. And that force is instantaneously going to get cleaned up. The Azazels, the Ant Seals falling on back. This base never able to get up. The Hatcherosk definitely up now as well. I don't really think that uh, Newt has enough here. He's going to try to hold the ramp with his madcaps, and so far it's working out, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. A nice little irradiate there is going to be able to get some of those units, but he might end up pay paying for it with the cost of that Ministry. Another Seraph here. That's a really good irradiate, and it stays alive for now, but uh, I'm not so sure if it'll... If we'll still be saying that in a moment here. Bottom left not yet uh, up and running. Really nice irradiates, though. He's really softened up this force. Oh, and frontlining with it is not the way, though. No Azazel for the D-Matrix to heal it up. Now going to see if he can do that here. And he might be able to bust this. The problem is there's a bunch of units gathering up on the other side of the map yet again, and if those Vilgorakors get on top of these Sentinels, you're just never going to be able to kill them. Doing what he can with the hatch. At least that will be done. We've got a lot of Zeths as well. A lot of Ultra Cores coming. Gaftalosks, these create double the units. So if you make a, uh, like a Zoroustha left, you'll actually get two, for example, right? Definitely a big deal. Gonna go ahead and chance it himself, but now Madcaps have been allowed to move up. Vilgorakors, they are indeed going to help shield that attack. You can see how effective those mini Carapace Swarms are being for absorbing individual shots of the Sentinels. And there's really not that many forces coming up. He's streaming back in with some of these Madcaps, but the Sentinels are already down. And we're even gonna see a lot of Rillarokors as well thanks to the Zorius and Vilgorakor passives. A single Pertathalor for good measure. There is a bit of a initial mo- Okay, hold on. Let's see what ends up happening here. I mean, this is a lot of critical damage, and obviously the they're talking about a hash, but it's not going to make any significant changes until later in the game anyway. They are, as instructed, they're going to play it out for the next few minutes and see what happens. Newt has been on uh, life support, it's safe to say. He still has enough resources to go for a Diadem, or sorry, a Daedala for Tier 3, but he hasn't really noticed it. Okay, now he's going to go ahead and drop it. We've got a really big force coming in from Neblime, though. He's going to charge on over. Sentinels. <laughs> the Spraith and Spear Tooth over there, destroying those uh, high ground Sentinels. He's trying to set up a fourth base, desperate, looking for anything that he can get. A couple of mines left over from the beginning of the game, as well as those Cyclops. Obviously, Cyclops, great unit, but uh, Ultra Cores are a little bit better. And they are not even close to being able to be brought down. The Madcaps cannot do anything. Crashed upon him. His Ultra Cores staying alive. They have life steal. Seraph not able to get anything done. Azazel flying over the Cicralisks. Ant Seal Shield's going to get busted down immediately. And there's just nothing here left. He's only got the Madcaps moving his air units around to try to scout out, see what he's got. But there's Excitralisks out, man. You can't stand up to the Excitralisks. And Zets are in the main as well. On top of the production, GG is called. Neblime we will take the game after all. All right. Hey, we're on the board for both players. Tied up one to one. Not a clean sweep in quarterfinal number two.
Nothing like that to be had. Now, blind looking scary. I do think he uh, had a decided advantage for a very long time, kind of like Hamster on the Purgatory versus Taco Cake, and it took a while for him to actuate that into a real advantage. But hey, who am I to judge? Oh, wait, I'm the caster. We're going on to Germination. It was Newt's selection for game three. Let's see if he can make stuff happen here. GLHF's exchange, and we have Neblime in the bottom right, Newt in the top left. Series tied up. Always good to have a chat check-in. Hapsaya saying the Mechwalker units are infantry for Terran. I'm not entirely sure what that exactly means because we don't make a distinction between biological and mechanical. So you don't have like the heal, the repair and heal and stuff. It affects all units. I mean, there's... Like, the Mason can repair air and ground, the Shaman can heal air and ground, but uh, the Cleric can only patch up ground units. So that's the only actual distinction, but anyway. I think that Sideshow match was pretty cool. I mean, obviously Newt had an initial advantage that he was trying for, didn't end up making it across the line. We go to Germination by map by Biddy B. Hatch on the high ground for Neblime and a pool follow-up. Very, very standard stuff. Fulcrum opener here for Newt again, but he's banking a lot of gas. He could go for a star pad at some point. Are you fully charged? Droleth going to be caught by the Vulture here in a moment. Hey! He burrowed! No, Newt! Don't let him away! Ah, oh, man, he's going to see what you're doing! Double star pad! Well, there's another Vulture here, so I guess it won't be the end of the world. I like the attempt at, at catching it with the three workers, but we know that's not going to happen. Leave it to mine. When that pops, you can actually see Broad units. I'm not sure that many people are aware of that. <laughs> well, he's a little trickster. He gets out, in and out, slows down, doesn't get any kills. Causes some uh, emotional damage, I guess, but... This worker gonna try to avoid being caught on the re-entry from that vulture. And it will be back to the star pad. The double star pad, in fact. Something that's kind of curious is Neb uh, Neblime has said before that you can go triple. Even quad when you hit the two bases. Newt did not go for that, though. Very interesting. He, stu he stuck it out on two star pads in that impetus match. He was able to take that. So far, Neblime, who selected map two because he lost map one, and Newt, who selected map one because he was the lower seed, they've been able to win their own map picks. Let's see if that holds true here. Will we go to a game five epic decider? Well, we need to get through this and at least one more map, no matter what. And the Obelith will be spotted and killed. Hydrath Den, immediately the choice. Actually, I think there might have even been a cancel on that low ground hatch. But at the very least, it was delayed. Going to stay on one base. Neblime showing a little bit of a different reaction to this. And he does need something different because he was eventually picked apart by it on impetus. So he has to have a different kind of play. We'll see if uh, Newt, on the other hand, is going for anything else. Oh, right on the burrow. That's a nice little early pick. Only gets one Wraith, but that's still very, very good. You want to manage that Wraith number. Just like you want to manage the Anseal number, actually. If uh, Terran gets to a nice blob of a concentrated force, it can be very, very difficult for Zerg to deal with that. Look at that spiking immediately into the Ski-Backed. He's going to go straight for the Skithercores. 
And if you don't have uh, that many Cyclops, you will end up getting bopped by that. Not necessarily, like, offensively, but if you're trying to push with the Wraiths, you can absolutely get overwhelmed. We don't have a Stockade coming yet. It's going to be Double Anchor instead. Very cognizant of a potential counter push. Now, the one thing that you can say is if this forces out Scythercores from Nebulon, well, Newt is going to have the advantage insofar as he's... You know, he's on even bases with the Zerg, even workers, and the Skits are going to delay tech. So Newt going for double star pad isn't really the end of the world then. And if he sticks to only double star pad, then he'll be in a pretty good spot in that respect. Let's see if he goes for a treasury here. Uh, and off the back of that, he's adding a fast Palladium. This is a little bit different than what he did before. He did, a uh, fun fact, request that the uh, volume of the construction sound be lowered. And I was already planning on adjusting it anyway. So I did go ahead and do that before his game. Maybe he can say that uh, I helped him out. You know? I buffed Terran right before his match. <laughs> Quasi moving around here. I think Newt may have spotted that. Yep, yeah, indeed he did. So there's a couple of skits back at home. Going up to four, grabbing some Izzy's as well. I don't know, those quasis. Dangerously placed. And you only get a little bit of damage onto the hatch for that. So it does feel like maybe you're going to need to start incorporating those ant seals in sooner than you want. There's an ant seal coming. The treasury now complete. Going to float it on down. And it, it finishes at around the same time as the hatch. So even though there's no extra worker production, Newt can at least still transfer the workers down if he wants the fast gas. He should be going for a quarry here, but he doesn't have the Vespine for it. He made the Palladium. But he hasn't made any unit out of it. So that's a little bit of a missed opportunity as well. That could have been a quarry. Or maybe a faster ant seal or something. I'm going to pop in here. Ooh, dangerous. Definitely needs to wait for that ant seal to come on in. Now trying to magic box with it. First Izera core going down. Here's the Skither core reaction, though. There's seven of them. First shot not actually found. Going after that. You can see how fast the ant seal shield starts to fall. Thanks to that splash. All right, at least he should be able to... Okay, he falls away. But pursues him across, you know, halfway across the map. That's a pretty big deal. Now you know what the reaction is. Do you go for a Madrigal? 800 minerals in the bank. I feel like Newt could throw down, like, three stockades and just pump Mavericks, but nobody wants to. And by nobody, I mean just Newt. At least pump Harakans or something, right? Think about it. The Bio-Life. Well, there's no shame in here just yet. The stockade only now getting started for the eventual Vestry. I like the Goliath by the star pad and a missile turret or watchdog, as they're now called, to protect against the Skithrakor raids. You do need more than one versus this number of Skiths, but that's quite all right. We've got a quarry coming for the natural and now for the main. So even though Neblime is ahead on workers, the Terran will be able to catch back up a little bit. Uh, and we'll have to see if Neblime wants to go for this two-base timing or if he's going to think about taking a third base himself as he is up in minerals, going for that hatch. There it is, the third indeed. One quasi getting spotted and sniped away. And here comes the push. We've got ten Scythricors here. They can absolutely ignore the Watchdog and the Goliath for now and just go after it. There's no repairs coming for that Watchdog. Now there are. But remember, there's still a lot of damage coming out there, so... A couple of those uh, Masons going to go ahead and get cleaned up. And seal falling as well. That's a big pick. It's still somewhat effective to try to shield versus that, but it's very dangerous for the Ant Seal. That's why they are so good against that particular composition. There's still definitely play there, but helps you get rid of the energy, and then you can start to focus down individual units again. But despite that, the Scyther Cores do end up falling, and I, I would say this is bad for Neblime insofar as... Yeah, he has a lot more coming. He's going to go ahead and make eight. He's going to add a Larvosk here, spending a lot of his early Vespian on that. So, again, putting himself behind in terms of attack timing. So he'll be fine. He's not going to die here. I'd be surprised if uh, Newt gets much of anything done here, especially with these showing up again. He's going to realize, okay, i got to watch out. Well, if he's not careful... Okay, he ends up bringing one of them down to very low HP. Now trying to trade with it. Nice little moves there. Anseal's providing the buffer, initially. He looks away for just a moment, just to staff his anchors and do another round of macro back at home. The sorties continue from Newt. 
Oh no, an isolated one on an attack move, not exactly what Nebline was hoping for. But he's up to three bases, so soon he'll start saturating this gas, and that'll really allow him to run over the Wraith count. I think maybe Newt is realizing this, because he's now starting to pivot into the Phalanx. Uh, he's going to go ahead and get the Shaman for patching up his units, but the Skith count is pretty high right now. Alright, 13 skips. Where's the attack? One of them, two of them now getting popped. Oh boy, but look at all of that. All the rates getting eviscerated. You opt into those kinds of fights? That's the kind of volatility you can expect. And look at this, the, the moving shot. My rates aren't stacking. Are you trying to use a mine again? Well, the Ancials get out. That's a pretty big move. I feel like the moving shots there could have been pretty big. Now he's got the Shaman for the confirmed magic boxing, but he needs to actually get over there with his Ancials to repair them. And he's only got the double star pad. So again, going back to what we said on Sideshow, you start losing those uh, units, you're going to be in for a world of pain. You cannot really reproduce them fast enough. You saw him trying to go for the uh, Shaman there, but he ends up seeing what's happening here, and instead now the treasury is going to have to get canceled. Right, it does end up getting canceled. The one Cyclops. Uh, I do think you maybe need more than that. Quasi reporting in on that whole time, by the way. We are going to see the fast third base uh, protection here with the extra hatch on the ramp. From Nebelheim. Seven Izira cores. He wants to just overwhelm this force with the meat. And tier two has now begun for our Zerg player. A sign of the times, considering... Instead, an extra star pad starting for Newt. He was pretty close to being able to afford tier two of his own. That 600-600 breakpoint is what he you got to watch out for. But no, he, he's not interested right now. Oh, man. 12 Skitter cores. They're, they are going to run have Rick Havoc on this uh, mineral line. The Watchdog goes down. Worker's now being harassed. And he's already been down by 30 or so. Here comes the attack force. It's not that much, actually. So it's more, more so zoning. It picks the, the worker making the treasury, so certainly slows down the third base. We've got double star pad being added behind double star pad, so we're going to go up to quad. Newt wants to get his second win of the series with Wraiths, but he is far behind where he was on Impetus. This is not the same game as number one. Nebline with the reaction, the adaptation, now taking his fourth and fifth bases at the same time as his tier two hatches. What does he want to do? Is he going to go Spire for Sikralisks? Is he going to go... Well, he's going to go Gas Capping is what he's going to do. I'm going to say he could go... He could just straight up evolve his Scab into a uh, Swamp and then go for the, the Vithralisks. But that's if he really thinks it's going to continue. I mean, again, the stacking here is not working out in Newt's favor. He actually doesn't want them to stack versus Skits. And you can see them just overwhelming... Still 11, and the Ancials are now dead as well. Some of these uh, staggered stragglers, if you will, from the rally points, but only making two at a time. The Shaman has been found by Azir, of course. And there's only the two Watchdogs. This base never resaturated. Almost up to 100 workers now is Neblime, 13 minutes into the game. If you're up in that situation, you really have not been that heavily pressured. Not successfully, anyway. Newt really sticking to the script. 16 more workers just got started. And the nest is also going to come pretty soon. Look at this. He's even going to make some Gosvies, I think. He's going to go up to the advanced workers so he can harvest this base. <laughs> Love to see that. Well... There has been a pretty heavy army made here, but it's, some of it's going to get isolated, and this is really, really bad for Newt. Okay, he saves the Phalanx, and now the Goliaths, they are going to absolutely wreak havoc with the Skither Cores, rip their faces right off. And 6 o'clock has to be evacuated immediately. Neblon is already aware of it. He's going to go for the Zorkish Shroud so he can make some Zorius, and all the hubbub, he never really made that at Tier 1. Some of these units, particularly the Convalisk, he's going to wish he cancelled. 
Workers coming on back in from the rally. That's unfortunate. Going to see if he can evolve these defensive structures here. And let's see what Newt wants to do. Skithergore is coming on in, but not really a whole lot of action happening. Not on that side of the map, anyway. And you can see here, there's more than enough where that came from to mop up this uh, defenses on the third base. There is a flank starting. Is it going to be enough? I'm not 100% sure. Oh no. Okay, well, turning around, but the phalanxes are unprotected. If the Izerichors are able to get on top of them, that is probably going to be the end. Total surround, and this mech army cannot be replicated in time. The Atlas is not complete just yet, but it's gonna eventually. And you just can't reproduce that off of only three fulcrums, right? He's only got, what, two phalanxes in a moment? couple of goliaths the counterattack is going to be very sick even elevatoring in some of his uh defenses over here to try to take on this three o'clock position the hatcherosk is going to get remade there are still be wraiths being made for what good they are doing and the anchor it, there's nothing in it atlas done it doesn't really feel like Newt has that much here. He's going to try to put down the Sentinels, but it's happening as the attack comes in. Goliath's loading into the anchor for as long as it stays alive, which is not very long at all. And remember, there's some forces coming in from the south as well, which is completely unprotected. I think we're going to be seeing Newt GG out here. Seven pairs of Mutalisks have started behind this. I don't even know if they'll see the light of day. Breaking the third. Base count, worker count, very, very low here for our Terran player. And he is now capitulated. It'll be Neblime taking the lead in the series. And we've got, you know, that's a serious point, right? I mean, Neblime can can decide to uh, take us on through in just a moment. As we head into what could be our final match of the series, it will be Axiom, the other map being the Purgatory available for play. So that will be our decider if we need it. And Neblime now leads the series. If he gets this win here, we wrap it all up. If Newt can stab him in the eye and take him to a fifth game, we can start talking about a little bit of a different reality. But as it is, we are getting into game four. Neblime in the top right. Newt in the bottom left. I'm interested in what uh, Newt is going to pull up here. He's facing the lower bracket. And a little bit of a tidbit here. Uh, he thought he was facing elimination. He didn't know there was a lower bracket. So his back is really against the wall from his point of view as of right now, frozen in time. He thinks this is going to end his career in Acropolis number one. His time will be cut short. He doesn't realize he still has an, at least one more match to play if he falls to that lower bracket. So he's really thinking, God damn. I got to do something crazy. And that crazy thing is a fulcrum first. Well, I guess it's not that crazy. Atros coming on the ramp. Pretty basic stuff here. Now I'm going to be thinking about the pool opener. By the way, if uh, we have people out there interested in providing additional funds to the prize pool, you can make your donations out using the coffee link in the bottom right. You just uh, leave a message saying, hey, this is for the prize pool. It uh, accepts via PayPal if you like. I only say this because Hapsaya was asking earlier. Normally, I don't really draw too much attention to that. But I can't really respond to him right now because I am casting. So if he is watching this, he knows. And if he isn't, then everybody else knows. In fact, even if he is watching it, everybody else knows too. Check that out. I have not revealed the figures for the prize pool, but I will say it's looking very nice right now. I'm sure that the players will be happy. Vulture going to come across and see the worker. Scout not going to be able to get too much done there. Fairly standard timing. At this point, if Neblime doesn't lose his early worker to the Vulture or at least get, gets heckled by it, he's probably feeling like something is wrong. So that's actually very nice. So what we see out of Newt here is he's going to revert to the Trojan drop, the fast Cyclops push. So what he's going to do is try to make, uh, I think you can get four Cyclops out with good spending. 
Quasi is just going to heckle this vulture away. Yeah, I'm pretty sure in enough time you can get... Uh, you can definitely get three. I don't know if you can get a fourth one in time. It doesn't look like it, actually. So he's going to come back in and use the vulture for that. This is a very dangerous play because you won't have anything back at home if you also scoop the vulture up. But you can at least lay some mines, right? You know, a mine here, mine here. And then come back up and, and scoop it up in. There's going to be a fourth Cyclops being made, so at least there is that. And then, I mean, this this does have to give you an advantage. You do need to kill a lot of workers or... I mean, a lot, I would say, like, if you're ahead by 10 workers by the end of this, or five, even, like, 8 workers, you're probably feeling pretty good. That is a tough ask, though, because you don't have a quarry. The uh, Cyclops are going to continue to be pumped behind it, so your gas is still going to be limited, and you're not harvesting uh, gas with more than 2 workers, so you're not going to have the quarry anytime soon. And, by the way, you need the Cyclops instead of the Vulture. I mean, you could probably make it work with the Vulture, but, you know, the kind of reactions that could happen here. I mean, it's looking pretty good initially, right? He's got a couple of quasis in for the potential drop, but Neblim has most of his um, force. Yeah, he's actually, he's only going to have the one quasi in the area. Okay, he comes back in just at the nick of time because he sees the star pad. Here's the drop. What can he do as a reaction here? He can't really drop on top of the army, uh, and he can't really drop on top of the worker count either, and unfortunately, he unloads two of his Cyclops in the front. That, would, that should have been a Vulture in the front to draw those initial fire. He's only got the one Cyclops left. He lost his Vulture as well. So really not getting anything done there. He kills a single Quasilisk, and I don't think he got... Okay, he got one worker. But again, you, you really want to be ahead by, like... You know, you can see he's ahead by four workers right now. You wanted to kill three, four extra workers at least. And then you're basically even, but for the enemy maybe putting a lot of for, uh, resources into anti-drop, especially if your Trojan is still alive, which it is. I feel like you need to be further ahead than this for that to be paying off. But hey, he has the star pad. He can fall back on it at any point. He's going to go for multiple stockades here. So this is interesting. A very different look. He's never made bio. So is this going to be like, you know, at least one of these is going to have a cleric add on or what? Is he going to go for the savants, which we've seen a little bit of recently? I don't think it was Newt playing with savants versus uh, Neblime. I think that was back when Shambler was playing as Terran. But I know that uh, Savants are pretty solid versus like Hydras and stuff. And certainly can be versus Protoss as well, but that is neither here nor there. Five Cyclops available for our Terran player as he starts to go back into Vulture production. His Wraith is going to go ahead, come in here and scout. See Larvosks, see a Hydrath Den. It's very, very good as a, a player in general, no matter what your race is, no matter what your matchup is, you want to know what your opponent is doing. There's so many options in Cosmonarchy. You definitely want to be able to get a little bit of something and a little bit of heckling as well while you're at it. But unfortunately, that Wraith will end up dying. Oh, no! Narrowly avoids death. Look at that. I thought for sure it was dead. It's going to be a Maverick pump for now. So just getting a little bit of chaff, spending his minerals. This is actually the lowest his minerals have looked in the uh, this stage in the game. And he's adding a lot more workers as well, so getting the, the quarries a lot faster. So I'd say Newt looks better in terms of macro right now than he has in the other games. But he hasn't really been able to get his... Uh, get Like, his, his drop didn't do the, the dream amount of damage that he wanted it to. Going to go ahead and unload the Cyclops here. Just doing a little bit. Now I'm going to kite back. Uh, the right thing. That's unfortunate. And here we go. Nebla, I'm going to go ahead and scout around with his Zeths. Just confirm what's going on. Sees no extra bases coming. Avaleth sees nothing leaving from that side. Palladium. On the outskirts, we have an Anseal. This star pad will probably mostly be Anseal production once Newt has enough Vespian. What is this? Uh, oh, okay. I see. He's going to use the Mavericks to stand against the Avaleth just to move it back. And uh, Newt's probably... Uh, Nebla is probably like, what? What? Newt's building stockades. Did he switch places with Top Ramen temporarily? He has overstimmed on a lot of his Mavericks, so that's um, that wasn't necessary to kill the Avalith, but I guess he didn't want to uh, reveal his worker saturation over here. Just wanted to snipe it as soon as possible. He's actually going to go for this. Wraith coming in here just to get the Risk out. Sees a couple of Hydras. Yeah, I, I don't hate this situation. Obviously, the move out is going to get caught by Neblime's forces, so he's going to go ahead and produce... He's making a lot of Avaliths. I don't know what that's about. This is still a scary position, but there's only the one Anseal, and the Hydras might even be able to pick it, depending on how lazy Nude is with his movement. Trojan's still over here with one Cyclops, might be able to unload it somewhere in a cheeky point. I mean, this force is still pretty scary, right? More Mavericks coming, some Clerics coming. There's not really any sustain here, so that's the one point. 
If if uh, if Nebulaim doesn't get overwhelmed immediately, then he will be able to eventually get rid of this. Ooh, unfortunately for Newt, uh, banks into that uh, Trojan. Good initial positioning on the Cyclops, and look at this. It's it's just a doom drop reaction. That's all that Nebulaim is thinking here, and that's pretty dangerous. I mean. If it's not a combat drop and it is actually a do- No, I think it is going to be a combat drop. He just wants to be able to overwhelm like that. I'm not sure I like this situation, but we'll see what happens with the Mavericks. They are fully stimmed. He does end up getting the unloads off, but that doesn't look like it was that effective. In fact, a lot of those units didn't end up working out the way that I think Neblim wanted. 14 Hydras now being made at once. I think they're going to hatch in waves of seven because Veek. But this is not his map. This is Biddy B's map, so never mind. That's not the reason. The reason is just funny. Uh, all right, second Ansel coming. The first one going to get picked. Second one very, very low on energy now, but it might have been enough. There's the one Phalanx. He can't really push any deeper. But he's doing a great, great job with the bio. He's definitely see me, seeing the uh, tempo here. Advantage of being able to use the bio versus Zerg. Okay, where's the reaction? He needs to stim. He needs to be able to stim fast. Where is that? No, the Phalanx is going to get focused down. Does splatter a lot of Hydras in the process, but I think if he stimmed earlier, he could have overwhelmed that force and kept them alive. Now, maybe flying a little bit too close to the sun. Doesn't actually have that many Mavericks left over. Remember, there's only a couple of clerics with this army. They did get splintered off a lot. Single Quasi harassing the treasury as it uh, has been interrupted. Yeah, I, I think what needed to happen there is the if that earlier if that stim had come in earlier and held those hydras at bay, maybe that second phalanx can make it across the map because there was one over here as you can see. But as of right now, the 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 bio tank push, more stockades coming as well. We don't mind that at all. One vulture actually going to win out in this fight as well. Big fan. I mean, it's made of paper now, so it will die. Ooh, stunned. <laughs> All right. Well, double phalanx. I feel like he can hold this off for now, but he's very, very brittle. Like it's it, this is a, a position that could get real ugly here. Oh no, a phalanx is gonna get picked in the middle of the map. That is bad for Newt. He did need to keep this alive. I mean, it just hurts so much when you end up losing really expensive units that you can only make one at a time because there has not been a second fulcrum. But you know the the Maverick flood. I mean, he still has a lot of minerals, so that's why adding a couple extra stockades here for that is not a bad idea at all. Could use some Harakans as well. We got the random Mavericks in the, in the waypoint. He hasn't corrected the rallies. That's a little unfortunate. The combat drop with the Zerg, I don't know that it was that effect effective, but you can see here, the Mavericks need to pre stem as soon as this attack starts, and they're not coming in now. Okay, it looks like they might still be able to. Here's the uh, reaction. Trying to combat drop with the Avaleths. It's not necessarily the, the worst idea, but there's Phalanxes are being healed by the Clerics. They're staying alive for so long. And despite poor targeting from Newt, oh, the Anseal almost managed to save that first one's life. This one down here is going to get overwhelmed by the Hydras, though. And GG is going to be called. Newt, honestly, he was very close to holding there. And then I think if, if that happens, Neblim might be in a little bit of trouble. But he ends up keeping cool and taking the series all things considered, it's three to one. Our Zerg player, our reigning champion, is gonna come in here and maybe try to make it rain some more. G G. Hashtag nerf zerg, hashtag nerf toss. Bleh, hydralisks. Yep, that's right. That's right. I still think that the uh, the Mavericks were a great call. They added a lot. I think if he had some Harakans to draw the initial fire. And also it would have been a great counter to the drops, which did have a little bit more impact the second time around. I think maybe then uh, Newt might have been in a, a better spot. Uh, but it's it's a tough call to make, especially if you're not practiced with the bio. He moved out at what happened to be a pretty good time, but didn't reinforce, uh, wasn't able to reinforce fast enough and didn't have that much healing either. So there were some concessions with that where he needed to basically like make a breach happen really fast and overwhelm the natural or something, which he was on the precipice of doing. But that's like, that can go so many different ways, right? And especially if you're not used to that pattern of play, that can get uh, pretty tricky pretty fast.
<laughs> Top Robin going back over the old footage. Trying to figure out how he can possibly defeat some of these Zerg and Protoss players. I think, you know what? I think we're going to see a lot more TVTs going forward. That's that's all I'll say. I think Terran is making a comeback after Acropolis number one. But speaking of Acropolis number one and speaking of Terrans, this does mean that our sole Terran in playoffs will fall to the lower bracket and will indeed still be playing in this series, in this uh, set of games. Nebwein will be facing off against Hamster. That is our first upper semi-final that we will schedule a little bit later on. That's pretty exciting. So as you can see here, the bracket being set up. And up next, we have Hapsea against Art of Turtle for quarterfinal number three. That means I get to nudge Nebwine to get back in here. Yes, yes, it was only a matter of time. Here I am. Here you are, sir. You have one Sorry. versus Newt. It means you'll be going up against Hamster. Before we move on to quarterfinal number three's discussion, how are you feeling about that series, and how are you feeling about Hamster? Well, first off, I was really hoping Taco Cake would win somehow, and I would not have to face Hamster, because now that I've got past Newt, Hamster is like the next most likely, I think, to kick me down. So I've got to deal with him now. But yes, okay. series versus Newt. Um, I'm kind of sad about game one, because it was going pretty well for me. And I feel like his opening was pretty similar when we did the regame, but mm -hmm. uh, he just kind of counted me at every step and absolutely crushed me. Oh, wow. Uh, but after that, I think on Germination, it was a huge mistake to keep making the Wraiths after the first stack kind of got eliminated because they're just never really going to be that cost effective. Mm -hmm. And Sideshow in general, I just think if you can't pull anything off early, it's just going to be too hard to attack Zerg and especially okay, listen, hard. Were you surprised yeah. to see three Cyprians in your base? <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. When I saw that, I was like, huh, okay. And I like, did not expect that. Um, but, you know, I have to say during the game, I didn't feel that like panicked or shaken up by it. I was just like, oh, dear, you know. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, so for whatever reason, I, uh, I was expecting something to happen to me. I guess because I didn't see the wraiths already, you know. And I was kind of just like, oh dear, this is it. Okay. Uh, but like I say, on Sideshow, it's way too hard for Terran to take out line bases. And it's pretty hard to attack into Zerg as well. So I felt like even if I lost a bunch of workers, I can still come back there. And I did very wastefully now that I watched the cast. My god, I was just throwing units in there. But that's kind of just what you do when you're that ahead, I think. Yeah, sure. Uh, and what was the last map? Oh yes, uh, Axiom. I had wanted him to be back in his base while well, I would just be dropping in the main, but he had other plans coming across and attacking. And like you say, Mavericks? What? Newt making Mavericks? I know, I yeah, what a surprise that must have been when Yaravaleth found the three stockades. Yeah, but managed to... I'd already finished drawing up, basically, for that game when he started attacking, because the plan was just all in two bases, so I was like, oh, alright, I guess okay. I'm still just making the Hydras, just I'll be over my end of the map instead of his end, so that worked mm -hmm. out alright. What was the combat drop thinking? Because that was something that we haven't seen you do in well, Zerg. If it's not Mavericks, I swear to God, it's pretty good. Especially oh, okay. against Cyclops, yes, of course. Because sure. Cyclops have a real hard time uh, when they're shooting next to themselves. They need to be shooting into the enemy lines. Um, but yeah, it was it was uh, pretty bad against the Mavericks, I'll agree. But you saw at the end there, it makes a big difference, especially against Phalanxes. Yep. Basically, it's just so whatever defensive formation he sets up, as long as I have enough quantity of units, I can breach it if I can drop on top of it as well. And if, Whereas, it, if he doesn't have like fully stacked madcaps or maybe a lot of Goliaths, yeah. it's going to be really hard to snipe the Avaleths coming in to, pre for, to present it, right? So. I mean, if you focus five Mavericks, everything is possible. But I mean, while the front attack is happening as well, you know, yeah. it, it's pretty, pretty strong. All right, cool. I mean, I'm always a pretty cool. I'm a big fan of when we see like a different play start happening, even if it's a micro thing. And sometimes, especially if it's just a micro thing, um, you know, I remember thinking way back when, you know, those impossible scenarios maps and like silly things like that from StarCraft 1 UMS. It's like oh, ima yeah. imagining if somebody did that with with Cosmonarchy or whatever, just to try to like really train these uh, these like little things you can do. That That's the kind of stuff that I think is kind of neat, like. You know, that, that eventually people will figure out like, oh yeah, it's really important to do X, Y, Z thing with this unit. Otherwise, you know, like the Wraith Micro from, from Newt, uh, he said that he was a little bit tilted after germination when they weren't working properly. But uh, admittedly, I think if he had been working super well with the Wraith Micro, with the uh, magic boxing, he would have died faster versus the skits. Yeah, I think I maybe said that to him at the time. I'm not sure. Um, oh, okay. Chat. But yeah, like uh, you, if they stack more, they would have died more. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and look, as far as I could see, I mean, they were stacked well enough to harass, I think. Yeah. And, you know, there's another setup to this, which is 
that Newt uh, apparently didn't know that Skithrakors were dealing Splash, and he also didn't know mm. things like the Cyprians getting blocked by buildings. So despite, like, he, he took you to, a, you know, it wasn't a clean sweep, and he had some advantages in some of these early games, or at least some tempo and stuff to, to look at. He wasn't flying blind, in cer like, it wasn't just, it wasn't a uh, stomp by any means, and yet he wasn't even aware of certain, like, really important details for using certain units or fighting against certain other units. With this kind of knowledge built up, he could be a much more threatening person if he comes into a rematch, potentially, later down well, the line. this is right? what I keep saying, man. No one believes he already is very threatening. Uh, and I anticipate it's pretty likely he'll come back by the lower bracket unless this so-called Protoss weakness comes into play. Uh, okay. You know, if Hapsai goes down, for example, to fight Hapsai, I don't know, maybe Hapsai can eliminate him. I really don't know Newt's first brothers play that well, still. Right. Well, he does like his Wraiths, and he does like his Cyclops drops, and he tried both of them against you, so that's pretty much it. Well, the thing is, I expected much more Cyclops drops, but I did have an inkling it was going to be Wraith, because the last practice games we played before Ascension was a bit of a gap. He was doing really effective Wraith Rass on Germination, so mm. on Germination in particular, I was definitely expecting it. But in general, I thought he was going to do either Wraith or a little bit less likely Cyclops drop, so I was actually very prepared for those things. I did not expect the Proxy Stockade floating into my base, that's for sure. And you probably didn't expect the Mavericks like we already touched on, and that's where I'm thinking, like, maybe definitely. if he starts to incorporate the rest of the tech tree at Tier 1 and stuff and, and see if he can make things happen that way. They, well, remember that that game started with the Cyclops drop that did absolutely nothing. If he's doing the same thing, not from such a bad position, I think yep. it would be very dangerous. Absolutely, it could be the case. So, hey, we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on Newt's career as he continues through his first playoffs appearance. He does follow the lower bracket at the first hurdle, but it was always going to be a tight matchup, and I'm glad that he was able to get on the board and get some momentum on his side for that first win. But kind of like what happened in Group C with Top Ramen doing that, at the end of the day, it wasn't enough to make him the winner overall. So we will see how he fares against Taco Cake, which I would say is a much more favorable matchup for Newt. His, uh, Z his TBZ is... You know, pretty good, able to take a game off of you, for example, and definitely be pretty dangerous in general. Somebody who you're already saying is like somebody you might fear. Uh, going into that matchup, I would say he's probably a favorite, but uh, we'll have to schedule that one out and see if Taco Cake can uh, brush up. And, you know, his his ZVT is admittedly better than his ZVP is. So, yeah, Protoss, it seems like some players are just worse at, at fighting Protoss, and that's where I think we're going to see <laughs> a lot of action in this tournament, since, again, we have four of them in the tournament right now, so... It'll be interesting. Mm. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Now, all right, Nebline, are you ready to talk about quarterfinal number three? Yeah, let's move right on from that, right, into the next series. All right, this one, honestly, of all the opening matches, I guess, except for my own, I'm the most excited for because I think this is going to be the closest. And I mean, who can really say how it's going to go? Yeah, that's right. I mean, Hapsaya, the man on your screen right now, he is actually the man who is the oldest among us. The, the boomerist among us. He is 33 years old. That's three. That's a lot of threes. That means he's the chosen one. I mean, if you have two oh, threes no, in your name, it's just over, man. Yeah. You're going to win everything. So for this year, I expect Hapsaya to win every tournament, everything in Cosmonarchy. It's just the only way. Uh, but he is going to come in here as an advantaged favorite against Art of Turtle. Now, there has been a little bit of a, I would say like a hubbub lately about Hamster and Hapsaya and maybe the Shambler as well, though I think to a lesser extent, have struggled versus like the, the Hydra pushes. And I think maybe Shambler just like doesn't engage the same way normally, like his strategies are very different, I feel like. He does a lot of like four gates and like really heavy aggro stuff early on, so maybe the games don't get to that point. But for Hamster and for Hapsaya, there have been problems versus like Mass Hydra spam on two or three bases and trying to feel like how, feel out the, that part of the matchup. Hapsaya has had some troubles with that. And so Art of Turtle, who maybe hasn't had the most experience of the project, it still could maybe be a threat to him. So I'm very interested in this. I agree with your estimation, Neblon. I feel like this could be a banger of a set. But Hapsaya is the advantaged seed. He exited flawlessly from his group, despite some shenanigans from General Anakin with the Mind Tyrants. Uh, wasn't able to get the dub over him, so Hapsaya ends up uh, exiting with a four-win, zero-loss record out of Group D. And with his favorite unit being the Cantavis, we could very well see some hallucination play coming into this series. I would be excited to check that one out. But... Uh, We've got some stuff to find out. So what do you reckon? Do you, you Are you taking Hapsaya for the series? Well, I mean, you mentioned the Mind Tyrant games, and that really shows Hapsaya's weakness here, though, is he's still not really actually entirely familiar with Cosmonarchy. I mean, by now, he knows how the Tier 1 stuff sort of goes, and, like, 
you know, all the all the little features like the economy and stuff, but he still, I don't think, has a good understanding of all the different units and all the ways they counter each other and all that kind of stuff. That said, AOT is in even worse shape in that regard, but that kind of makes it less of an advantage that Upside could potentially use. I think Upside's mechanics obviously stronger, but I have seen in the past, later on, he does tend to break up a bit, and I don't think it's because of a lack of macro ability. I think it's just still not really a, a solid uh, plan of knowing what he's going to make, right? Uh, we'll see if that comes into play here. I haven't seen AOT go into very many long games, I have to say. We've seen tier 2 games where he actually got crushed in ZVZ. Um, so I'm I'm doubting AOT's later game understanding as well. I think Hupsire has the ability to get through the early game pretty well, if he's not going to try and win the early game right away even. Um, mm. So i got to say, I'm thinking 3-1 Hupsire. That's my my guess. Okay, that's a, a bold... I, I, wouldn't, I was going to say a bold prediction. I meant to say a, a fairly solid one. Like, it's it's. I think it's the sensible one. Uh, I'll also say Hupsire takes it. Um, do I think AOT can take a game? I feel like going into this matchup, it feels like AOT hasn't really been able to practice that much. And he struggled a lot versus Shambly's Protoss in group stages. We'll switch over to him to talk about AOT actually for a little bit here. Because looking at this man, he exits with a, a actually technically a losing score because he did drop that one game to Jack Elenski. But at the end of the day, you only need the two wins in the group. So even though he exits with uh, the, maybe the least impressive score on, on paper, uh, it's ZBZ. It can go either way. Uh, and he, when the games that he did win versus Jack definitely looked a lot more composed. Versus Protoss, though, I don't know if he got a chance to really show off any game plan. One of them was on the Purgatory, where Shambler just stomped, and the other one on Titanforge, where the Gladius has got the better of him. So it does feel like if uh, Hapsaya goes for a similar strat, I mean, at the very least, Artist Hurdle will have the opportunity to put his uh, his knowledge, his theory crafting to use, but he was not able to practice much versus this game, uh, ahead of this game. So that's worth noting as well. Like, is he going to be warmed up coming into this? He's also a fellow old head at 31. Uh, his favorite unit being the Bactilisk. We might end up seeing that. We did see that have some pretty good usage from Taco Cake on uh, Impetus, funnily enough, uh, versus the Gladius spam. So it's not without uh, reason that we would see it in this matchup, but... Something that to uh, think about, right? Like, how strong is his uh, understanding of the game going to be? Like you mentioned, Neblime, we haven't really seen him go too far when it comes to that neck of the woods. We haven't really seen him be able to play into Tier 3 or even to Tier 2. Uh, but he does like the Cicralisk, so I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. I, I know he's got something up his sleeve. It just I can feel it. I can sense it. Well, man, Cicralisk and Protoss are going to be a tough sell, honestly. I don't think there's many Protoss things they're good against. If your opponent's doing some kind of like mass vassal strategy and you get to 2-2 two, two, and you're like, aha, take that, then yeah. But other than that, I, it's not my favorite unit for sure in ZVP. Look, like you said, we haven't seen him with much ZVP casted. Uh, so I feel like it also means he doesn't have that much experience as well in these tournament level games with it as well. But we'll see. I know he's been playing a bit. I really just have to say at the end of the day that I haven't, I don't know that much about his play except the ZBZs we've played. So oh, okay. I can't predict much. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, hey. I'm excited to get into it. Are you just about ready, sir? I have DM'd, or have I actually sent the message? Now I've sent you the message about- Just lies and deceit from Moon nonstop. Of course, stop. yeah. I mean, Cyclops, really bad unit. That's another lie. Uh, going into no, yes, the, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll take a look at this map pool here and talk about that veto. Uh, obviously, remember Hapsaya being the higher seed. Anything stand out to you? Like maybe Hapsaya's first ban? Yeah, righty ban, the best map in Cosmonica. I can't believe this. Uh, look, I think it's actually pretty good for Protoss. Uh, Axiom, that is, by the way, for those who don't know which map is the best map. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit it's a little bit narrow and choky in most areas, and I feel like Protoss has a pretty good third and not bad at all fourth or fifth to take. So I'm surprised Hapsaya would ban that. Uh, that said, it also, it's quite easy for Zerg to defend, so maybe Hapsaya thinking he just doesn't want to let Zerg power up with what they want to do. Then we had AOT being Fader Morgana. I mean, Fader Morgana's getting a bit bullied in this tournament because it's just the smallest <laughs> map. If no one wants to deal with that. Um, which, and also I think for Zerg, it's a very good choice because it has narrow bridges and stuff, and you don't want to try and fight Protoss armies in narrow areas. Uh, then we have Impetus banned by Hapsaya. Again, I'd say similar things to Axiom. I mean, I guess it is a lot more open than Axiom, right? And the third, definitely a bit more questionable for Protoss. Um, so, but it says to me he's still thinking of sort of short games here. That's what I'm thinking. And then Titan Forge picked by AOT. Now, I gotta say, AOT last like couple of times he played on it, he was dedicated to like dropping in, including versus me. Is he gonna do something different this time? Because I feel like it's gonna be way too predictable if it goes with the same strategy. Um, 
But I do like it for Zerg in general. Honestly, I just like if you're the one who picks it, no matter what race you are, I think you did the right thing because you're coming in saying, hey, we're going to play on that map. <laughs> right, yeah, you and know? suddenly you're, you know, I mean, listen, Hapsaya doesn't like the Shambler very much, and he likes Titan Forge even less. And he's often, when he, when he pops into the map and he was fighting against the Shambler on, in uh, one of the group stages way back for March Invitational B, he was like, chat, Shambler made this map. And he's playing me. Yep. <laughs> you know, so it's like, <laughs> That's he's, right. He's just not uh, a fan, I think. And so you know, you know what this map is like. It's like when you're yeah. on BattleNet and you see someone like, yeah, one v one Lost Temple, and you're like, well, they're Protoss and I'm Terran, so theoretically this map's awful for them. But they're the kind of person who hosts Lost Temple on BattleNet, so you know they got something up their sleeve. Yeah. Honestly, if you pick Titan Forge, you're thinking of something. You must be thinking of something. All right. Well, does that mean you're thinking of getting started here? Because I think we're just I about am, ready yeah. to start off. Stream. Quarter final gone. number three. What did you say? The stream is gone. Let me fix that for you here. Yeah, probably because you changed versions. I assume. Yeah, yeah. I had to. I had to bop off. All right. So is that now... like actually AOT? By the way, is it just some guy wearing turtle stuff? Uh, I don't know. I asked him if he had a pick for me to post, and he, that's what he said. Yeah. So I think that's actually awesome. AOT. Yeah. If that's actually him, he better be playing StarCraft in that outfit, by the way. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. It, like, I, mean, you know, I imagine he's just chilling at home. It's like, oh, I'm going to play some StarCraft. And he has to, like, change and put on the outfit and, yeah. like, the backpack. Dude, they, well, there could be some psychological power to that, right? Like, just, True. You know, this is my, I'm getting suited up for my superhero move. All right, guys. Let's see what <laughs> happens. We're going to kick off quarterfinal number three. It's Hepsea against Art of Turtle. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Hapsaya here in the top left of Titanforge. His opponent, Art of Turtle, the Zerg in the bottom left. All right. You know, after that intro, when you had like both of their pictures there, it looks like AOT is like the, the young plucky hero coming in, mm. being like, I'm going to take you down. And Hapsaya is just on his throne like, eh, do yeah. whatever, man. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> I was I was half of mine to like mirror them, like flip them, but humans look weird when you mirror them, so I didn't want to do that yeah, to them, like do, do them dirty. Uh, but I was thinking about that because then Hapsaya would have been like, you going to step to me? And then, you know, Art, uh, Art of Turtle would have just been, have his ha hand waving, you know, like, yeah. hey, what's up? What's dude? he holding? Like, I don't know, a turtle shell? I don't know. It's a turtle item. Yeah, yeah. All we right. got we got to imagine there's something good here. So, hey, AOT going to go ahead and scout pretty early. See if he wants to do the hatch some... on high ground or what. Should, could be some crazy semi proxy hatch, man. You assume it's a scout. Draw That's left true. Throws. That's true. Listen, I want somebody to make the proxy hatch work, uh, but we need to get you thermal in first. So, could it be stuff. possible to build the proxy hatch on that big ramp, like straight from the start of the oh, game? And like, Curtis would see it and be like, "Oh my god, I got to come attack it," and you just fight around there. Oh my god. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. There we go. <laughs> I don't know who that's better for, honestly. I think it's better for Protoss, generally. I think it's also better for anybody who's facing off against Hapsaya because he looks at that and he goes, why are the units so dumb? And then <laughs> just starts like tilting in his chat or whatever. So, True. I don't know. All right, he's going to be pretty standard here, double gateway. I wonder if he's going to throw down that lattice like we were seeing. Um, it would be pretty committed to gateways and the lattice. Uh, but Zerg also just expanding in base. Going to be pretty well situated to defend this. You know, this is what I think I prefer from Zerg against two gate. I mean, obviously you would have had to go blind, whoever high ground or low ground, but yeah. I think it's just much, much better to just stick in your base, get your defenses up and make what units you want to make to try and expand. Instead of trying to be in this awkward situation where Protoss are really barreling down and you have Dracodins, so you've got to get the Sarkovs up while they're under fire and all that stuff. Well, we'll be a Dracodin coming indeed, halfway done. All right, Shambler saying six pool would have won the game. Well, I don't know, man. What if you six pool and they, they just made like a gateway right next to their nexus and you feel real dumb. But I guess if Shambler was still playing Zerg in this tournament, man, I don't know why he switched. I know, I know. So many people switched. You uh, switched, obviously. If you think about it, the people who are, were invited back from Ascension 7, only Hapsaya <laughs> kept his race. Yeah, Everybody he's the only loyal gone. one. Yeah. Mm. I, it is too bad that Shambler decided to switch away from Terran because I felt like he was figuring it out. But, you know. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, Where is it? Where'd it go? Where could it be? Find it? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Got a little uh, duet there. Yeah, big fan. I feel like he was just kind of shaking his ass a little. I know. Like, yeah, I got you. Like fucking twerking <laughs> on him or something. That's weird. Yeah, yeah. That's deranged. Well, Art right, of Turtle going to go for the expansion. Choice. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like Quasilis to hold this. I mean, they're very good against Legionnaires. That's a unit they're good against, but Dracon is not so much. 
Draconis, they have a real hard time. Love to see the high ground circuit. I think it's pretty good. Any overhang natural, you want to take advantage of that. Oh, the creek spread, not really quite in position though. What I really like to do is get an overleft here. Uh, when you open high hatch on high ground, I just like getting the overleft straight away because you can both secure expansion and scout. It's very good. Now we do have a Stargate coming right up and Gladius are really, really good on this map because you have this side path where the army won't naturally go. Oh, he's borrowed. But he's just gonna walk right over. What are you doing? Oh no, oh, Hapsaya has been bamboozled by the burrow. Oh, the Draconin oh, is gonna go down nice and early, in. and suddenly the Quasilisks can definitely take this engagement. I mean, there's nothing to kite. Needs a bit of focus fire though. I mean, four legioners is pretty threatening. He's so far just kind of running by. <laughs> now, see this? Yeah, this is the drive-by right here, man. You're just gonna go straight for the workers. Only ten of them, remember? Not yeah. that many. AT really to be making hard on these quads, uh, and he's got three Hatros, so as long as he can stabilize, he can uh, pretty quickly shoot up, and he is making more Drillers right now, but he needs to do that pretty hard, because Hapsaya may have lost some army, but he did kill one here, uh, and he's already 10 ahead in workers. I really like that little move there, and sadly not good enough to get more than one out, but leapfrogging using the Quasi, if he had done that to the one above it as well, he would have been out of there with all three, I think. Gladius coming. It's going to be Gladius Legionnaire off of one base. He knows his opponent had the hatch up. But he also scouted a very low worker count, so I feel like he should be pretty confident from this point of view. Mm, this is this is pretty worrying for Zerg, right? Because Quasilis are just so struggling versus Gladius. They're, they're going to have a bad time. He needs high drift units. Or, I mean, Nafrakor is potentially an option, but that's not really what you want. Um, but if he's just sticking with Quas, I don't know how he's going to pull this off. Now, he's going to come in for attack here. I feel like it's a pretty even army, really. So yeah. it's pretty hard for Zerg to get anything done here. Whoa. He's sort of just <laughs> dancing around him like, hey, man. Oh, my God. There's a lot of quads. But that's a single Gladius, so, yeah, get out of here. I don't know, man. I'd love to see him try to sick on it like, hey. But I, I feel like as long as you – if you get him, get him in the open, then it's one thing. But the Legionnaires by themselves just uh, going to be scary enough. Quasi's returning home. And AOT is almost caught up on workers, making six more. He'll actually shoot ahead for a brief period of time. No uh, Nexus coming and no Embassy coming. It's really just all Legionnaire, all Gladius, all the time for Hepsea. All right, well, if he can get Sprafes up, but he still doesn't know, does he? No, he, he didn't see it. Knowledge. Yeah, he didn't mm. see the, the Gladius come out there, so. Remember, Quasi range is, uh, vision range is pretty low, so. And the gas mining is not really there. I mean, he's getting the high drift now, but he needs to be mining gas at both bases, I think. Because what's he got? Three Hatcheros? Well, here we go. He's going to come in. You know, with Burrow, the Quasis can still do, still do something here, but if it coincides with this Legionnaire attack, I don't see how AAT could possibly hold. He's making a bunch of Zephs. Uh, I mean, even Zephs, I don't think are that great against Legionnaires. Quasis is really just the much more cost-efficient option. I mean, a lot of Quasis are going to be out. He would need a Burrow, though. If you if the Ooh. Gladius see them, they can easily kite them. Yeah, well, not only that, he's already onto the workers, now moving a little bit closer. Now the Quasis are going to leave the front gate. That's going to allow the Legionnaires to start descending, although Hapsaya not actually doing that just now. Oh Focusing all of his micro-attention on to getting those bounces onto the Drolats. So already he's down. already done way too much damage, man. He killed so many Drolats there. And look at this, he doesn't even have to hit the front line. Now the Quasis are going to try and catch them, but they just can't do the damage. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's bouncing him. <laughs> Bouncing him around. Yeah, the, the reaction to send the Zets across the map, that's just going to reveal all the Legionnaires. Hapsaya, now going to think about attack moving with them. He's got a couple Legionnaires at home. The Nexus only now getting started. Ecclesiast to support those Legionnaires, keep them alive. Zets are going to come in and maybe get some cancel action on, but I don't even think AOT can hold, man. Yeah, I think I think it's pretty over. Uh, I was saying before, right? Gladius versus Claws units, no good. And like even, yeah, look how many Legionnaires here. GG. Hapsaya doesn't want to mess around on this map. He doesn't want to expand on this map. He'll stay in the main, thanks. Yeah. Send his air units across. No problems there whatsoever. And look at this. We just got Urban showing up with a raid. Big raid from Urban. Thank you, sir. You are watching the third quarter final of Acropolis number one, Cosmonarchy's premier 1v1 tournament. And AOT just got blasted out on his own map pick by none other than Hapsaya. Yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, if any of you all are from CPL, you probably remember me, Nebla, I'm here. Or maybe you don't, actually haven't done CPL cast in a while, but hey. Welcome to Cosmonarchy. Can someone drop the uh, the website in the chat if you want to check it out? We have a full like rundown of all the units and stuff like that. I'm not on Twitch, so I'm, I'm not going to do it, sorry. Yeah, your exclamation point uh, CMBW will give you the link in the chat. Always a good time. And we are about to see map two, selected again by Art of Turtle. 
uh, the homie of Urban himself. So he'd probably be here cheering them on, you know, like they're they're pretty close friends in real life, I guess. So or at least they know each other in real life. Germination is going to be the pick from Art of Turtle. Again, try not unseat Hapsaya from the throne. Let's see what ends up happening, shall we? All right, then. So now it's AOT's pick on germination here, right? That's right. Uh, I do like it defensively, of course. You have those big ramps. Uh, that's the obvious thing to say. Good for air and especially drops with these mains. Uh, but Hapsaya, I mean, what he's shown so far, it's not going to depend on bases above the number of two. Let's see if he keeps that going. I think Gladius is even better on this map, actually. Uh, actually, Titan Forge is kind of crazy. I don't know. As good, let's say. Sure, yeah. Yeah, fairly even. I mean, you just look at the way that the map is laid out. We've got all of this room here that you can drop in. Very nice and open and hard to actually station units until you have your third to really protect it. But once you do get up to three bases, a very defensible map. Maybe the most defensible three base opener that you can possibly have as far as the map goes. It's just getting to that point can be tricky. Now, Art of Turtle in the top left here is probably going to be going for that... Uh, ramp hatch, although we have seen Zergs play for the expansion first. And the scribe coming across the map pretty early here for Hepsea is going to inform him of exactly what he needs. Forward pylon, gateway behind it, leaving plenty of SimCity mm. space and room for his ramp. As I was saying, I do like the in-base hatch rust a lot more. Yep. Um, I think that's just a lot safer we'll play. That said, you want to take the advantage of the low ground if you can, yes. but you can't guess what Protoss is doing. We even saw the cannon rush, right? Be pretty effective. There's a lot of problems with it. So maybe on four player maps, man, what are those? Never heard of those. <laughs> uh, if those existed, it could be a play, but unfortunately two player, I think you've got to go in base really. Yeah, we'll get those four player actions started off later on. Don't you worry. And hey, there, technically there would have been a four player map in play if we had the uh, FFA decider, but the battlements did not go that way. Ooh, trying to harass. I mean, there's no reason not to do this as Protoss, right? You just get the shields back and you're denying a little bit of mining time. That's and right. he knows units aren't going to be out for ages with that full timing. Oh, yeah. Comes on back. Does a little bit of a jig. Getting some pretty good damage dealt. AOT. Ooh, Ooh look at that. He's trying to decollide onto him. Not going to happen at good, the end good of the attempt, day. Good attempt, actually. Yeah. Really good try. Uh, almost got it, really. Just like two more volleys would have killed it, actually. Oh, he's going to lose this Drolef, though. I got a question leaving this Drolef in here. Because uh, he already saw the second gate had started. No real reason to stay. Now he's going to lose that. Uh, not looking so good in the opening so far for AOT. Now it is double gate first in base hatch again, though. So Zerg set up as they need to be to defend. That's right. Well, it is a, it's a Legionnaire first, though. So there is a, a slight opening here, but it doesn't look like Hapsaya moved directly across the map. So he won't be able to pick anything up here. It's going to be four pairs of Quasilisks. A little light ranged strain for the Zerg. Easily deal with these mm. Legionnaires. I don't want to see AOT go so many causeless like he did last time, though. I think that was a big mistake. Um, mm. They're a fine unit. They're the good early game defenders, but you can't just mass them up like that, especially with Gladius coming out. Now, of course, Hapsaya may not even go for Star yet this time, but I don't know. I think he played this match before we played those practice games, and after those games he was saying, like, Gladius are great. So I don't know how, like, converted he is to Gladius as of these games. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he did try uh, them on Titan Forge, and it did work out very nicely for him. I think after the uh, series that he played against AOT, he also said that he has been converted on the uh, hallucination train, but I don't know if that was from Ooh. games elsewhere. So, you know, well, that's interesting. You know, his favorite yeah. unit is the Cantavis. We'll see what he wants to do with it. Yep, definitely. It's interesting that uh, they have the two options, right? The Storm are very good against swarms of units and like holding a position, whereas the Hallucinate is really great at attacking into static defense, actually, and against any single strong unit, it's going to be quite effective as well. Cancelled Warden there. Since he Ooh. knows that the armor, uh, the army for Art of Turtle is still across, and it will be a Stargate. Mm. Do we see a Hydra? No, we see four more pairs of Quasis. AOT sort of digging his own grave again in the exact same way so far. Yeah. Well, there's still time. There's still time. He's not throwing down that third Hatros yet either. Yeah, that's, I think, where this is coming at a bit of an awkward time here, going for the extra Quasis and not able to uh, get that timing down. He's uh -oh. worrying about a push. But the quasi count, at the very least, is going to be able to deal with this very easily. Ooh, the burrow right in his face, but Apsaya seeming to not really care too much. And that front line well, is almost thing, instantly right? going to go for down, yeah. Even if Protoss knows it's there, they got to respect it, or that's going to happen. You can't let Zerg get too close range. And, that, and that's why this is effective, like I was saying earlier with the circuits. You don't care if Protoss actually knows it, it's just you have to force them to walk next to you before you can attack them. Now, he needs to hold the ramp here. <laughs> the Draconids will just get value if he keeps chasing them around on the map. So I think holding the ramp is fine. Oh, he's trying to bait him now. Now he's trying to trick him. Although I don't know if he actually saw that. I think he may have. Yeah, just uh, a little bit there. Yeah, would it be good if he ran in the middle of that? Then he would have killed a lot of stuff. Not today. Gets the Hydra as the first Gladius. Easy in construction. Third Hatros finally down. 
you know what might be actually even better for Zerg here? Instead of trying to get this third Hatros down really fast, just drolling up fully on one base, because you can do about 25 on a single base is good saturation. Uh, and then worrying about getting the low ground, get the Hydra before that even. Because the way it is, is Hapsea has really scary army here. Once the Gladius is out, he's going to have a lot of pressure on this natural that AOT has had a pretty weak economy up until now to try and defend. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's going to be another hatch. He doesn't have a great worker count here, but Hapsea didn't end up going for the embassy. He went for the Nexus first. So he has no detection. Mm. He can't really bust this position as a result. We saw Hamster versus Taco Cake, the fast witness really helping him out versus the Quasi, making it so that their only real move, which is the Burrow, is totally nullified. But instead of yeah. that, Hapsea going for the faster Stargate. So he's got combat tech instead of the sort of a revealing option there from the detection from the witness. So, you know, it, it, it's a thing. Trade-offs. Hydra starting now. Well, uh, it is a bit worrying. What if Hapse had just made Zealots, right? Could he have actually got in here already? Because that's a lot of minerals already to those legions. They're slightly cheaper, but not that much cheaper. Um, now, he's coming in with the combined force. The Hydra's just starting to pop out. If he has a bunch, I think he can hold this. That's a lot of legionnaires, man. That could do a lot. Hydra's in the back, though. You're going to do damage. The bounce is already coming down. Yeah, and these zealots are... There's four of them. That's a lot of zealots for the early stages of the game, remember? And now the bounces... I mean, some of them are being absorbed by that obelisk, but not all of them. And with the front line starting to fall, this might be a good opportunity for those hydras to get in on the action. we got four more being made at the same time. Hapsea oh, only man. now looking away to macro the up. Oh. They're doing a lot of damage. He's going to clear it. Now, the nature of Zerg being that a whole bunch of Hydra is going to pop out here at once, so he's not going to die, but some draw left damage might get done. Hang on, reinforcements are coming in. The Zealots are going to be hard to chew through. That's right. And it's up to two Gladius. The count will only climb from here. Ah, uh, the bounce is even getting that egg as well, so that will not be another Ooh. Hydra. I feel like the the count is just a little bit too low here. AOT not able to break it. He can't even break these Zealots. He's got to fall away from the Gladius bounces. Yeah, I think he is going to get broken here after all. Causalis, again, are going to do nothing to those Gladius, especially Zealots as well. Not the unit you want here. I don't know if it was low on gas or something. The Izzy's at least can handle Zealots and they can tank a bit better if you don't have any gas. But uh, yeah, he's just sending in units piecemeal now. They're starting to get picked apart. The two Draken are still alive this entire time. Looks like one might fall. There it goes. Heroes don't get to survive. Gladius aren't heroes, man. Don't tell me that. They're just sitting up in their, in their flying ships just chilling. <laughs> Well, it's just chilling right now, and that's going to be GG, G. or a single Square G. Square bracket G. That's right. AOT. Not looking too hot right now versus Hapsea. And these are fast matches. These are even faster than the first two that Hamster did. So, I don't know. He needs to adapt to the way Hapsea is opening. And like I keep saying about staying on one base, he needs something different. Because the way he's doing it, getting a bunch of cores and expanding, Hapsea is just perfectly prepared to smash it. Yeah, that is absolutely the case. Well, let's see what ends up happening. He still has one more chance at the very least to extend play. Would be a shame if he goes to the lower bracket so soon, so quickly. And look at this. Can you guess the map pick at this stage? I, I can see it, so I'm cheating. But, oh, okay. I well, mean, what map does Zerg want to play on, right? That's right, that's right. I, I forgot <laughs> you were watching somehow. It is going to be Sideshow. It'll be Art yes. of Turtle in the bottom right, Hapsea in the top left. Let's see what they can get up to on this map, which, like I said, consensus is best for Zerg, good for Protoss, not as great for Terran. I mean, I don't know if everyone agrees with me, but no one's come out and said, like, when you said that on cast, you were wrong. So I feel like it's just me saying it and no one necessarily correcting me. Uh, but, I mean, from the games we've seen, I think it definitely... Uh has played out that way so far. Now, what's really nice here as well is it is an overhang map. You can get a circuit or a warden, for example, to cover the entrance to the natural. I think that is very beneficial for Zerg. Protoss can take pretty good advantage of it too. Uh, it depends what they want to do, but they usually have to go like a one gate with that. Um, but I think it's very good for Zerg. You get that high ground Hatcherosk and you don't actually need to go into gas. You can just take your natural right away with that. Um, but again, we'll see if, if AOT even wants to go two bases here uh, or even if Hapsea tries the same thing. Could be the case. I mean, Hapsea has not been led astray by the uh, gate, gate, stargate, right? So if you're thinking about it like <laughs> that, AOT is yeah. uh, under the pump from that strategy. He is going to go with the ramp hatch and followed by the pool, no doubt, as he scouts across. We'll see but what he wants to do. But for the pool this time, by the way. I think uh, against what Hapsea is doing, what would be best if you go up to 12 and then get the pool would uh, be pretty strong. But that said, you don't know if he's like if he's proxying, which would be pretty crazy to be fair. But if he's proxying and you go like 12 pool, you can actually still die even with an in-base hatch. Yeah, that's right. Oh, well, he's getting a little bit of damage. Oh, look at Ooh. that! Uh, Hapsea got the bronze move on him. 
That's a nice early is. worker count. By the way, that's yeah, what going What is this man stuck up to? Rank double check that. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely murdered. That's a draw if you don't want to lose because he didn't even get that much intel, right? Yeah, he only sees the one gate, right? I don't even think. Yeah, the second mm. gate got started after he's already dead. Now, he may well just assume it's a second gate in this case, which I think is probably fine. And Scribe Harass still going down. Hasn't got any kills, at least. No, no, but it's the it's about sending a message. Pool almost done. Man, my stream is so behind. I just saw, like, the stuff attacking into AOT's natural in last game. No, you must have paused it or something. Oh, it's just it just lag. It always buffers. Ah, we... Aussie internet. Yeah. Got him. yeah, that's right. Classic Australian internet, right? All right, it's going to be Legionnaires first this time. Uh, no Draconic coming out right away, but I don't think it's going to get anything done because, uh, well, AOT only making a pair of Zephs right now, actually. Ooh, okay. He is mixing it up. And we saw this in the qualifiers, not the qualifiers, sorry, the group stage. Uh, it's pretty good, the double gateway lattice. Uh, it gives you a lot of different options. I would like to see idols if AOT is sticking with cause units. I feel like the idol is very good against all the cause units, but very bad against all the hydro units. Yeah, I mean, it's a, a curious case of what you do as the adaptation goes, and Hapsaya... Gonna throw in some idols, maybe look to crush him instead of even giving him the opportunity to adapt to the Gladius play. And you don't need to, I mean, Ooh. if you already have this buffer where you only need to win one more game, sure, try to experiment. Maybe you use it almost yeah. as like extended practice. Your opponent is gonna certainly be trying pretty hard, but you must be feeling pretty comfortable from Hapsaya's POV. I think that's an excellent point. And uh, you might be thinking like, okay, what if uh, AOT does have some answer to this now if he knows I'm going to go Gladius. Right, he yeah. has some way to just turtle it out and on Sideshow you don't want to go to a longer game even if you're like slightly ahead or something. It's still not really a good time for Protoss. So I like that he's going to do something different this time. And yeah, double Lattice. I think he's just going to keep spamming out idols. I assume that's the play here and just come in and smash whatever is defending because uh, he's probably aware of the fact as well that it's always been a slow high drift. Now, Causeless, if they're in a good position, can defend fine, especially against these Legionnaires. I mean, the Legionnaires can't really get in here, I don't think. No, even with extra Ecclesiasts. And in fact, it might he might get baited into it, at which point, yeah, it looks like he's just going to go ahead and charge Ooh. on in. Well, yes, I'm Burrow. Um, uh, oh, there it is. All right. Yeah, at this point, I you're definitely not going to get... Uh, yeah. I'm surprised I'm saying I committed on that, actually. <laughs> yeah, if I see that many, <laughs> I'm definitely yeah. a little bit cautious. Now, you don't see all of them, right? Cautious. You only see, like, one or two because of the reveal. So, you know, he, mm -hmm. it's possible he thought it was less than it was, but you definitely got to be careful of that, so... I don't really favor the Hierophant first cause units either because, okay, you're slowing down one cause out of how many? Right. Like, it's not really a big deal. I mean, you know, if they're running away, it still might play for itself in catching stuff. In general, though, I think a Dracodon would just have been a superior unit. Now, instead, he's starting to mix in Vassals as well. I have seen Vassal Idol, like, purely is pretty strong against cause units as well. Everything just hinges on getting those Hydralists out, really. All right, the Idol's dealing some splash damage as the Quasalisks push on through. Remember, the front line from the Legionnaires, not great, but front line for the Zealots, especially with this one Ecclesiast in the back, absolutely money right now. And oh, the, the Vassal. Yeah. Oh, you shouldn't have killed the Vassal, man, although it doesn't actually matter that much this time. But yeah, melting those Quasalisks. Uh, unfortunately, uh, AOT getting caught across the map, losing everything he's got, trying to put down the defenses now. I believe he'll be barely wrapping time. He does have the overhang as well, so pretty well defended here, actually. Yeah, and with only the one Vassal, you can't really do any anti-air damage, right? Or air-sourced damage, I should say. It's five pairs of Zeths. Interesting. Well, that's good for emergency defense. At least you won't be able to run by. I think I think it makes sense. But he is going to have a hard time against the Vassals if more get filled. And then one more is being queued up. Ooh, better be careful. Okay, he wants, to get, he wants to go out on his own side, right? He wants to see if he can maybe yeah. do a run by. And this isn't bad because, you know, you're basically banking that your opponent isn't going to try to break this. And even if they do... Can they, right? There's only the one Ecclesiast. Yeah. There's a bunch of Zealots. He's going to walk in here, poke his head up, and Ooh. see, oh, dude, you've got six circuits. I'm out. Now the Zeth started becoming a little bit of a problem. attacking just now? I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so many something. of them. Yeah. Um, okay, he's going to try it, but I mean, oh, I thought Upsay would be prepared for this, having already known it. Two Zealots will be pretty tough, but I think he could barely stop that. Going off the scribe is dead. Can oh, he get man. it? AOT trying to head for the... Uh, the scribe to stop the expansion before anything, but I thought maybe he could have overwhelmed the idol instead or something like that. Yeah, it would have been a good pick. It is 75 gas, right? Yeah. Um, but he's going to lose all these and he's not going to kill anything. It did delay the natural very slightly, but only very slightly. And I have to say, his draw left count is still pretty low here. Uh, Hapsay has not actually been able to scribe up that much either, but uh, I feel like AOT could have been ahead. He clearly didn't need those Fs to defend in the end, uh, so he could have made a bunch of draw left instead. The Hydra finally coming down here. I assume that's not a ski back to MCA morphing. No, nope, that's a Hydra. Yeah, okay. He's going to be able to start pumping those out, but has he given too much time for Upsaya to get his natural and all that stuff? I think Upsaya will be able to take a slight lead here, but we do see he doesn't have an embassy. So maybe the worker count at least will be favoring Zerg, but he'll be stuck on two bases for a while yet, I think. 
Yeah, I, I guess one thing I can say here is that Hepsea not going for an Ardent or for anything of the sort for like the there Siege um, is a little bit concerning, right? Because he's he's seriously pumping out all of his money onto the, the units that are unlikely to matter in a bust situation. What he needs is to be able to break this with either you know, that or maybe use drops or something, right? And that's where maybe the Embassy could come in. So he's making a oh, read on the situation, strat. but... To make a bunch of golems so that they probably don't last that long against the Circus. Well, I mean, if they're all targeting different ones, then maybe they stay alive for a bit longer, especially with the Ecclesiast heal factored in. But yeah, it's yeah, a question no, of can you actually struggle. make it in. Well, a lot of vassals, though. I mean, the Hydras are coming out now, but I do wonder if you can sneak a few drones here. I mean, eight vassals, that'll kill Drolef pretty fast. If you sneak in and just, you know, kill one or two, it's well worth it. Yeah, that's right. So Embassy it is for Hapsea. He's sharking around and keeping the contain up, making sure that the third hasn't been taken by an Avaleth or anything. But it is going to be Mass Hydra. Again. Yeah, back to this would be pretty good at breaking this contain, just forcing the army not to be in this spot. But he's coming out with just a few hydras so far. I think he needs to build up a little more, but he did get an idol with that. Oh, and a sell it. So, not bad, actually. Would like to see some backfills. I think that's the right play here. Yeah, and well, he has the scab out already, so we'll see what he ends up wanting to do. That Avaleth could maybe start to elevate or some units across, or at the very least get the third base set up and under Hapsea's nose. He's not going to allow that per se. Now, actually, he's going to withdraw, so that's interesting. Art and authority in the natural. There. That idols can't deal with is Bactylus, but Bactylus will destroy them. Ground army going with those. Yeah, okay, the, the <laughs> Vassal's coming on back as well, so this is a little bit uh, under strength for what it could be the case. Avaleth occupying a lot of the range units' time. This is allowing the front line to be burned down by those Hydras. Here come the Vassals as well. That can speed up everything else, but is it too late because the front line's already dead? Some Zealots streaming in from reinforcement angles as well. Eh, it's looking like AOT's going to get beaten back into his base, especially if the Zets blocking his Hydras from retreating. Well, I think he can come out again with the Zeps backing him up, though. Uh, you know, it was an interesting fight because the Hydras are pretty good against Zealots, but at the same time, Zealots are still pretty good at tanking there. Got a lot of time and a lot of stuff got killed. Oh, man, AOT is so close to busting up, but I don't think he quite can. Quasilus once again being made, but again, there's still three idols out and a bunch of Zealots. I don't think Quasilus is going to help. If he was morphing Bactyls with it, just so that, like, you know, that's where his gas is going, this is where his minerals going, I'd like a lot more. He did just start five facts, but I feel like if he waited till he had Bactyls before he started that fight, he would have looked a lot better. Yeah, and despite not having his vassals for most of that fight, Hapsaya comes out on top. He's now starting in a Cantor back at home, maybe thinking about bringing it with an Envoy for a drop, or at the very least to ferry it to the front lines. i got to mention, by the way, I think AOT still not really fundamentally realizing how many more workers you need compared to Brood War. He's on about 35 right now, but on two base, I think you want to like 50 is the number, and then you can get like six Hatchross production, basically, and spam Hydras out. Uh, but he's kind of missing out a lot of income here because yeah. of that. And Hapse, even with no third, he's going to hit there. Now, here's the fight. The Bankless are going to put a lot of damage. There's a lot of vassals, but once the Zelt's born, they will not last long at all. They do have nice damage just while the front line is there, though. Pretty yeah. good micro from Hapse. Yeah, he's going to get out with a couple of his units here. The Zealots are going to recommit, but oh, he's no. basically going to lose all, all, all of these forces. That's what I get for saying good micro. I'm saying he's going to go back in and lose all that stuff. He kept all the vassals alive, though. And that is actually he's quite good to keep those just to threaten Zerg. Uh, but it is unfortunate that he, he lost all the idols because they are quite expensive. Yeah, AOT going to stick to just the raw military production. He's up to five hatch yeah. in just a moment here. Yeah, like, like I said, I think he just doesn't realize that you can set trade that much more because in Brood War, you know, it's a lot different. Oh, yeah, um, big time. Although maybe the decision is he's just going to try an all-in counterattack. I don't know. Yeah, he's not making any more workers right now. So this is a very heavy committal on the military push. 15 the Akantor, vassals. Though, the Akantor are going to be really strong defensively. Well, what is there to protect it, though, right? The vassals will, as soon as they start fighting in the front line, they drop so fast. Well, they can run away so fast. <laughs> well, they can, but that leaves yeah. the Akantor very vulnerable, and the Zets yeah. occupying so many of the shots as well, so it goes down. All right. We only have Bactylisks left, though, so any Zealots or anything like that are going to completely nullify these guys. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no more Hydralisks. I think there's a bunch got produced, but never got rallied. And now, yeah, he's doing pretty good micro. He might barely be able to pull this off still. Where is the next Akantor? Is it coming out? Mm -hmm. Only halfway done, not even. Oh, man, a bit of a lapse in production there, I think, from Upsay. I'm sure it would have been out by now if... Uh... He'd been doing oh, the whole time. Look at the Zeth commit too. Yeah, could be deadly if you can depower the main. The game can just end just like that. But man, these backlists are so expensive. They get taken out. Oh, the higher fence again. Not doing oh much no, yet. the authority's on <laughs> power. There's no Akantor gonna come in. He might even commit onto that secondary pylon before it finishes. Workers being massacred in the natural, and Hapsea is going to say not GG, but he will end up leaving the game. All right, well, never mind what I was saying. Maybe AOT is well aware he, of how many draws he can get, but he's like, no, no, I'll just end the game. Upset, got nothing. 
Uh, yeah, it's but unfortunately had no static defense there. I feel like even a couple of wardens would have made a big difference, but you have to criticize the uh, like sort of re-extension around AOT's natural when maybe it was time to come home. Maybe it was. Well, I'm saying never GG's, Omar. Don't don't expect that. We're not we're not out here expecting that. You know what will be selected is none other than derelict for our fourth game. And that leaves the Purgatory as the final map if we need it. So let's head on over there. Okay, Germination. Sorry, sorry. Derelict for Protoss. Uh, That's right. I, I do like it because uh, it's got a good third, I think, for Protoss and fairly narrow locations. I was just saying this to BDB when he was shocked that I vetoed his map. Um, <laughs> I think Zerg does not have a great time on Derelict because there's a lot of like narrow areas. Wherever your army is on the map, it's never far away from some kind of terrain feature to help it from being surrounded. Uh, and if your opponent's army gets near your base, then it suddenly gets really hard to move out. Mm. Uh, and also, like I say, the third, pretty defensible for all races. That does extend to Zerg as well. Zerg doesn't have a terrible time defending the third. But I think generally, if the third is hard to defend, Zerg can still just get map control if they want. That is correct. AOT now pushing on with his scout, has a game under his belt, looking to start up his reverse sweep campaign. Hapsea, on the other hand, obviously wants to just avoid that. We might see him go straight back to the uh, winning ways. You know, he's dropped the one map. He wants to make it a nice, he's easy winning ways. series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm relieved. I'm relieved we didn't have like a repeat of group stage where everyone goes flawless except me. Because <laughs> I thought that might be what was about to happen. But yeah, yeah AOT, I, I thought it was going to be the closest of the ones we cast today, right? So he is getting his one game in. That's Can right. he outdo my prediction? Can he win? Mm -hmm. Or even your prediction, yeah, just win an another game, right? He doesn't necessarily yeah. have to win the whole series. Yeah. Heckling the pylon. And yeah, by winning ways, I was thinking of the Gladius, right? The fact that he went, he didn't True. go for the Stargate. Hasn't failed yet, right? One. Right, yeah. That was just a bit of a detour. I would have loved to see more Vassal harassment, right? Pressure the front a bit, but I think go home sooner. Don't try and tangle with the Hydra back. And then uh, he comes in with the Vassals, picks a draw off here or there. I think would have been slightly better. Keeping Especially his early game chops up, though. Yeah, definitely. He got that draw off at the start of the last game, don't forget. That's right. Yeah, can't really be allowing it to get too far in. Here we go. This around. Ooh, catching it on the way back. He wants it again. Yeah. But AOT has learned. That's right. He's smarter. He, he just takes a look at it every so often, then pulls away. Now, here comes the worker uh, trying to escape the clutches of the Draken, and Looks like it will end up happening for now. But the hatch on the ramp has completed, and the pool is done as well. How many? Oh, it's going to be Zeth's this time around. Interesting. Just two pairs. Well, okay, maybe he has gotten sick of Quasilisk. I mean, against the Dracodon alone, they'll be fine. But even against pure Dracodon, if it builds up in number, I felt like the Zephs don't do too well. So it's fine It's fine for the first sort of wave to ward off Protoss, but you do need something else sooner or later. Now, this is uh, the patched version of Derelict 1. It is not an overhang map. You cannot make that circuit to ward them off either. If you want to take the low ground base, you're going to need something down there. All right, well, I like this move. Though. Sort of like a Vulture in StarCraft 1 a TVP. You just try to get it out there and then leave. But unlike a Vulture, it regenerates. So maybe even better to get the Zeths out to force the yeah, Dracons to come on back. Dude, imagine if Vultures regenerated in StarCraft 1. That'd be great. Yeah, and if they jumped up cliffs oh and God. threw bombs and all this other stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow, imagine that. Yeah. And some... you can make them from a barracks. I know, crazy. <laughs> Somebody should try that uh... and then delete the unit because it just breaks everything else. All right, the Nexus is warping in for Hapsea and he will be able to catch the Zets here. They get one Scribe kill. It's not the end of the world. In fact, two of them, oh, no, only one of them getting out because just brewed war things. But uh, back at home. A little bit of a, a worker mm. deficit, working out of that right now with two more on the way, and it's a lot of quads. Once again, yeah, the quads committal once again, though. Uh, I feel like every game, this is what's put AOT in a pretty tough situation. Now, we've not seen the second lattice, right? It is that expansion instead. So, yes. I'd say his option still open. Will he get the Stargate? Will he go for the lattice anyway? Well, he's I not harvesting any Vespine now. Okay, he's only switched on to it now, I was going to say. He was at zero. Mm. He was at like 18 Vespine for a good while, it felt like. Now, the quasis have p bypassed ships in the night here. Drakadin's not watching out for that. This could actually get a little bit know. ugly. I don't know if this is even good for Zerg, though, because they can't kill buildings. Like, they will not kill that Nexus. Like, I feel like Zerg's buildings will all be dead before the Nexus will die, you know? And uh, a lot of Drawleth could potentially fall. That's it. I guess a lot of Scribes could, too. We'll have to see what happens here. Yes, it's going to be total say, uh... work or death, my man, because this Drakadon is not going to stand against so many of them. Ooh. Now, a pylon can be killed. That is not a very strong building. Oh, he always gets it. 
He needs to get that pollen before the others pop out. How close are they? They're pretty close. The Dracodons is actually turning back. Oh, this could no. be huge. Yeah, the Dracodons did not continue the pressure. So now if there's a lot of worker deaths, AOT looking pretty strong. He's even going to pick this pylon before he finishes. There's another one that's going to pop out here, though. And he hasn't been able to kill this Dracodon. So at this point, if he's going he to step closer... He does need to get worker kills, though. Yeah. If he just gets pylons, it'll still be actually not bad, perhaps, because he will wipe the army. But there you go. He's starting to get those scribes. You need to focus fire them. Oh, this one's still not powered. Ooh. Good pick of that other pylon, then, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Ooh, the drill. Man, there's only three of them left. The yeah. yeah, of course. All right, all right listen. Not bad at all. At the end of the yeah. day, Hapsaya now had a worker disadvantage, but he has the second Nexus, so he can come back into that later on. We have three hatch for AOT, and he will be turning that into a circuit, no doubt, at the overhang, what, what little remains of it. There's a lot of Dracodons that can move across the map now. Is this ever going to get finished? Look. <laughs> Does he even I don't think know? he's, I don't yeah, think he's aware he of it. He may not. He may well not. Uh, interesting, by the way, in Cosmonarchy, it's a bit more obvious than in Brood War if it's unpowered, right? It has that graphic, yep. which is nice. Uh, but I still don't think he's noticed. Uh, is that What's that building? An embassy? Okay. Yeah, he's not getting much military reduction. But that's it. AOT is still just at home with his cores. But, oh, this is the play. If you can pick up these Dracodons. Oh, young no. Boris oh. Gets one. Yep, there's the low HP one. Great pick on the second. Yeah, very nice. And yeah, there's really no offensive potential now. He just needs to borrow again to avoid being kited, although he's just waiting for the circuit, I suppose. That's fine, too. Yeah, now AOT's sitting pretty on his two bases. He can outproduce uh, Protoss in workers here. Well, hang on. Hapsay's not done, man. He still wants it. Oh, the one on the high ground is going to cancel Ooh. this out, though. Yeah, it can, it can defend that one side of the choke. It's going to get a kill! Oh, so close. So, so close. close. Nerf toss. All right. Oh! Yep, still nerf toss. Yep. <laughs> no, no, just the shields, man. Don't write about it. He's just he's just exhausting the circuit by having to kill his shields over and over again. That's right. Like I said, man, units don't get tired. All right, listen, Avaleth. No, but he's doing it right in front of him. He's going to see it. He's coming right in. He's like, hmm, where'd all the quads go, huh? Mm, I wonder what's happening there. <laughs> right, it's not the quite enough to deal with two circuits, though. Uh, if he had, like, five even, I would say you can try it, but uh, it's four is not going to do it. And well, Because you can go in and out and really bully them. He still hasn't noticed. Mm. That's that's rough. That's a feels bad. That's a, a tilter when you do notice it, probably. Mm. Hydra's coming up now again. Is he still going to uh. go for the drop? I'd like to see him still try. Oh, man. Loses a dragon and even. I think this is a manifestation of Hapsaya knowing that he's a bit behind after the, the sort of... Uh, Backstab there, yeah. feeling like he has to get something done, and he has baited these clauses down, which I think is just a straight mistake from AOT. You don't need to chase these away. You just can just sit behind your circle, because there you go, he got a couple extra kills, he didn't really lose anything there, he's going to keep fighting. <laughs> All right, now he's figured it out. Okay, the burrow is yeah. good. He's saving up a lot of minerals. I think he's going to spam out a whole bunch of hydrif hydras as soon as his hydra is done. Hey, he's going for the ski backed as well, so we could see backs, Ooh. or maybe even skiffs in the way out. I don't really like Ski back here, to be honest. I'd rather he just kept the Hydralis going, take that third, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Rather than invest be. in tier 1.5. I feel like it kind of stymies his potential to grow ahead of his opponent. Listen, with four Draconids, you're going to start one-shotting these Quas, so definitely got to be careful about that. Mm. Right, he's going to fall back now. He made yeah, a second I, gateway, I, I, but nothing else. Ancestral coming. Okay, that's his, that's his play. That's a pretty high-tech stuff. But still no power on that for, forward gateway. Well, maybe he's, you know, not powering it so he doesn't waste his money. He can spend it on Tectons instead of Dracodons, right? It's the better walker. Yeah, uh, I guess so. I'm I mean, not going to lie, I do kind of like to oh, see the okay. Tectons just smash. Ooh. There it is. Even as a Zerg, I like to see up Tectons just smash hordes of, like, all this and stuff. Oh, yeah. So I do kind of want to see that. <laughs> sure, yeah. It's a satisfying thing. It'll be much better Definitely. when they have their own graphic, too. Instead of just a recolored Oh, yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Please. Well, we need the freaking Demiurge and the Patriarch, too. Sorry, the oh, Choir, yeah. rather. You need to have their own as well. That's right, that's right. Hey, with at least with the um, the uh, Tecton, I could probably model it myself since I could just build it out of the Atreus. But we were we were right. kind of hoping to make a new version of the Atreus at some point using the Dracodon as the base. Because if you notice, oh, yeah. the Atreus has a turret, and turrets are not really like the... They're not in the shape language of the Protoss, man. <laughs> the Epigraph is the yeah, same way. The not. Epigraph has these barrels on it, and that should probably be converted into like, you know... Like more well, I never looked things. that closely. Yeah, but yeah. a dragon is the same as Brood War, where the turrets on the underside. No, no, they uh, they always open the top, even in the dragon. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The, dra the dragoon also opens at the top and then busts it, but it just yeah, but it has its little facing organ on the bottom, you know. Yeah, it's like a stabilizer or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we yeah, ended right. up removing that from the design. So. Fair enough. Doesn't need All it because right. it can actually turn. Oh my god. 
I do like that AOT's putting another hatch rusk out here as well, because you do want to get that creep down a bit further. Uh, when you're building static defense out here, that's the location just above those unbuildable rocks that you want to cut off as well. Yep. So I like the move so far. Um, now, this is why I sort of criticize the ski back here, because Hapse is going to get into ancestral units. He's already got a second one on the way, Patriarch being built, and uh, AOT not going to have tier two for a while here. Um, so that's I right. think you've got to acknowledge that the situation is such that you don't need tier 1.5. Uh, you can just spam out tier 1 units. I guess he... Okay, I was going to say, he hasn't actually made anything from it, but he just made a bunch of backlists. Yeah, yeah he almost powerful. had enough for tier 2 at that point, right? So... Yeah. Backlists are good units, don't get me wrong. But if uh, a fight doesn't happen for a while, and you could have had tier 2 by that time anyway, I feel like uh, the backlists are not worth it. Mm. There's going to be a second Ancestral Archives coming as well. So that's interesting. Just scouting around, seeing, hey, look, there's neutral stuff. But this, this is a big block. Most version where you can actually shoot down into there. Because on the, the old version, you couldn't get range of like, say like a causalist actually hit workers there. No, see on the new version, it's got a little overhang down on the south side. Yeah, down there, yeah. Oh, I see. You can actually you can actually sneak in and stop, deny workers, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, that's neat. All right, well, oh. this big blob of Zerg is moving across and I think the Zealots have slipped the net. There's a witness coming over. It's not gonna see any military. And there's one Patriarch, but no Uptectons. We're just talking well, about- Well, this is the timing, right? This is what AOT has to make happen. If he can hit while well, he has the advantage from the back tools before there's too many ancestral units, he probably has an advantage here. That's a lot of stuff. What stag defense is up to have to fall back to? He's gonna have to rely on the cannons here, but Archon gonna get picked up too quickly if he's not careful. Really wants to get that regenerate here. It looks like he will. That could be absolutely critical because it's just so much HP. Oh my god, that's too much stuff though. I that's think AOT just smashes him. Yeah, that's yeah. way too much. He's got another Archon, he's got a, a Patriarch. Okay, well, if they're busy focusing on workers and wardens, then maybe some of these units can deal with it. The Patriarch yeah. is staying alive, but only just barely. That Archon needs to get to the front line and try to shield steal, but it's not gonna happen. Instead, the Patriarch will be picked, luring him all the way out. Not a bad call. Lavalef did get picked, so no opportunity for an elevator. Now the Archon will end up falling. Patriarch's still alive yeah. somehow. I think uh, Hapse doesn't die here. He can probably stay alive with Patriarch. So, so, so many stuff. Hydras, man. I don't know. We will see. But he's starting to pick off with the Patriarchs. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming in here. Um, he's still again. microing over here. This Patriarch is still alive somehow, man. It's dealt almost 1,500 damage. The Archon did fall, though, actually. So yep. with the Bacalist, I think he's pushing in here. Yeah, he's trying to cut off the reinforcements. It looks like it's not enough. I'm sorry, actually, with a huge bank suddenly. Uh, but Patriarchs are high ground. Going to do their best. Man. And they're still getting hit. It's just not quite enough. Oh, that's a lot of splash damage, though, man. He's starting to get the value. It is. He's, he's oh, okay. Here's an archon as well. Needs to be focused down here by AOT. Otherwise, all his units are going to end up falling. Remember the shield seal. Oh no, but it's not attacking the same units. The patriarchs focusing it down different units means that that buff doesn't get transferred over. Buys enough time though to pick a lot of those off. So it looks like he might barely stabilize. Oh, that patriarch is so low though. Oh, is it going to fall? Yes, oh. falling to that hydra at the very end. And this nexus now about to die. That could be the killing blow here. It looks like AOT has smashed three here, and then Arkham comes out. Uh, even if he survives on one base, what's he going to do from there, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. See. Trying to see what he can make happen. Archon Zealot, pretty formidable force. Well, once again, AOT proving me dead wrong. Why bet make tier two, right? That's just my mistake. <laughs> Listen, now he's going to take the worker advantage. With 13 in the main production. He's sick. Well, it's much more than just a worker advantage when you're earning money from one base. It's That's right. Sale, right. That's right. I feel like, you know, the probes will start, like, rioting because of unemployment or something in here. Ooh. Hey, the Archon is still his front though. line. Yeah. Yeah. So at least be careful. If AOT takes it even one of them again, it's a huge loss. It looks like Upside is committed to playing this out, right? He's going to push him back, and he's not leaving the game just yet. I would like to see up Tectons. They're one of the really key units when you're this behind. If your opponent is, you know, just hopefully doesn't make air, basically. What else are you going to try here, right? Man, 20 more workers coming, though. Mm, that's the way to do it, because he's reset the army pretty much. Going to take another base, maybe? Or that Drolof is just here to, to watch the battle? Well, I guess that's the good thing about Hapsea's bank, is he's able to make the Nexuses immediately again. You know, it's risky, right? But... You could go for an attack here. Oh, no, the workers are rallied to the wrong spot. They will go for an attack. Yes. Get <laughs> and look, I mean, this force is scary. I mean, he's got two Patriarchs, two Archons. If he gets the right micro... They're about to get flanked, though. That, the that. unit's going to come from the wrong side. The Patriarchs, they might get picked off really quickly. I feel like Hapsage needs to try and escape from this situation. Well, there's only Hydras coming from one direction, man. Because the Iral Iris has started, and there's seven Hydras at home. That's a paltry force. Three Archons, the Patriarchs... Oh, no, they've switched over. This is going to allow those Archons to get focused down. You need to be attacking in unison with the Patriarch. Otherwise, that shield's still not going to come in. 
You look at that ascension, though. They got out real fast. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's pretty true. good, at least. That's true. Yeah. Okay, he didn't lose any Patriarchs, though, so I don't mind it too much. I mean, the Archons aren't that cheap, but they don't cost too much gas. Yep. He does need to keep producing them, though. Uh, and he, for a while, he was only making Archons there. The only hope Protoss has here is to build up some really OP, like, uh, concentrated splash formation, like a lot of Patriarchs, right? Uh, he's not going to be able to win a straight-up fight with a front line like that. All right. Well, listen. Zealots, Patriarchs, Archons... Just dancing around here, but this force is a lot less scary with only one Archon. Come some Dracodons here for some more single target, but that's not at all what you're paying attention to right now. There are so many Hydras. Yeah, way too ballsy from Hubsayer there to stay out, and I think he's going to lose both his Patriarchs here. Uh, at least oh, one of them surely see. will end up going down. Takes one shot on yeah, the way out. Okay, somehow manages to get them out. The Dracodons as uh, fodder, an uh, underexplored strategy maybe. <laughs> the Zealots now blocking the Patriarchs there. They just need to be like Whoa. attack moved and give their lives for the the, the well, true he's, gods here. He's trying not to lead him back to the proto space. He doesn't want to reveal the position of the home world, you know? That's right. Um, Listen, this is going is really starting well. to wreck up. Yeah. yeah, can he clear this? I don't know, it'd be crazy. That's so many kills in that Patriarch. Oh, he's got to get out. Get out. Oh, he's going to lose one. No, nope, they stay alive. Oh, 2k, 3k. Something like 5,000 damage on these Patriarchs, man. They have stayed alive for so very long. But look, oh the Zeth counterattack is coming in. Targeting pylons, a great idea. Oh, only depowers one. If he can get this one, it'll be real big. Yeah, there's no one there to clean this up. Yeah, it's a good little move because it only costs you minerals, and Zerg is starting to not care about minerals. We already see them banked up a lot. Uh, he's getting into that tier two. I saw a Kalkia Lake being built there and a Matrival Nest coming up. That's right. Uh, I'd love to see Vilgora cores. They'd be very good, I think, in this situation. Anything from the Kalkia, I do have doubts. I think Patriarchs are good against all of that stuff, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe four for cores are actually a play. I don't know. Well, just to debuff them, stop them attacking as much. That's definitely yeah, one thing. Enough. There's three of them up here now. Oh, no. This could be the oppor opportunity for Hapsaya. Uh, no, yeah, not one quite. down. Two to go. The heroes. The three heroes of Ayer are finally going to get eliminated. It looks like, no, they're still alive. The Archon keeping them alive by sacrificing itself and speeding their retreat as well. They're going to fall back into the natural here. What else has he got? Still not Tectons here. One attack on the high ground would make such a difference. A lot of Zealots to help, though. Yeah, I don't know. We need to see better production here. These are still unpowered back at home. Oh, my God. That's critical, actually. If two more Patriots are out here, we'd hold this. But since he hasn't even started to repower those, even if he cleans this army, Hapsay is in a really bad position. It looks like he will not clean this army. I think he's about to die, man. Out of total, finally converting his huge advantage earlier on into a win. Yeah, Hapsay, where is it? He's not repowering it. None of the, nothing back here was ever remade. The Scribe's now going to see if they can make a desperate <laughs> last the stand. Patriarch buff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nexus I don't goes know down how again, though. Are, man. Yeah, down to one base. Well, okay, I guess he has that one, right? Here come the Vildor, Here's the Vildor course, just like you were yeah. saying. Really good unit here because not only will the Carapace form really deny the Patriarchs, once they die, the Rilla Royal will intercept the shots pretty well as well and stop them getting a splash on that back line of Hydralisks. And you can see them just powering through. They're really good at busting defensive lines like that. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, so a great choice from AOT. Uh, I'm glad that he didn't go for a bunch of Calculus because that's one of the few ways that Hapsaya might have still won. <laughs> for a second there, he was making 25 bleh, Hydralisks GG. and Hapsaya is going to GG out. That will be AOT getting us to a game five, man. Oh the Purgatory God, is up next. Could he take it? Could he actually take it? I can't believe it. Well, once again, no Gladius, right? Does Upsaya just at this point go like, all right, damn it, I'll make the goddamn Gladius and win the game. <laughs> <laughs> that is play. We'll see, we'll see. We are going into our final game of quarterfinal number three. Art of Turtle stands to make the upset happen, but Hapsaya, he's got one last chance to make it so. It's Art of Turtle in the bottom right against Hapsaya in the top left. Now, this may be a good map for Zerg, but it might be a better map for Gladius, you know? They're a race unto themselves Aha. sometimes. Because they could sneak in the edge there and harass. Um, and the ramps obviously aren't as helpful as air units, but of course the Grand Army must support. We'll see what happens here. It's a pretty good map for actually pressuring the early natural as well, I think. Mm. Because you can't rely on that ramp until you're actually out there with an army. Will he open the same? We'll have to wait and see. Pylon started by the ramp. Fairly solid, fairly standard. AOT do doing a great job to bring us to game five. This could be a reverse sweep, remember, if it ends up happening that way. Oh, it would be too, wouldn't it? Yep. That'd be huge. Absolutely. First two games going Hapsaya's way very unceremoniously, thanks to the Gladius. It's actually going to be a lattice opener, so Hapsaya not going to be doing the same thing that he did in games one and two. 
nor is he going to be doing the same thing that he did in his two losses in the series. So what does mm. AOT have as a response? Hatch by the ramp. This does not wall this off, so he can still stream units there, although it does make a little bit of a funnel. Sometimes you do want to wall against Protoss. Sometimes you, it is a consideration later on. You don't want to block yourself up, so it's a bit yeah. tough. I do like the idea from Hosea, um, whether it's the Vassal Harass or he's going to go for that like Vassal Idol frontline strategy. Mm -hmm. If he's noticed that AOT is staying on cause for a really long time, if you build up a high concentration of Vassals, support them with a few Idols, it can really dominate causal lists. Okay, just go and get your as well. Just Vassal first, I think, to scout is what we're going to see. That's what I expect the reason is going for the Lattice so fast. Well, the pylon will be heckled by the worker. Nothing else to report. It is a lattice into gate. And yeah, it will be a first vassal. And, you know, he can make it across the map and, you know, heckle some workers. That's probably about it, though. <laughs> He's going to heckle that worker. Oh, or is he? Mm. Oh, I'm saying already knows this game. He already knows. Well, the worker shenanigans continue. Well, this stops any harassment going down at home. Buys him time to get those quads out. So, I mean, it's probably worth uh, just one draw left's life. The scribe yep. gets it. Got to give the credit to the boy. Well, the uh, yeah, as you're mentioning, it does actually stop the harassment to go across. So that's actually really good. I mean, means that you won't skip a beat in terms of the um, any sort of mining. He's going for fast gas in reaction to this. So we'll see what his play is. Yeah, it's interesting, by the way. Hapsaya, uh, that pylon, by the way, is just like making me like water at the mouth to send some zephs in there because it's so exposed like depower him again come on <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> that has right been the front aot has actually been a rare player that has actually gone for that and look at this preemptively borrowing his quads very nice gotta oh. bait them in oh, i would have loved if he pulled that injured worker and bait them in a little more because that's yeah. not gonna get any kills but he's gonna ward it off with no losses yep that's a victory unto itself three vassals now zealot idol it will be pure idol for now if a second gateway coming mm. Yeah, Zealot and Idol it seems like a pretty good comp against Quasilis in particular. Uh, it's going to be really rough. And even what do you do against that? Zephyr Core, I feel like, is still going to get melted by the Idols before they can even get yeah. through the Zealot Shields. So I feel like the only recourse here really is Static Defense for now. Uh, and like I was saying, I really want to see AOT adapt. If you go straight for that low ground again, I feel like Hapsaya is prepared well to strike. Do Patriarchs not proc off their own shots? I don't know. Pinogo, can you answer that? Uh, I do not believe that they... Well, I mean, it was reported. I couldn't reproduce it, and I didn't look into it any deeper. So, if it is a bug... Oh, so they're uh, meant to, but they just don't? Um, maybe. Maybe? You don't know? Come on, man. You you have the final say. Are they meant to, or aren't they? Well, look at that. Hatching base. I mm, like it. I okay. like it. I'm liking this a lot. Just throw down the Hydra now, and I think uh, AOT's looking pretty good. I mean, it doesn't give it an advantage or anything, but I just think, ooh, okay. I don't like it, man. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I knew it was coming. Yeah. Yeah, people are probably getting sick of me by now, telling people they don't have enough workers, they need to stop going to Afrikaos. They always say the same things every game, man. What an Afrikaos is going to do here? What problem do they solve? They can't harass very well as long as an idol is home. Now, if an idol is not home, then you never know. But against the army, they're going to be pretty bad. For Afrikaos, you know, in theory, they're good against the idols themselves, but they're not going to do that well against the zealots in particular either. He's definitely going Navs, man. Look at that gas bank. But I think it's going to be a disaster unless he has a really cool split or he gets the counterattack. Yeah, he's really expecting its mass vassal. He's not expecting the idols. And I'm not really sure why he wouldn't expect that. Five pairs of Nats. That will be ten of them. You know, they can do well, some Well, you never know. If we get in some big fight where Kozlis are all over the place and the Nefrikors come in in a spread out manner, they do have good DPS. You can't deny yep. that. Yeah, We'll see what happens here. The problem uh, is I don't think they can get through the, like, the Zealot stack here. I mean, Hapsaya might just be able to A-move this up. No natural ooh, coming from either player, oh but man. AOT, he's the one that needs it more. There goes he the worker. let it go down, honestly. He's on borrow and hold that ramp. He can't let him come up here. Is Hapsaya even going to try it? He is going to try it. No defenses. He's to get his army in position. Nothing happening. Or is he... Uh-oh. All right, here we go. He's going to concede the first hatch, I think. He's thinking about diving in, but remember, there's four whoa. idols here. They will absolutely shatter the AOE stack. For the area. something of a spread. They're starting to concentrate again. He's going after the idols specifically. I think he realizes how dangerous they are, but the zealots themselves are doing a lot here. It looks like he might hold it though. That's a lot of quasilis, but the zealots tank you so much. Yeah, I feel like Man, the zealots could have stayed there for a little bit there as well. But 10 more uh, quasis do hatch in the meanwhile. Nats are finally dealt with. That's a big gas investment. And look at the zealots the just tanking so, so much, man. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of quads, though. Yes, they tank, but their DPS is obviously not much. So even though it takes a lot of shots to kill them, the one idol can't really compete with that many quads. I think AOT's held, but he did lose a Hatcherosk. 
And he still doesn't have Hydra Tech. So he's not out of the woods yet. Nope, not at all. Yeah, because if you look at this, I think you can say that Hapsaya's production is actually superior, because even if you're pumping quads, I think the units is better. But once he gets his third Hatchrosk up again, he's pretty pretty well off, and his army for now is better. So as long as he can uh, hold off until those Hatchrosks are back established and or he gets Hydra, I think he's doing fine here. And it looks like Hapsaya, yeah, he has, has to retreat. I don't think he has quite enough to contest again. All right, well. A lot of Quasilisk. A lot more Dang. Quasis coming. All right, if... Uh, Okay, I was going to say, I think I'm saying he needs to throw down a tech or an expansion, but he's going to go for the expansion here. Just do Gladius, man. Everyone wants to see it. It's worked so far. I want to see it again. Well, there's the Nexus coming on down for Hapsaya. And there are 25 Quasilisks burrowed. Oh, dude, he has no embassy, does he? That's right. Oh. Well, it looks like Hapsaya is going to play it safe for now, though. But if he does come across an attack, that could be so deadly. Even if he just gets the idols right away and then has a sort of scrappy fight with the zealots, it'd be pretty good with that many puzzles on the field. Yeah, very interesting here. We do have that Nexus coming along, but AOT getting up to four hatch and the Hydrath halfway done. It's really hard to call. I think Upsay is ahead in terms of tempo and stuff, but. It's, well, it's, it's hard to Zerg say. Zerg will that, shoot like, up in workers, though. Yeah. Hapsaya, the, this is the problem. Hapsaya needs to put just a little more pressure on. It's also very risky for him to do so. And if he loses this army, then Zerg is in great shape. Now, it is a very scary army for Quasilisks. I think Lava are being saved. A bunch of Hydralisks are going to start, but are they going to be in time? Look how much money he has, man. If he makes like 10 Hydralisks, he's looking good. Eight. Okay, that's what he needs to do. But is the Protoss army going to give him time? If he comes and smashes all the Quasilisks while the Hydralisks are out, it could be a win for Hapsaya putting him through the next stage. He immediately realizes the Protoss unit is there. AOT going to retreat a little bit. Boy, he's going to lose so many for the Hydralis here, though. I think he just needs to retreat off the ramp. Yeah, I think he needs to pull these workers as well because they are for sure going to die. Only one Hydra hatching down here. The rest of them coming up from that high ground. They will try to bust down the Zealots. They're great for armor piercing, but is it going to be enough right now? It doesn't no quite way. look like it. If that Vassal dies, the rest of this force is going to charge up, and it might not even be necessary. Yeah, I think AOT's dead, man. I think Upsay has done it. Three to two. Oh man, yeah, on top of the production, the rally yeah. point's not reset, so those units are not going to start attacking immediately. And the den, the denizens of the Zerg, they are not going <laughs> to be victorious at this point. The Hydra then will be brought down, if it's even necessary at this point, just taking down the workers and AOT realizing his chances at the upset have been denied. GG's. GG's. And there he goes, 3-2 to two for Hubsay. He makes it through the next stage. I wonder if those quads were unburrowed, it might have been better, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, but either way, Hapsaya regroups, comes in for the killing blow after a pretty threatening first attack as well. Yeah, listen, Hapsaya definitely set the pace of all of those games, and despite losing the uh, two in a row, sort of in the midsection there, uh, his his early attacks were deadly. And I, I like the idea of going the, the vassal push early, and then it really overworked, I feel like. If uh, if AOT had a little bit more awareness of what the transition was behind that, he probably wouldn't have gone the Nats. Or if he did, he would have maybe used them a little bit differently. Did have the awareness that the idols were going to splash in, but that is a pretty solid opening round there. And a good showing for him. Maybe the uh, only Zerg so far to, to threaten Protoss in a little bit of uh, like recent history so far in the tournament. Obviously, there were none in your group, Nebleim, and... Uh, for Taco Cake, he struggled a lot more in his matchup. So getting pretty close, but not quite enough. Well, AOT with a pretty convincing showing, but it sort of reinforced what I was saying where he doesn't play for the deep long games. So yes. maybe still a little bit predictable in his aggression, but as you've seen, it can work. He's going to go down to the lower bracket. Um, do the matchups line up as per the uh, groups here, by the way, in the lower bracket? Yeah, for now. The bracket swap only happens at the, uh, the semifinals if it if it's necessary. So Right. So it'll be Newt versus... Um, Taco. And Taco. AOT and then... versus whoever loses our next quarterfinal. Yes. Okay. All right. I mean, I got. I, I don't know. AOT's looking strong. So I feel like he could take Shambler or Rannikin potentially. So he's still in this for sure. And I think it was a pretty good showing. Almost taking that. I mean, even that last game definitely could have taken it. That is true. That is true. It was he was looking like he might have been able to hold, but Hapsaya had the right timing to deal with the Hydras. At the very least, the Hydras would have extended play. But, you know, catching him twice with no static defense definitely helps Hapsaya get across the oldest, perhaps the goldest, as he jumps on through <laughs> to that second upper. Would be his first win. Would be his first win. That's right. Yeah, in uh, previous way, uh, efforts, he managed to make it to, I believe he made it to the um, 
the upper final in the in Ascension Seven. He he made it past uh, Hamster in a five game set, uh, and or maybe that was even a three zero. I can't remember. But it was at some point he made it past Hamster in the upper bracket and then fell to him in the lower. Um, so I think it was know, a three zero. Yeah. Yeah. Going into that, you know, that, that's that's uh, not exactly ancient history, but still history. But to see him back in the upper semis, it's a good start for the man. And he, he told you in the interview after uh, after Group D concluded, he said, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm going to make it to the finals. Of course. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I guess, you know, if I make it past Hamster, I'm ready to take him on. We'll see what happens. Pepsi is putting it earlier, by the way, I think a very good point. And I, because I was saying that AOT needed to adapt, right? That uh, clearly his like quasi openings are putting him in disadvantage. But I'm saying making the point that it is very hard to adapt in the middle of a series because you have what you've practiced and you need to sort of stick to that because that's what you can execute well. Um, and we saw, you know, he, he wasn't quite able to modify what he was doing. I'm saying took enough advantage of that to eke out the win. Yeah, that's correct. So I think we can pretty comfortably say that uh, looking at it as it currently stands. Hapsea favored, but uh, is he going to be able to make it past whoever wins this fourth quarter final? It will be a mirror matchup, guaranteed Protoss in that second upper semifinal. So, uh, it, you know, whoever wins quarterfinal number four will go from PvP to PvP. And, uh, you know, that's obviously a little, uh, you know, there's a lot of Protoss here. There's three out of four of our upper semifinalists will be Protoss. You're the only one not being Protoss, Nebulime. I don't know why you won't get with the program already, but, you know. I mean, I, we were talking in chat before and I'm considering it because Shambler's saying he just won't play Zerg because he doesn't want to play ZVZ. And I'm like, well, what if I play Protoss then? Will you play Zerg in the next Ascension mm. or Acropolis? Uh, and then I don't know if Hapsay was even talking to me, but he said he'd switch to T. So I'm thinking like, ah, oh, should I do it? I'll switch to Protoss instead. So everyone will sort of rotate around the races again. Yeah, that's funny. I mean, listen, I feel like the, the eventual sort of vision of the future of... Uh, of like the RTS as we're trying to make it cultivated is our own games are going to have like eventually we're going to have a game with like 20 races right so the idea of yeah. only having one main race is almost going to be seen as a little antiquated there but uh, you know we'll see if that's even possible we might be you know reaching the limits of how you know uh, specialized and, and how like learned and, and how good a certain player could be like maybe the ceiling of somebody who tries to play multiple races is always going to be lower than the one who tries to play one I, I'm agnostic on that point but i feel like it's probably you know there's a chance that it's true at the very least so uh possibility you have to play against 20 races though how are you gonna remember <laughs> all that well exactly it's a big the same way you remember 50 units per race in cosmonarchy man you gotta learn them all so it's uh is it gonna be 20 races with less than 50 units then uh maybe maybe there'll be more we'll, we'll see because hmm. we were more? we were originally planning 100 units so we're not sure if we can get up to that but Oh my god. You can imagine the numbers getting pretty crazy. I think maybe that's overshooting in terms of what's actually possible. But anyway, we'll get there eventually, right? And so, you know, having the idea that you have the, um, you can sort of like, I mean, Hapsaya said this about fighting games and how if, they, if a, uh, there's like, I say, a best of five or whatever, and then whoever loses the first match, they can choose to change their character in a fighting game. And that would be like changing your race, but only if you lost the first match. Um, and that, that could be kind of interesting, right? It's like, uh, you, you know, you set up your map, you're, you might even set up your map veto in such a way that you like leave it open for there to be like a Terran map. And even though you're playing a Zerg in this one, you switch back to Terran after losing the first or That's something cool. like that. Right. So it could be yeah. interesting. Um, but I, I you know, we're, we have a lot of ideas that we can explore for sure. So uh, I, I like it, man. I, I like how uh, that that last one went. I feel like we got to see some nice back and forth, especially the derelict game looked pretty nice. So. Well, look at the uh, matches we have so far. 3-0, 3-1, 3-2. Ooh. This one, obviously, is going to be a draw in the fifth game. <laughs> I was thinking, are you are you setting it up so that it starts to reverse like mirror? And so it's actually 2-3. Oh, and General Anakin yeah, yeah. clutches it out in a five-game set. Ooh, could he indeed? Could he indeed? You know, it's a, it's a tough sell. It's a tough idea. Like, I don't know if it's possible, but I, I would love to believe. In fact, I guess we can probably just head on down to... Uh, to do well, that do it alone because i'm going to be right back for one minute oh maybe we'll take a, a short break then in that case because i also have to refill on water and stuff we've been going for the the first three quarterfinals back to back so Nebulime, thank you for joining me of course we will have a little bit more time with you to cast this fourth quarter final and uh, i'm excited about that one protoss versus protoss and i am expecting that the uh last quarterfinal here will deliver maybe not as explosively as that last one but uh, who knows, right? Who knows? So 
And as I set up our stream overlay here, remember, we have got this last best of five, and then we close out the show for today. We got to decide who faces Hepsea in the upper semifinal and who moves on to face, I guess it would be, yeah, Art of Turtle in the lower bracket for elimination potential uh, and whose saga will continue. I am excited to see it happen, and I hope that you are too. And with that, we shall return.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back. It is Neb Lime and I to cast the final quarterfinal. You saw it on your screens a moment ago, and you see it here now. It's the Shambler against General Anakin. And I think we can start by talking about the favorite and the higher seed, the Shambler. You yeah, don't think it's weird like that, how it's like every every match is final slapped on it, even though it's not the final one. But yes, <laughs> Shambler versus Anakin. And up in my strange thoughts, Anakin had to fight his way to for nail into the battlements, but he pulled off the wins and managed to get his way into throne room here. This is his first throne room showing, but uh, that is certainly not the case for Shambler. That's right. Yeah, Shambler has been in every single playoffs. I don't know if you really want to go all the way back and start counting like Ascension 1 and 2 and stuff. They were uh, very different back then, a much smaller player base. I don't even know if we had double digit competitive players, in fact. Um, you know, technically the first one was only six players, actually. Well, it was only had two groups. And then we slowly started building them up over time. But Shambler won the, uh, he was in the finals of the first two. Uh, he won the second one. And that was over Mystery Meat uh, when he was playing as Zerg. He switched to Protoss. He gets to the, uh, no, I guess he didn't. I can't remember which one you came in, Nebulon, but you stopped him as soon as you started. Number five, up. I came in. in You've confirmed first... that because I thought for sure it was three, but you're, you're probably right. But see, I, think... I didn't get out of the groups. I just uh, lost to Shambler, I think it was, in fact, and like beat Benno. Mm. Uh, but then I didn't go much further than that. Okay, okay. And then six. Or maybe that was six, actually. No, no. No, no, I remember because I lost. Six, you were in the I finals lost to like... as, uh, yes, as exactly. Terran against Mystery yes. Beat. Five, you That's were right. in. Wait, no. Is that even correct? Oh, no. <laughs> Five, you were in the Just finals as uh, Terran against Mystery Meets Protoss. Six, you actually got uh, slapped by Hamster, if you remember. He was the guy who made it up to the... Yes, that's right. That's right. So maybe yeah. it was four that I started. Well, I'm going to find you in, like number one here hold on well was it the case that like i started five and because there was a gap between the groups and the playoffs i had time to actually get good enough to make it to finals because i didn't think so anyway the point is shambler's been yeah, around for a long about time shambler. why are we talking about me i don't know shambler because you've been his nemesis me. nimblime you've stopped him from making yeah. it to the finals and he's here trying to do that as protoss again so kind of crazy yeah well I uh, I can't seem to beat him any better than 3-1, all right? If we have to play again, I mean, I'm sorry, Shambler, but I don't think you're going to stop me. It's going to be a 3-1 again if we play again. But hey, again, we're not supposed to talk about me here. Let's talk about Shambler versus Anakin, right? Shambler obviously is, like, way favored here. Like, he is, like, you know, at least top four players. He's definitely got a chance to win the thing completely. Uh, so Anakin here, first timer. He didn't uh, easily, like, sail through battlements. He had a bit of a fight. So I think Shamba takes it 3-0, man. I don't think there's anything else to say. Shamba's a very aggressive player, very strong player. He's got solid micro, and he's very innovative when it comes to, like, deadly attacks he does in the early game. Um, I would say he's sometimes he's banking a lot in the late game, but that's just not what he's playing for, so it usually does not hinder him. So, man, I, I don't know what to say. Shambler's just going to shamble all over him. All right, well, let's see if you are correct. General Anakin, the man on your screen now, is indeed the uh, second placer out of Group D, going up against the Shambler here in our fourth and final quarterfinal. And his favorite unit being the Panoptus. That's a revelation. Shambler's, by the way, with Zoryus the left. He's not even being Zerg, so I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> yeah, I do like the Panoptus, but I, I, li I like all the units, man. I think I said that to you. So <laughs> you pick a favorite unit, I'm like, I like that. That's oh right. man, we're saying in chat. Sh Shambler's saying like I'm not his nemesis. Mystery meat is, but we got a jockey for that. We're both we're both just supplicants at the throne of mystery meat. Like no, fight me, fight me. Yeah, that's right. That's anyway, true. anyway, wow. back to General Anakin. Yeah, I'm impressed with his growth, man. He's kind of bust out onto the scene out of nowhere. When we're looking at the uh, gauntlet brackets, I think we both were sort of saying like, oh yeah, such and such will win. He didn't pay him much mind, but he stormed his way through, played in a couple of qualifiers, and he made it in. He made it in, and he got through his battlement group. That is no easy feat. Those battlement groups were tough, man. Yep, absolutely, no easy uh, moves there for our second seeders. So he ends up uh, winning against the Beaver Ninety Nine, a man he's played apparently hundreds of games of Cosmonarchy Monarchy against, which is always epic to uh, to hear. Love me some uh, hundreds of games of Cosmonarchy. Monarchy. Now, as we get into things, though, the question is, like you're saying, is it going to be a sweep? Is it going to be all she said and done? He's going to get cast down to the lower bracket and get BTFO'd. But I feel like he has a puncher's chance of at least getting a map. I mean, he's got some cheeky stuff, right? Like the the hype intro was uh, a pretty solid move where 
I even said, does he have another trick in him? You know, that's the that's the narrative behind this guy. He's got his mind tyrants, sure, but is he going to be able to do that, make that work against the Shambler, or does he have something else planned? Like, we got to see, we got to find out. So that's my question to you, Neblime. Are you really sure it's going to be a three zero stomp? Like, is that really the? Point? I am really sure, dude. Wow, okay. I would be amazed. Look, no offense to Jim Malenik, and like I said, he's he's had really good growth here. He's had a great run, but it's going to end here, man. Or at least he'll start descending here because he's got a lower bracket. I just don't see him getting past Shambler. I just don't. I can't imagine a game that he takes off Shambler. Well, all right. We are going to get into the pick of Axiom selected by General Anakin, as he was the lower seed. Are you ready to kick off quarterfinal number four? I'm ready. Let's fucking go. Ladies and gentlemen, the Shambler is in the bottom left of Axiom, and it's General Anakin in the top right. Alright, starting off on Axiom here, the best map. Yes, well, undoubtedly. It's certainly one that everybody is a fan of, except for you when you lose to Top Ramen on it, Nebulon. What's up with that? Well, hey, being a fan of a map and thinking it's good for your race are different things. Oh, okay. Titanforge is pretty great for Zerg, in my opinion, but I don't like it. So, same thing about Sideshow, actually. I was going to bring that up as well, but you took the words yeah. right out of my mouth. So, I'll pick it every time, but uh, I would rather play a balanced game, you know, if, I, if I'm if i forced to, I guess. That's a weird way to say it. I would rather be forced into a fair map, <laughs> but I will play to win. Uh, now, we should talk about the picks and the bans sure, before yeah. this game gets too intense, this PvP game here. So Shambler banned Fata Morgana. Once again, this, I'm not even going to talk about the map anymore. I'm just going to comment on how it gets bullied. It gets banned every time. Um, then uh, Anakin banning Germination uh, and Purgatory banned by Shambler. So Anakin picked Axiom to start, which is a solid choice. Now, interesting, by the way, that uh, uh, both Germination and Purgatory got banned by the different players. Because they're sort of similar in my mind where you have your bases you can take protected by ramps. So I sort of uh, think of them the same. Shambler referring to Fata Morgana with Fat Morgan. See what I mean about it getting bullied? I know, yeah, it's crazy. Hey, look at this, General Anakin going for a lattice behind his gateway. Now, this is something that Hapsaya and Three Crow both showed, and I think Three Crow learned it from Hapsaya. That was the innovation for Protoss versus Protoss, which you're going to need mm. to figure out in this matchup. If you're Protoss, which there's yeah. a 50% chance you are if you're in this tournament, that means that your opponent has a pretty high chance of being Protoss as well, so... Well, there is a dynamic here I'd like to talk about where um, even if you know your build is not necessarily meta or that your opponent knows you're going to do it and or counter it, if you're confident in your execution, you're actually better off sticking with it because you know you practice and you can do it very well. This came up in me versus Taco Cake. I knew that he knew I was going to <laughs> to go seven pool every game. Ah. And I knew he was sort of going to get a little bit of an edge with the later pool timing or whatever. But I thought, well, I've played so many games with seven pool. I know all the different like sort of transitions depending on what my opponent did. So I'm just going to stick with it. And, you know, it worked out pretty well for me. So I think it's the same thing here. Shambler is probably aware of those games where Hapsai showed idols are pretty good. He's probably still just thinking, well, okay, I'm just going to stick with what I know. And I'm going to dominate here. But the signature Hierophant from Anakin, who well, doesn't want to take too much shield damage. Ah, uh, well, when you've got five stacks of that buff, it slows True. the attack rate. You can't do hardly a thing. Legionnaire's not going to be able to make it happen. Yeah, purified indeed. Ascended. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there you go. His soul was cleansed That's as right. it was sent on its great journey. The idol's starting to come out, and you know, so far, Shamble playing right into Anakin's hand here with the Legionnaires coming out. Uh, yeah, no, that's right. But the Legionnaires, if they get a good mass and it's only very few enemy units, they will pounce on them completely. So uh, Anakin needs to be careful to build up a good number here. Picking off that perf first one was absolutely crucial, honestly. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely the case. Want to manage that well, count? I mean, when your when your enemy is looking for critical mass of anything, and you don't have the tools to just sort of send them packing early. I mean, we're talking about seven, make it eight legionnaires. Oh my god, is he going to go for it? I think he's just going to come and attack the ramp, probably. I mean, I don't know if his second idol makes it out. Although it's not in construction, he's going to go for the attack. The higher event getting mm. in, but it's going to die real fast here. Oh, I say that actually, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. uh, it will end up going run. down. I feel like General Anakin definitely could have microed that one a little bit better. Second vassal. Well, you don't. 
Drain. You don't want the Hierophant to be alive, but it wasn't a great trade for Shambler. If you get the Hierophant in the back, a Draken and died, I think you're actually much happier about this. Well, look at this. Picking off an isolated Legionnaire. He knows Shambler's on the back foot. He's going to come out and try and pressure. He needs to be careful. He needs to reinforce a little bit. Well, the Draken and timing for Whoa. Shambler is looking pretty good because the Vassals are about to swoop in, but instead they end up syncing up with the rest of the crew. Zealot returning to the ramp to see what it can do to stop its heretic brethren from charging forward. And look at that! <laughs> He's even confused them, told them about, uh, you know, hey, that guy that you're following is a liar. Uh, oh, well, now oh, the this is huge, though. That. Yeah. Yeah, you got to bait them in the middle and then drill on them. But uh, General Anakin instead sort of splitting up his workers area. So Shambler taking a pretty big worker lead right now. He was already uh, down two, and now he's down by four more. A lot of casualties yeah. there, and some of them not even mining. Yeah, Anakin needs to come across immediately and counterattack. I think that's the only way he can stay in here. Because uh, this... Oh, he's going to get another one. Yikes. Oh. Yeah, his unit's just in disarray. He might even pick a sixth. There it is. Mm. A lot of extra worker Maybe. damage. General Anakin being slapped around right now. And I think I observed this in the gauntlet matches, actually. Anakin's units not always on hotkeys when they need to be, I think. Uh, I'm really suffering for it. They're not able to command them to go where they need to go. I mean, yeah, look at these vassals around the map. What are they doing? They're just hanging out. Um, like I was saying, I think Anakin needs to attack immediately here to maintain any kind of equality. Uh, he has a better army. He has a way better army, honestly. Uh, but he needs to get in there and use it. The vassals will be very good at, like, focus firing in addition to the dragon that's just fighting on the front line. But he needs to strike of everything. He needs to strike now. He's moving crowd on the map, but he seems to have hesitated. His he's, ground army has stopped. Yeah, and his, uh, the other units that he's got as well, he's got a Zealot and an Idol at home that are not joining the fight right now. The Zealot oh, in okay, particular... he catches them, though. Yeah. Oh, man, if he still had that Hierophant, that'd be huge. It would be. It was not reinvested in. For Shambler. Yeah. Um, but the Vassal's hanging around. They are going to come in now. This is what I was talking about. They're good at kind of, like chasing down and getting some extra damage here. Ooh, better be careful, uh, Yeah, I don't want to walk into that valley there unless you're going to use the Vassal's for the speed boost. There we go. Trying to collapse in on it, but now the gateway count definitely higher for Shambler. Focus firing here, favoring him as well. A little bit of micro back, but where's that Ooh, Zealot? Nice. Where's the Idol? He's completely forgotten about this Vassal yeah. as well. Yeah, you're right, he has units at home. I did think he had more than this. Uh, very unfortunately, Anakin just left uh, a couple of really key units here. The Idol, I guess, not very key, but the Zealot would have done work. Yeah, that's right, his rally's not set up either. Yeah, the Vassal's still getting their damage in, though. They did pretty good help helping out this fight. Looks like they're not going to quite... Oh, well, okay, they do get it. Then they have to run away. Okay, well, army-wise, it was a fairly even trade, but look at the work account. Anakin could not handle an even trade there. He needed a win. And uh, now he's back at home making zealots while Shambles up on his two bases. Shambles just making the gateways. Like I was saying, why do anything fancy if you're confident in your execution? He's just pumping out those Dracodons. Yeah, a lot of money in the bank for General Anakin. Couldn't spend it on only three gates. He'll drop a Nexus now, but he's very much behind the eight ball. No embassy in sight to catch up in worker count either. All right, well, Hierophant being remade. Uh, two higher fans, okay. It's pretty good against the Dracodins, but with the Zealot Swarms coming in, I'm not so sure. I mean, I guess, I guess you know, a Dracodin is good versus a Zealot, but I feel like in longer scale, they're not going to spread the device very well. It'll probably get stacked on a single Zealot and the rest will close. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, we will. Idol's still a potential advantage. Wardens as well here to block any Vassal harassment, since uh, Shambler is aware of that. I wonder, is Dracodin Manifold, like, more efficient than just pure Dracodin, because you have sort of two layers, mm -hmm. and so you, the range would be less of an issue, I wonder. It's staggered a little bit, yeah, here. but uh, hey, General Anakin needs to move forward with his army as one unit. Now the higher fence oh. out to try to catch him. This will start to stack up very, very positively for him. Good spread. I guess spread. that's synergy, yeah. yeah. Even spreads the debuffs. All right, never mind what I was saying. Anakin always showing us how good he is with those higher fence, man. Nice targeting onto this one as well. Yeah. Oh, he needs to get really one last hit. Fight. Zealot's blocking the higher fence, not able to get. There we go, hits the debuff. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. How many dragons did he just lose? And he didn't kill a single opposing one, did he? I think got one at the end, but maybe not. Oh, okay. That was... Might have been it. The Vassal's gonna peer on in, see what's happening. There are Wardens up, so not gonna be able to do any damage there. But hey, the fight is back on. Can he break in? He can't go up that ramp. He needs to go around. Yep, thinking With about it. With four Zealots. Revealing this is still himself. very possible for Anakin, yeah? Well, Shambler is distracted by that heckling, which is not of much consequence, but is it? Because now Shambler is isolated with his Draken and not able to get into the reinforcement point. He's got a couple of his own Zealots that might be able to make something happen, bringing back in that estranged Draken, going to go dropping down to seven, but now he can start to pop these Hierophants. Yeah, I think uh, he does hold them off again. And once again, Anakin, once he gets a Shambler's end of the map, instead of crushing him, he's just trading. Now, he did get his own Nexus up, but the worker count doesn't lie, man. Yep. Uh, Shambler already got that Ardent. I assume he's going to go for an Architect here, but honestly, I think an a Cantor would be better. I guess I shouldn't assume he's going to do the wrong thing. Go on, go on, Shambler, make that a Cantor. I want to see it. 
Let's see what happens. Let's Architect will give you a little bit more safety when you're just trying to attack from afar, but the Acantor will definitely splash onto those Zealots and clear the deck nice and early. Uh, Hierophant's not robotic, right? There's like a guy in there, right? Yeah, yeah, just like the uh, Dracodon. Yeah, yeah, I, I knew the Dracodon was. Yeah. I was running him. Shambler's Zealots of his own will do huge work here, actually. And the Hierophant gonna go down! That's yeah. the key unit he didn't want to lose there. But he has enough Dracodons to hold off, I think. Yeah, yeah, That's he can definitely step out here and just kill off General Anakin, or sorry, Shambler's forces. But there are some more Dracodons that were streaming across the map. They're gonna have to regroup. Zealots coming sure in behind. You sure we're playing Brood War, man? Dragoon versus Dragoon. He's gonna make a Reaver soon. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a fifth gate now coming up from Shambler. And there will he be does an make an architect. I knew it. Uh, I don't really like it so much until the armies are a little bigger, but I think in this case, you know, Anakin's probably behind enough. It will overwhelm. Uh, it's just if he still has... If, if Anakin takes a fight, for example, uh, it's easy to pick off that architect. Whereas the Acanter, I feel like, will just do such insane damage if you try to pounce in on it. Um, it might... Well, then again, maybe drag it at a long enough range. I don't know. Just my random theories here on PvP as a Zerg player. Yeah, could be the case, right? 13 Dracodons now up for Shambler. He's thinking about taking his third and will put it down. It's actually at the same time as General Anakin's, but again, the worker count, he's down by almost 20. Who needs workers, dude? He has, like, the same army count and the same, like, base count with less workers. Yeah. He just puts it more in micro. And, I mean, so far, it, so far, this game is not uh, not sort of proving the theory that macro is more important. So far, it's sort of even. I but think when the architect the joins fight. the fight, that's going to be a really big difference, though. Mm, I guess that's the one advantage Shamba really has is the tech, right? Yeah. All right, here we go. Well, Let's if these zealots and hierophants can descend upon the enemy force, he can start to maybe pincer them. That's a nice little body block from the one zealot that Chamberlain does have. But otherwise, his army composition isn't much of a composition whatsoever. And that's where the zealot hierophant dracon and combo is going to be good enough to start heckling this oh force. God. As soon as Shambler decides to turn on him, though, he can kill that frontline hierophant. Nice little secondary salvo. But has he gone a little bit too far? Trying to pick off the hierophant. And does so, now falling back away well, from the Zealot. Has, he does still have the Dracodon count, right? Zealot's coming out again for Anakin, but with no Hierophant, I think Shambler can just kite them out. Well, let's see. Gonna get more hits, gonna take out another enemy Dracodon. It looks like we switched targets, but still he's gonna get two here. Looks like a pretty even fight once again. Yeah, the Zealot's not joining the fight until it's a little bit too late, but remember the gateway count superior for Shambler, and his Architect will soon be across the map. Oh man, it's coming. Here it comes. It's four Zealots at a time for General Anakin, but his Strider count has been reduced very heavily, and he doesn't have any more Hierophants coming. Mm, if only he built some kind of static defense, the third game could go on, but he has not been able to do that. His bank going up huge right now. Finally, the macro advantage coming in for Shambler. I can't even see the Architect, but I think it's doing something back there. Oh, there yeah. There you go. Um, and it looks like he's going to overwhelm him. GG. General Anakin GG. conceding the first match, and indeed, Shambler will take it. I don't know if that right, was a little bit of uh, nerves or what, but the Legionnaire run by did a lot more damage than it really should have. Mm. Well, like I said, I don't think Anakin is prepared to manage his units like that. Um, I think a lot of these sort of mechanical practices are not solidified there. Um, and it really showed took a lot of damage there. But that said, it was not a bad showing by Anakin at all. He showed his strength in these early game scrappy fights. I guess other than when his own base is getting attacked. Yeah, that was pretty bad. But <laughs> right. when he's fighting yeah. army versus army, he's very strong. But Shambler, with the priorities, right? He knows it's more important at the end of the day mm -hmm. to keep making those workers, keep spending your money, than kill like one more unit in the fight. And so it just steadily overwhelmed him. And I expect that this series is going to look like that in general. Well, let's find out. It's going to be Derelict 2, the selection by General Anakin. Let's get into it. It's going to be none other than the Shambler in the bottom left. General Three, Anakin two. in the top right. R. It's okay. What did they do? What I don't did know. They do wrong? Well, this replay has some size to it by the file size, so it's not like uh, one of those like 40 kilobyte replays you get when somebody just leaves at the beginning. So I think we're all set. All right. Just some funny chat. They had to type, you know, they had to get some typing in. Someone in chat tell us why they were took him out of region. I'm guessing maybe uh, General Anakin was hosting and Shambler didn't type ready or something, and then or typed the sec. I don't know. That's just my guess. I, I didn't get any message about that. So, but Shambler was here. Okay. Oh yeah, Beaver says it right now he started the game without asking if Sham was ready. So all good in the hood. I wonder if Beaver was like on call or like you know was he spectating this. No, he's mm. not in the OBS, so. Yeah, he's a bit weird. <laughs> Somehow he knows this. Yeah, maybe he was watching one of their streams, actually. Yeah, I bet. Um, I don't I don't know if either of these guys like to stream often. I haven't seen it, actually, but yeah, I'm not really surprised. Who doesn't want to watch the hype, uh, you know, quarterfinals match? Now, 
Gateway's coming down for both. That's right. We're we gonna see the lattice again. I think it served reasonably well last game. Yeah, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Second gate for General Anakin, so very similar situation for him. He's gonna bank some Vespian. Second gate for Shambler as well. So, okay, we're not going to be doing the lattice opener from General Anakin, which does mean that Shambler can get a little bit more early aggro out from his uh, Legionnaires, if that's what he wants to go. And he will be starting one behind all of this worker harass. Well, that definitely led him into a big advantage last game, but uh, I don't think Shambler necessarily needs to do that to win. Um, what, what I think the Legionnaires are really good at, obviously they go fast, they can run by and get those workers pretty well, but I think what they're really good at is... Uh, when your army is superior, absolutely forcing a fight and dominating. You know, all of that worker harassment actually did slow the first Hierophant by quite a uh, considerable amount because it was the gas harvesters being heckled. So Shambler won't be moving across with his Legionnaire, but that's all right. Zealot behind it. Well, it is inevitable. It's just a matter of when, right? How many he wants. Mm -hmm. I need some kind of like pithy saying here about like Harakans and about Legionnaires. They can attack. It's just a matter of how many you need. Well, it, the, yeah, the attack is going to come no matter what. It's just a question of... Yes. Yeah, yeah. What number? <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. Uh, okay, so it is the Zealots coming out, by the way, which uh, is sort of a counter to Legionnaires, but they're sort of not. Uh, I think it's very positional. Yeah. Them. Yes, exactly. If you have a big fight and you have, like, a set front line and back line, I think the Zealots are going to do well, but in small scale, they're absolutely not because you'll just have more Legionnaires and they will sort of kill them one by one, usually. Uh, and the Zealots will sort of like run around trying to help and too slow, too low DPS to really do much, but we'll see. We'll see how this works out. Ecclesiastes, I think, a very bad choice here because if Legionnaires want to, they will easily take it out. Hierophant's going to have a hard time, but it can potentially kite without getting touched. Yeah, I mean, you need to have a, a strong Strider count so that you can effectively like one-shot the Legionnaire count, basically, mm. or like really heavily manage it. Or you need to have better front lines so that you can block them from even attacking onto the oh, Ecclesiast. So that oh, Strider's actually kind of good there. Yeah, a little bit yeah, of body block. The yeah, as soon as it gets, just right-clicks them immediately. I don't know. Honestly, a bit of miss micro from Anakin here. He should have tried to keep that... Uh... Ooh. Oh my god, what? Okay, Ten I was going to say... He he should have tried to keep the Hierophant from getting touched so it couldn't get pounced on, but uh, it, it survived, so pretty good for Anakin, actually. The Ecclesia's not that expensive, was kind of just a bait there, really. Yeah, in a way, and he's got triple Dracodin coming from his three gates. Now, Shambler Ooh. will realize he went for the expansion, so he needs to get out across the map with his army. And the Hierophant is frontlining, so what's General Anakin going to do? Oh, the Zealot catching it on the first hit. That's going to start down, to Mr. make... Executor. Oh, look at this. The Legionnaires <laughs> oh. are trying to chase him, but they're not quite fast enough. Oh, well, unfortunately, that's going to be enough. Oh, no, it's not! Hierophant continuing to kite. Doesn't get any hits on, so the Legionnaires are going to be able to escape now. But, I mean, the Dracodins are going to be more than enough to mop that up. So now all Shambler can do is try to buy for time. He's got two gateway production, his one Dracodin. If this Hierophant tickles it, yeah, it's going to tag it with a debuff, but the rest of the army is not with it. Just going to try to get rid of this Hierophant, uh... and finally they will. He went down. He was doing so well. Yeah, and I think Shambler will barely hold here because there's a couple more Dracons coming out. Although, a bit of a mistake to go after that back Draconite. I don't think he's going to get it. No, but he's that not. That's it. He can't cut the Zealots. He can't cut the Zealots pretty well here. Uh, and I think it's going to have to at least reinforce. But he's coming in here. Can he get some worker kills or something like that? Well, behind this, there's more Draconins. He's not moving them up the ramp. Needs to realize that his mm. army is not w together right now. But look at the Zealots tearing apart that Draconin. The other one not focused yeah. firing. A little bit awkward there as he tries to hit that. Ooh, Where are the reinforcements? The there's three more coming. As soon as those move up, Shambler's going to be in a huge amount of trouble, going for the Nexus a little bit early, despite his opponent having more gateways. All right, here they go. They're coming in. If he can depower, there is already a second pile on those. Shambler very prepared for that, at least. But the army for Anakin is so big right now, I think he can just kill what's there Two and more. Then the gateway. This is over. General Anakin's going to take this game yeah. almost, certainly. The, the pylon only powering the Warden from the side, a blind Warden being made there, and now he's stuck inside his base. Yeah, he's going to depower these, dude. Two pylons won't last that long. The Warden gonna help against the Zealots, but look how much Anakin has, and he's not stopping. I mean, he has a lot of bank, but he is using the gateways he has a little bit, uh, so he's continuing to produce. Trying to make another Draconid, but honestly, the gateway might die first. I lose one on the edge there if it's not careful. Okay. All right, takes some, taking a lot of hits. Focus firing, this Draconid came out. That's not gonna get away. Oh, the last shot. Just one shot, not, not too many, not too few. That's right. And, yeah, and also the main thing is that opens up a lot of surface area to get in here, actually. In fact, he didn't even care about the army. He's like, you won't kill enough dragons by the time I kill your gateways, that I won't just kill you anyway. So he's just focusing them. That's right. And this oh, is the on. only one that's actually blinking right now. The other gateway not actually training a unit. It starts now. But is that going to be enough to get that dragon out? It's a very important one. He's going to go up to five. He's still down versus eight. Yeah, General Anakin continues to rally. More Zealots come in, and they can take so many shots in from those Wardens. In fact, they're getting right in on the Wardens as the Dracodons fight. 
And he has to deal with that. If he loses the wards, he's so screwed. And he's going to lose one, it looks like. Oh, no, barely not. Well, he didn't even cancel the other one that was in production, adding another gateway. He's got another one that's nearly done. But if this gateway goes down, man, I don't know how he's going to recover. There's only a couple workers over at the natural. More units streaming on in. Shambler's going to have to GG out of this one, man. There's no hope. Well, as long as he has these Draconids, there's hope. One of them falls. I mean, he feels like he might be able to out Marco Anakin, but I don't know. Anakin so far has been managing okay. He's going to get number one. Oh, so close. Well, he's going to have to cancel that gateway. Doesn't even do that. Mm. Unlike Anakin, he does not have a bank going here. Tembo is still up on workers right now, by the way. <laughs> Anakin definitely struggling with the multitasking, but as far as his fight goes, you can't say he's really committed much mistakes here. He's continuing to pick off those gateways. Once they're all down, he'll just have the stack defense and the standing army to deal with. Let's get one Draken in. Oh, but loses one in return. That is not a trade he can make. Number one finishes, he's going to get away. Make all right. gateway, though. gateway down, and now here comes the focus fire from General Anakin. <laughs> I don't know how Shambler yeah. is still in this game right now, but his pylons are being threatened. Pylons. Yeah, there's only those two. There aren't any other backup ones. It wouldn't take long to take them down. He's going to go after the Draconis again. Only two left here for Shambler. He's being whittled down more and more. Oh, my God. Man, there's more. There's more where that came from. General Anakin inside Shambler's base. Shambler refusing to capitulate. I mean, he has capitulated, but refusing to concede the game, even though he's now one pile on away from total death. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to get in there. Oh. Still just getting those gateways. Man. I know, I think yeah. he must think there's a pylon in the back or something. Yeah. Because if you realize that was the only pylon, he'd definitely get it. Oh, look, there is no pylon down there, at least. Yeah, but there's just no Draconids left, man. GG finally oh, called GG. by Shambler. That could have been done a couple minutes earlier, but General Anakin getting on the board. Wow, contrary to my expectations once again. I should stop making predictions. No, it's it's good. It's, it's good to see that you uh, can sometimes be fallible. If not in-game, then at least as a caster. <laughs> yeah, I lost, I lost games in both sets, remember, so oh. I don't know what you're talking about there. Fair enough, fair enough. Hey, General Anakin on the board. This means that Shambler will pick this, the next match here, the next map. And of course, <laughs> what else would he pick than his own? Oh, it's of Titan course. He must, have been, he must have been hoping he'd lose a game, so we got to go here. Yeah, General Look, Anakin on the bottom left, Shambler side, on the top left. On the bright side, the way games have been going, it's probably not going to go up to three bases, so no one has to suffer with the stupid third base sniping spot. That's what I'm assuming here. Um, but man, this is going to be rough for one player. This map never goes that it's like, ah, oh, it was a good close game. There were back and forth fights. And, uh, you know, I, I guess the better man won. It's always just like, ah, oh, he got on that stupid bullshit spot. Fuck this game. I'm uninstalling, you know? It's kind of how this map goes. <laughs> well, there you go. I can clip that and use that somewhere. Yeah. But we'll see. Uh, you know, Anakin, once again, once again, the signature Hierophants showing his early game micro strength. You do not want to plan to get into an early game ball with this guy. Mm -hmm. Listen, that's a pretty scary thought. I mean, if you think about it, uh, who, if General Anakin does go down here, as it is predicted, then what, what that would mean is that uh, Art of Turtle would face him. And if he's already struggling a little bit versus Protoss, and sp specifically in the early game where Hepsea was able to shut him down pretty fast, General Anakin could actually be a real threat, but we might not even need to talk about that. Let's see how this game goes. Yeah, um, I mean, I'd be surprised if Anakin mixes it up. It doesn't really seem like he wants to do anything different, and why should he? It's working pretty well so far. Yeah, gateways on both players. It's almost like I planned that or something. Oh, no lattice again. Okay, we should, I should point out, I say he's not going to mix it up. We did go for the lattice first. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's much of a muchness, actually, in PvP. The idols definitely can work, we've seen, but uh, so can the Dracodin. Yep. Hierophant first, again, this time a lot less... Uh, worker line unmolested, right? So it's a lot faster. No uh, stall at the early stages. It's worth pointing out that on Derelict, he had a stall for his Hierophant and he still was able to... If he loses that Hierophant in the early stages of that game, it's a completely different one. I kept it alive. He had two hits left on it from the uh, from the Legionnaire and it, it wasn't enough, man. Yeah, uh, it was so damn close. I mean, it's sad that it died because because he won the game in the end. It could have survived, man. It could have been the hero. Imagine if he had it during those fights as well. Uh -huh. But alas, it did not make it. Uh, but hey, it's it's successor is here. Show us again. And is that a legionnaire coming up that's about to get murdered? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Manages to escape. Manages to escape. Man, it goes pretty fast, huh? Yeah, so the way, for people who don't know, currently the way that the uh, Hierophant debuff works is that they have to be within a minimum radius in order to actually hit it. Oh, right. Normally that's yes. within their weapon range, but with a cliff advantage, that's not. So some people thought uh, that was a okay. bug. It is a little bit clunky. I will probably just replace it so that it's like, oh, you debuffed? Well, you're slowed. Uh, that'll be a little bit more consistent. <laughs> but the reasoning uh, is actually dating back to its very original incarnation, where 
an individual Hierophant would be like the source. And if you were like running away from that Hierophant, you would be slowed. And then that that was a lot more confusing at the end of the day. So we yeah. ended up simplifying it. But. Well, all this facing stuff does get a bit confusing sometimes. Uh, you know, like running away or towards with the Zoryus and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, it's still pretty cool to see like things like the Minotaur armor where you have to like move around it, right? Yeah, sure. I think that stuff like that like, yeah. works out pretty well. Oh yeah, it's cool for sure. It's just sometimes a bit hard to tell what's going on exactly. Uh, now, third gate for Anakin. Uh, I believe that's the same you went last game, but not in game one. Yes, yeah, so the game one was the lattice uh, opener, and now it's a third gateway. And Shamler hasn't really been well, able to just confirm too much, but look at this. I mean, he sees a well, lot in of game zealots. one, he got the Nexus as well before a third production structure, is what I'm saying. Mm, so oh, I see, he's yeah. committing once again to aggression. Now, Shambler has made himself a nice defensive cliff here, and so he's going to use it. Uh, so I don't think he'll have too much trouble by Sanakin. Uh, even Ecclesiast coming out. Now, again, oh, I don't know. I don't know about the Ecclesiast, man. Uh, if you're going to buff a Protoss unit, that's one to look at, to be honest, Pranogo. I feel like it's pretty hard to actually get good value out of it. I don't even see an Ecclesiast. Oh, I guess it's down here. It's, uh, it's, it was in production. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, uh, it's actually really good, so I think you're just wrong. It's a Cyclops. Uh, yeah, well, that means it's a bad unit. Yes, no, it's correct. really good. Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, don't I don't think know. it's good in this situation because it's easy to pick Look, off. did you but... see that Cyclops drop earlier today? Terrible, terrible unit. Um... Well, he's going to come in issue. here, man. He does not... He does not want to take no for an answer. Well, look, look he's got I'm, a Nexus starting it. behind this, so he's just going to confirm yeah. that Shambler is going to be behind, economically speaking. Oh, okay, he lives somehow. Uh, but you don't want to lose your army then and not have anything to defend. Look oh, yeah. at that. Shambler's saying, I can use them too. That's I right. too am Protoss. Here's, here's a Fire Phantom for you to deal with. That's uh, right, that's right. There's two of them for General Anakin, but that means his Strider count is a little bit more towards disruption than it is towards damage. I would really like to see Anakin just go home now. Oh no, the fight's happening though. That's right. Then again, there's a lot of zealots, a lot more zealots for Anakin. Immediately I'm proved wrong again. The Ecclesi is getting huge value, but I mean, what else does he have? The DPS is just not there. Yep. He's going to easily kite these zealots, even with his own slows. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, oh, the Ecclesiast God. gets the kill at the end of it all. <laughs> Good unit. Okay. Um, I don't know, man. <gasps> He's going to get two go? kills. Oh no, one health. Oh, I got to buff it. See, if that was, uh, I don't know, what's a unit I like? If that was a Harakan, definitely would have got that kill. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you just need to make Harakans there. Yeah. This is what I was saying, right? That army was always doomed as long as it stayed in there. It needed to get out while it could. If he had that army now, he would have a pretty easy defense. But as it is, he's really on the ropes here. going to try and use the high ground. But I don't know if it's even going to be enough. Anakin might just get yeeted out pretty quickly here. Yeah, let's see. I mean, there's a lot of units here for Shambler. A lot of Striders. And there's a lot of Zealots, but, I mean, the, the Drakadon's being split here. General Anakin a little bit slow on the draw. He's only now realizing, oh, I'm under attack. And the Drakadons are going to get down there, but the Zealots are all dead already. Yeah, I think he needed to sort of uh, buy time for those wounds with the whole army, but he yeah. thought only the Zealots would be enough. Now he's going to try and get down here with more Zealots, but, I mean, yeah, that warden ain't going to finish, man. Now, even if that one does, it's uh, going to be short-lived, we'll say. Gateway production idol, so that is going to confirm General Anakin is out of this particular match. Gee. Shambler running him down. Six minutes finish. You know, well, Shambler, one thing I will say. Like... Go ahead. Yeah, go on. All right, you go. listen. Uh, one thing I will say about the way that that match went and the way that Derelict went, whoever makes the Nexus loses. That's the, uh, unless they both yeah, make the Nexus. that's BBP. Unless they all Just don't expand, it. idiot. Yeah. Yeah, come on now. What do you think this is, an RTS game? Well, Shambler... <laughs> Back on the board, and he is now one match away from taking it. So we'll have to see if he can do that, or if he's going to also go to a five-game set. We are going on to what could be the final map of the day. It's Impetus. All right, then. All right. Shambler in the bottom left. General Edmonton in the top right. He has the high ground, finally. I was going to say about Shambler, I guess he's the kind of guy who always benefits from home field maps, right? Whether it's... Boscovai and all this map he made. Yes. Yeah. You don't want you don't want to take him on his home turf. Uh, but now we're on a Veek map. You know, uh, as far as I know, Shambler had no hand in this design. Uh, but we'll see. That's correct. Yeah. Look, man, if he, there isn't just early game gateway fights again, I I don't know what I'm gonna say. I have no other commentary planned. I'm just gonna like pre-record this okay. and assume what's gonna happen. All right, and you'll just be like the Hierophant comes out. And then instead yeah, the Hierophants are fighting, and he made Drakadons now, and oh my god, they're shooting each other, and units are dying, and one of them won. <laughs> one of them won. And I yeah, can't believe who won me. that game won that game. <laughs> I can't believe Protoss won that one. Yeah. 
that's the classic joke. Listen, Alexander is not in the chat right now, but if he was, he'd be seeing Total Protoss Death, just like he wanted. Yeah, man, where is he when we need him? We needed him in the phone room, man. That would have been sick. Dude, I can't believe that uh, he signed up for the one uh, gauntlet and then he vanished again after, unfortunately, not being able to make it in. Poor guy. Yeah, well, I guess that's why they're separated, though. You don't have to commit completely. All right, double gate versus double gate. What a surprise. I would like to see the ladders again, man. I feel like it had good mileage there. I think when Hepsea takes to the stage versus whoever wins this series, we will absolutely mm. see that match because I think he just knows that like versus Legionnaire, which Shambler is liable to do and has done the whole game and is doing right now, that the idols just completely uh, shut that play down. Well, yeah, maybe think, not completely, but is... you know, in the early stages. Other than the first game, I really feel like these Legionnaires are not paying off very well for Shambler, for sure. Um, they're kind of just getting bodied by whatever else Anakin's making here. Yeah. Um, maybe you can pull off another run by this game. They do have that threat, right? Uh, yep. And I feel like if you don't throw them away, they can sort of force your opponent to stay at home, lest a backstab come in and kill your workers. Well, the Drakadin here as well, I mean, if you think about it, him not going for the Hierophant early means that he's got a little bit more Vespine to go for something else. Like, we could see a Rogue Gallery, you know, that I, I would love to see something like that. If you think about it, the utility that something like a Cabalist could have in PvP seems like it's pretty legit. I mean, it's not going to win you the game automatically like sometimes, but... That's just if you sneak in and get a bunch of scribes, could be huge, but I think in a fight, it's sort of just like a purifier plus, sorry, goddammit, Legionnaire <laughs> plus, where you're just trying to pounce on units that are smaller number, whereas Legionnaires can already do that for you. Well, so I think I'm if you so have sure. other frontline, then, like, yeah. you know, mix in with Zealots, my thinking is because they dive in and are basically guaranteed an A hit until you have a witness on the field and you can kind of hold them at an arm's length, the Cabalist could basically just instantaneously deal 40 damage and you just don't even get to take a, a chance at it that's like all the shields of a legionnaire almost and really not that's much fine. else so, i don't know there's uh, there's stuff to map out there i think the vagrants also having a double life could be a really big deal that's the vagrants reason. definitely very strong yeah. i mean costing only minerals is pretty big deal as well yep um and they just deal the good dps i think for their cost yeah and you can use them as a front line if you don't want to actually have a real front line then you know, suddenly you've got Vagrant, uh, you know, Hierophant Dracodin or something, and that could be a good comp. Well, Hierophant Vagrant seems like a really good comp, because you spend all the gas on Hierophants, and yep. then you can catch the Dracodins easily. You can even go for Ecclesiasts for some other gas expenditure, because if your enemy is going uh, for a heavy melee comp like Zealot or, or uh, uh, Legionnaire or anything like that, Look, suddenly man, you're re repairing the shields that you're losing on the front, so... Five minutes ago, I didn't hate Ecclesiasts, but since you compare them to Cyclops, I don't know, I'm starting to really think they're a bad unit. <laughs> Well, it's funny, because you had to eat your words when that Ecclesiast killed that Dracodin. Or, uh, or, I, no, I'm pretty sure that fight went terribly for Anakin. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, yeah, but the Ecclesiast gave him a lot of shields. Hmm. Just think about the now, shield dealing he'd get from an Ecclesiast in this situation. Anakin with the Legionnaires here, right? Yep. Whereas Shambles with the Zealots. Yeah, this, if, if you took the nameplates off, I'd say Anakin was in the bottom left, but... Not yeah, he's even got two higher fans himself, right? Yeah. It's funny, they're switching each other's uh, jerseys right now. Spider-Man meme. Does that mean uh, whoever wins gives the point to the other one? Yeah, I think so. So if uh, General Anakin loses, Shambler will uh, go to the lower bracket. I think that's how that will work. Uh, Legionnaires with uh, three higher offense. That's interesting. Whoop. It's a fine army from Anakin, but I think a defensive advantage to Shambler is going to be fine. He's getting another gateway, which is, I think is a bit unfortunate. I think the best thing to do would just be expand. Of course, none of them has any actual intel. Yes. But I hope that Anakin realizes how strong Shambler's army is when he sees it and backs off. Yeah, well, with this bank and idle gateways, I'm not a fan of that either. But I guess maybe he's thinking about going for the expansion. I don't know. Because you know, what, what purify account am I up to? He's keeping track of my slips. Oh, here we go. The fight's going on. That's right. The Legionnaires will not last as long as the Zealots, but they are getting in doing a lot more damage. Yeah, the problem is once those uh, melee units go down for General Anakin, whoever loses the melee first will lose a lot more than that, thanks to the Hierophants. And Shambler yeah. is the one to come out ahead based on his Zealot count. Oh, man. Those Zealots blocking them, though. Shambler could have chased down those Dracodins, or that Dracodon, I should say. Uh, but alas, the uh, Zealots uh, are trainers. Well, hang on. He's uh, going to get it anyway. Uh, one more hit. Eee, there we go. Now he's going to slow it down and isolate. He's doomed. Oh, but high ground. He's trying his best. Yeah, that's right. That's Anakin has the high ground. Can you believe it? But it might still be over. Oh, I don't know. Sniping him at Hierophant does hurt a lot there. And no Zealots in production right now. Yeah, I think Shambles has too much here. Uh, well, the high ground is going to be impactful. This is one of the Hierophants. Maybe Anakin can barely hold. He does have a bunch of gateways producing, but man, look, reinforcements show up. I think oh, that's going to no. be enough for Shambler. He's just going to A-move his way up here. 
Hierophants reduce any chance of kiting or escape. I think that's going to be it. I think Shambla is going to move forward 3-1 by the looks of it. Yeah, that's right. No, no great focus fire onto that higher fence. Shield's now regenerating. GG's called. He's busy typing GG, man. That's right. Shambler makes it through 3-1. Three to one. All right, GG. Uh, once again, again, my prediction's wrong, but uh, other than that, not bad. So if we look at all four series, did I predict any of the outcomes right? Um, well, you didn't predict your own for obvious reasons. Uh, hamster. I would have said it was 3-2 my way, though, because I kept saying you might take me down, right? So oh, I see. I, I guess it was Like, if I came to you way. before the... Yeah, the, yeah, maybe. Right, okay. I don't know. I, I did not really think about what the score would be, so you're right there. Okay, gotcha. Well, hey, you know what? 3-1 here. Uh, you, you said 3-1 to one for Hapsaya, but it was 3-2. You said 3-0 for uh, Shambler, but it was 3-1. Yeah. I don't know if you gave Taco Cake a game versus Hamster. If it was a th if you predicted three zero, I probably hamster. didn't. Yeah, I, I don't think I you said I gave it. a specific score, but I said yeah. Hamster was doing pretty well. Yeah, I, I think you, you. I don't think you actually said the score, but you uh, did say that Hamster was like an overwhelming favorite, which we'll say is, is you got that one right. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Hey, Even that means chat by the way saying he's proud of Anakin. He should be, man. He should be because yeah. Anakin showed us some really cool stuff, and he has been this whole Acropolis. He's not out yet. He has the lower bracket where he will. Uh, take on Art of Turtle and have to show us a different matchup for once. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And, and you know, that's going to be really cool because I don't know how his PVZ is. I don't think he had to fight against a Zerg, except for like super early on in Gauntlet A, he fought against Benza, but those are like five minute games. So when you look at it the way that it's gone, I do think that he's looking kind of nice at this point. Like, I feel like there's a chance for him versus Art of Turtle. Those will be messy games. The real one that's juicy is who's going to win between Hapsaya and the Shambler. These guys, it's like a grudge match, you know what I mean? They, neither of them are big fans of each other. But at the end of the day, man, what matters is whether or not you're talking about a, uh, a victory in the server, so to speak, right? So we look at this upper semifinal that we're setting up for here, now that Shambler has closed out that last one. And man, I think both of these are really cool. I think it's going to be cool to see who wins between you and Hamster. And I think it's going to be really cool well, to see who wins between Upsay and the Shambler. That sets us up for a really cool upper final. In my opinion, it's a bit unfortunate that we had me versus Newt and then me versus Hamster because I feel like those were potential finals we could have had. But now they're already going to be gone after just two layers. Well, there's a chance that uh, it goes a different way. Remember that the bracket swap means that the loser of upper semifinal number two will drop down to the second elimination la uh, layer on the on your side of the bracket. So say Hapsaya beats the Shambler, and then the Shambler will go down and face the winner of uh, Newt versus Taco King. So there's a chance. I mean, I don't know who you, who you prefer. I think at this point... Yeah, Newt is guaranteed uh, uh, versus Protoss and Taco Cake as well. Whoever yep. wins that match is guaranteed versus Protoss in the second elimination yep. game. So they gotta... Look, they gotta I gotta give it to Newt as well okay. to take out Taco Cake. Yep. I'm sorry, Taco Cake, but uh, I don't favor him at all versus Newt. I think Newt will crush him. I mean, it seems likely just because of the fact that... Um, I mean... His versus Terran isn't bad. He just needs to win the game early on, it seems like, unless he's been practicing a lot versus, you know, Vicious Box or somebody somebody else. I don't know how many games he's been playing. I, know, I think he played a little bit against Saiyan, who actually has been playing more regularly lately. I have no idea what his skill level is like. I guess you were playing against him a little bit uh, recently. Yeah, we played quite a few games, for sure. He's still just learning the units and stuff. Okay, okay. But, you know, I know his macro is pretty good as a Zerg player in... Uh, in StarCraft 1, so I would imagine that he'll be... I think he's like a A rank or something like that in StarCraft 1. Maybe... maybe oh, that sounds about right. I don't actually know. Right, yeah. I see him on stream anyway a lot of the time. So, you know, it's cool to see that. Um, anyway, maybe he'll show up for a tournament later. Uh, but uh, the fact is Taco Cake has been playing a little bit, but I don't think he's been playing versus Terran recently. So for all my talk about how he's got a lot of practice versus Terran, that's like maybe last week and the week before. And, you know, for Battlements and stuff, and not necessarily for Throne Room. He was probably prepping for, for Protoss if he was prepping at all. So, potential uh, matchup here for... I do think you would favor Newt even if Taco Cake was practiced. But I think that changes yeah, the scoreline from, yeah. like, a 3-2 or a 3-1 to maybe even, like, a 3-1 or a 3-0, right? Like, that's more the probability. But I think Taco Cake can take a game. I think he showed some good stuff in the, that last game against Hamster. It's the first two that were more disappointing. So, we'd love to see a little bit more from him there. Yep, I, I, I uh, do think Newt can take on pretty much anyone, so Taco Cake uh, is going to have a very tough time. Now, let's look at the other one. AOT versus General Anakin. Now, 
AFT are going to say seems stronger, but I have not seen Jim Malenikin's PBZ, so it's a bit of an unknown quantity. We don't know what he'll be bringing. He showed us Hierophant's are very good in PvP. He's shown some really good micro there. If he has some equivalent disruptive tactic in PvZ, I think he could quite easily pop AOT if AOT isn't ready for it, because AOT's still not 100% experienced with the project. Yeah, and I don't know how much practice he's going to have going forward either, right? So that's another thing that you always yeah, have to true. factor in. Yeah, I, I think General Anakin showed a really strong, like, baseline level of of micro. If he can, if you're not somebody like Shambler who just goes straight through, um, and, and decides to like three gate or four gate a lot of the time, I don't know. It, it feels like that is a pretty big deal. Where then General Anakin can build up that confidence to go for the micro. It does feel yeah. like he will fall apart a little bit when the push comes to his base. And I kind of saw this about Top Ramen recently, too, not to have everybody catching strays here, but um, <laughs> I remember seeing him. If, if you can get units into his base early on, that will be a very different look yes. than the normal sort of like very practiced, polished macro version of him where he's like comfortable and has his like four captaincy timing at like eight minutes or something crazy. And it's like, well, then it's, it becomes a lot harder to deal with him. But um, if you can get, if you can stop him, if you, you can frustrate that process. It turns into a very different game that he has less experience with. And I think that's probably the same for General Anakin. Um, he's got a lot of experience versus Terran and probably not as much versus Zerg. Uh, I don't think mm. he's played versus you, for example, at all. I think that that was one of the reasons why you were so like, you had no idea about this guy. And that's, that's a reason, right? It's like, um, basically if you don't know the guy because you haven't been playing him, it's probably a good thing that you're saying, like, yeah, I just don't raid him because, I mean, we don't know. And if you're not playing often, like, you play all the time, Nebulon, so if you're not playing very often, or if you're not playing against you ever, then how much are you playing? But General Anakin's a guy who, like, doesn't hmm. practice ver like with the other people that I'm aware of. He practices versus the Beaver, and that's it, as far as I yeah. understand, anyway. So, you know, that could be a considerable contention point, whereas AOT will play when he has the time. It's just his time is a precious commodity, right? So. Well, like I was saying to Hapsai in one of the YouTube comments, the problem is uh, when you do practice with everyone, there's not many people, and the only good people are the ones who I'm going to come across in Acropolis. So there is sort of an advantage to practicing where no one can see you, uh, where you can build up strategies and people will not expect them at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be the case. And when we have that sort of uh, situation here, as I'm filling out the lower bracket, it's worth noting that whoever ends up making it out of the upper semis they've got a guaranteed spot in the lower final at the very least, right? So if they go to the upper final, even if they fall there, they get to sit pretty and wait for the, the peasantry to, to knock each other out uh, before <laughs> making it in. And uh, we might end up doing, you know, the the last three series all in a row again, or maybe we'll just save that for the lower final and grand final in one day. You know, we'll have to see, but uh, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Now, well, here's my last here's my time. Thing. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, last time I benefited from that, and uh, aside from my opponent being exhausted, not having to get up at 4 a.m. my time worked out very well. Of course. So I was very pleased to be able to wait for all those other matches to be played. So you definitely want to stay up, but sorry, were you saying something? Uh, just that I wanted to point out that um, with this one, I think what we'll try to do is we'll try to play the uh, elimination matches live. Uh, so that we can get exit interviews for whoever ends up uh, getting eliminated in the first place. Like if it's Newt or Taco Cake, mm -hmm. if it's Art of Turtle or General Anakin. Uh, but we can play the upper ones from replays, you know, cast the upper ones from replays like we did here. So that won't be a problem for me. So I'll be making those match threads to try to organize the times. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a, a nice little first round here. And, you know, you said we could do it under five hours. That was a question we did. It's four hours, 50 minutes right now. So. Nice. There you go. We did it. Fits my schedule. That's right. But That's right. on that note, I do have to go pretty much now. Sounds so good. thanks for having me here for these casts. And hey, good job, everyone, for those pretty intense games we saw. Uh, I can't wait for the next round. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I think there's a lot more to be excited about as the tournament continues onward. And I am finally ready to reveal the lower bracket, which uh, previously we did not have on the screen, so I will fix that right I now. I'll leave you to talk but about there that. There it is. Goodbye, everybody. GG's Neblime. Thank you for the cast, and we'll see you around. And with that said, the lower bracket on your screen, as you can see, the way that this will go. Elimination 1A and 1B are the only matchups we know right now. Taco Cake versus Newt. Art of Turtle versus General Anakin. Our winners of the day are instead going to be in the uppers, of course. It's going to be... Hamster versus Neblime, 
Hepsea versus The Shambler. Some nice grudge matches there. It's going to be PvZ and PvP, while our elimination games are ZVT and ZVP. So definitely stay tuned for the announcement for those schedules. We will definitely try to get them done probably in the middle of the week, but maybe we'll have to wait all the way until, you know, the next Saturday. Who knows? Uh, definitely uh, keep your eyes peeled because we're going to keep on making this thing better and better. And uh, yeah, hope you guys are uh, having a good time with it. That's going to close us the stream. So we will see you guys next time.